Greetings ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Library of the Unwritten. I am the Archiver. Before we start I would like to wish you all Merry Christmas this year, and to look forwards for the future. Today's series is What If Deku Was Part of the Todoroki Family. A Christmas special to celebrate this special occasion. Before we start, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. Now let's get into it. The Todorokis. In the Todoroki household, Enji was training his eldest, Tsuya. With the drive to let his own son beat All Might someday, but he couldn't himself, he gave intense training more than Tuya's body could handle. Enji wasn't satisfied at all whenever his son easily drops, resulting to Tuya having siblings. Fayumi was born, unfortunately she is too weak for her father's standards, having Natsuo next with the same judgment. They were neglected easily by Enji, leaving them to their mother's care, and he stuck with Tuya. Until a few years later, Rei Todoroki, Enji's wife, gave birth to twins. Both kids ended up having red and white hair. Shoto, the older twin. Half side was red and the other was white, and Ever was sure that he was a masterpiece. Izuku, his hair was red slowly going gradient to white at the tips. And Ever wasn't sure of his quirk, but Izuku landed a soft spot on his father's heart. In the result of Enji slowly making up for the family. Two years later, Izuku and Shoto are now three. Enji was waiting for another year, four years old is when quirks manifest generally for each individual. While Tuya is undergoing harsh training, Shoto is playing with Fayumi and Natsuo. Izuku had a fever and was put to sleep by Rei, he's now watching her three children running around. Unfortunately for the timing, a group of villains decided to infiltrate the number two hero's home, with the motives of bringing down the public's trust in heroes. The attempt was successful in this start, but as it ends, the villains were defeated, but they got something precious from the house as some of them escaped. Running, playing tag outside. Fayumi noticed fire. Fire far from the training room. It can't be their father's. Mom, there's fire. She exclaimed. Of course, her mother also noticed that this wasn't the doing of Enji. Let's go outside you three. She pulled her children out the front gates quickly while shouting at Enji's direction about the occurrence. Enji was busy training Tuya to hear her, but he noticed this too. Check if they're complete and safe out there. He said to Tuya who was struggling. But Tuya loved his mother and siblings that he's willing to run to them. Outside, you can now see Rei Todoroki trying to get back in the house, but is being held back by officers. Emergency came to help, but now stopping them from entering back. My son is still there. She cried Izuku. She cried more. Tuya hearing this shouted at his father. Izuku's still in his room. Endeavor, is now in his hero costume, is multitasking with controlling the flames the enemy started, attacking the villains, defending himself, and making his way to the sick boy's room. Finishing off some villains and successfully taking out the fire near Izuku's room, Endeavor only entered the room to see no one in the room. He came to the most obvious conclusion that his son was kidnapped. He came out the house, walking with a disappointed face. Where's Izuku? Rei asked. No reply from his husband she felt angry, and tears started to stream. Enji where's Izuku, she screamed at him this time. No. Izuku. Shoto asked. Fayumi patted his head crying. Soon enough, Natsuo and Shoto cried too as they finally understood. Tuya just stared there wide-eyed. He didn't save him. Tuya's thoughts swirl around the idea. Somehow Enji thought this was his fault. After that incident, it was confirmed that no ash held the DNA of Izuku. The Todorakus requested for a search, it went on until three months. To no avail he was later on announced dead. This incident made the family took a sharp turn to the south even more. After somewhat sobering up until the next year. Fayumi and Natsuo started acting more mature for their age as they helped their mom out. Shoto would have nightmares, but it got better as the time passed. Endeavor distracts himself in here work and distance himself from his family. Lastly, Tuya. He ran away a few days after Izuku was announced dead to them and the public. He simply gave up and knew that the Todoroki family will never improve, and he blamed everything to his dad, and obviously hated him for it. He wanted to find Izuku as he believed he's still alive. Another search was held for Tuya a few days after he left. No leads or anything for a long period of time, so he was also announced dead by the government. In the middle of the year, four-year-old Shoto gained his quirk. As Endeavor suspected it was indeed a powerful quirk. His right side with the white hair releases ice, allows him to freeze an object. While his left side allows him to release flames. A perfect combination of both his parents' quirks. Soon enough Endeavor started training him. The harsh training he did with Tuya was now repeated at his dubbed youngest son. Rei would protect Shoto from her husband only to end up being beaten up. Now she is slowly becoming unstable, scared of her husband. From the start she knew that Enji only married her because of her family's quirk. 
to be the mother of his children, his new successor. Looking back, leading her to hate and fear the present and future. In the kitchen, Anji was on patrol as Endeavor. Shoto got a break from his training now looking for his mother, and Fayumi and Natsu were as usual, not allowed to see or interact with Shoto. Fearing their father, they couldn't do anything but follow this rule implemented by Anji. Finally found his mother, Shoto was about to walk in the kitchen to greet her and give a hug. But he heard the phone call, dot dot the children seemed to be more like him. And Shoto, whenever I see that kid's left side it reminds me of him. It's Shoto was smart enough to understand what the topic was. Her mom looks more pitiful than what she shows back then. Deciding to comfort her mom after the phone call, he ran to her giving her leg a hug asking mom. What are you saying? Only to end up being pushed away and a hot temperature of freshly boiled kettle to be thrown. Ray finally came to her senses and hugged her son, saying sorry over and over again. She even tried to use her icy cork to cool it down. But in the end, it gave a scar. When Endeavor knew of what happened, he was beyond furious. He decided to send Ray to a mental hospital because she heard his masterpiece. If Shoto was sobbing, Izuku, do you think they're still onto us? The guy said catching his breath in an alleyway. I don't think so, but we got a hero's child, and that's enough to pay our debt right. The companion said as he was carrying the three-year-old they knocked out. We still have time, Kamo in front of them. Black mist suddenly appeared. You're late. A misty man said. Kurajiri. We're sorry. We came with a ch the man holding Izuku said, but in, in an alley somewhere in Musatafu city, Izuku was warped next to a big garbage bin. Starting to wake up and shuffling to his position, a massive wave of black luck was by Izuku's side, a woman with green hair passed by the alley and she went to find where the sobs were coming from only to see a boy red and white haired boy curling on the ground. She immediately went to the boy. The boy complied by taking her hand. Inko now kneeling on par with the Izuku's height, holding his hands she asked. What's your name? I, I don't remember. She put a hand on his forehead only to feel a high temperature. He must have a fever in this chilly night. They chat. Hurts, he whimpered. Hey. I'll bring you to the hospital, okay? Izuku nodded shyly. Inko picked him up and stopped a cab and went to the hospital. On the way there, Izuku fell asleep. He must be exhausted. Inko whispered to herself. She felt Izuku's tiny hands cling to the sleeves of her pink cardigan. Small snores began to fill the air. In the hospital. Inko decided to wait for the child, he's now being tested to see what was wrong with him. He has a fever, he couldn't. We found a bump on a critical area on his head, probably got hit too hard. It looks intentional, this probably caused the memory loss. He has amnesia Mrs. Midoriya. We interviewed him in case he remembered something and nothing. If he can't tell us his identity he will be put in an orphanage. We estimated his age as 3 years old. The doctor explained. But the system is horrible. She thought. Doctor, what if I adopt him? When will the papers be ready? Inko asked. Well if you're really sure then by the time he's ready to leave, the papers should be ready too, even before his leave. Which is next week. Inko nodded confirming the adoption. He'll be awake by tomorrow. The doctor said as he takes his leave. The next day, Inko came to the hospital to see the three-year-old redhead. She went to his hospital room. The boy was coloring on a paper, probably given by the hospital. The boy looked at the green-haired woman. Mrs. Zuku greeted as he remembered her from last night. Dear. How are you dear? She asked. I'm doing good. A small smile on his face was plastered. Inko, now having a good look at the boy, noticed the three-year-old's features. Handsome face indeed. Though that handsome face would always look stern, like Shoto, she wouldn't mind a behaved child that's happy with her. Caring for someone else is her nature. Ever since her husband died, she had no one to take care of but herself. She felt lonely and wanted company. Specifically a family, even if it's just a family of two. As days passed by Inko would visit Izuku, and the latter would enjoy her presence. Now landing the present to Friday same week. Inko was finally going to ask Izuku if he wanted her to be his mother. Dear. Do you want me to be your mother? Inko asked, deep down she was nervous. What if the kid doesn't want her? But instead of the negative thoughts, she received a hug from Izuku, whispering yes to her ears. Grabbing the papers from her bag, handed to her earlier than the estimated date which made her grateful tenfold, she asked the boy. Is it okay I name you Izuku? The boy nodded as she see her new mom tear up. Why are you crying Inko-sen? It's just. My husband wanted to name our kid Izuku. That's why, I hope you don't mind dear. Somehow to the little red head, the name Izuku dealt normal to him, so he found the name choosing comfortable. It's perfect Inko-sen. He said. Giving off a bigger smile than usual. Call me mom Izuku. Thank you mom. Izuku was doing better than expected by the doctors, so that's why he was discharged a day early. 
Inko now brought Izuku to her apartment. He offered Izuku the empty room in front of hers. It was simple, but enough for the grateful kid. Starting from then on they spent their lives happily in a peaceful way. A year later, at the daycare. Izuku was with a boy named Katsuki, whom he calls Kakin. They were introduced by their mothers. Inko Midoriya and Mitsuki Bakugu are best friends all the way back from high school till now. Helping their kids have a longer friendship than them, both boys were later introduced. Hey Izuku. Isn't your birthday tomorrow? Katsuki, he replied with his neutral face while scooping sand with a toy shovel. Inko found Izuku on Juki 15 last year, and decided to make it his birthday. His original birthday is January 11, same as his twin. I'm turning four, he said. Then you'll get your quirk soon. The blonde yelled. Katsuki got his earlier than Izuku. Just as the blonde said that, like on cue, Izuku suddenly let out bluish white flames, and some sort of flaming red ice crystals. Katsuki was amazed and tried to touch the crystals, but as his hand was getting near the temperature gets hotter. He didn't even dare touch the flames, but keeps growing. Katsuki called over a teacher, they look at Izuki in awe. Izuku began walking to them and the flames were leaving. Snowflakes. In its tracks. The children played behind, enjoying the cool of Izuku's flames, while the teachers called for his mother. Inko came and went to Izuku. Izuku. She came running to her son. Who was now playing with the bluish white flames, and creating small red crisps. How about we'll see Quirk Doctor today and try to hide your Quirk first. She said as she felt an incredible high heat before hugging her son. After the test's results came in, Inko and Izuku was called to the doctor's office. Midoriya san Your son's Quirk is amazing. It's like Izuku here can create and control fire and ice. The entertaining part is. They have the opposite temper. That's amazing Izuku. She hugged her son who's now using quirk restraints because he kept on using his quirk due to excitement. How about I'll make you cold soba later? You favored. Izuku nodded as a small smile plastered his face. Now Izuku, what do you want to name it? The boy thinks for a few seconds. How about half hot, half cold? Okay, let's see if that's still available. Every quirk is unique after all, even if they came from the same theme. The doctor chuckled. I'm sorry dear but it was already taken, it was just a few days ago too. She answered. Then Izuku think again. Cold flames, hot ice. That's perfect and very much available Izuku-kun. The doctor said patting the boy's head. The registration is done and so is the appointment. Ending with thank you and so. Despite being young, Izuku was smart. He dreamed of being a hero and he wants to get stronger. So he I know you'd make a great hero Izuku. Ten years later. Now fourteen years old Izuku Midoriya is in his third year of middle school. Along with his friend Kakin. Izuku grew up to be quite good looking and popular at Aldera Middle School. Same goes for the loud blonde. Both in different ways. Everyone wondered how the two could be friends. Yes they're strong in using their quirks, smart at school. But their personalities are different. Katsuki was loud, short-tempered, literally explosive, and is crude. The worst part of him is his big ego and lack of respect too to the extras around him. While Izuku is quite calm and kind. His sudden small smiles made everyone's heart beat raise. They say he's a blessing to Aldera Middle School. Bakugu's not the best person, he takes his anger out on others. Izuku would stop or restrain him which helped a lot because the blonde would only listen to the redeed. Ha what do you think you're doing extra? Kasuki's voice could be heard from the other end of the hall. Fortunately for the tormented, Izuku was passing by. Oh, Kakin you're here. He said as he slid his eyes to the poor kid below Katsuki. Kakin, we'll be late for class. Come on. He said walking towards his classroom. Kasuki followed behind and left the student alone. After minutes of waiting in the classroom, the teacher arrived with papers on his hand. After formal greetings he started talking. I would give you this career aptitude test, but what's- Don't lump me and Izuku with these losers. These bunch of extras would be lucky enough to be sidekicks of D-listers. The class went fuming, and Izuku sighed in disappointment to his friend's antics. Oh yeah, Bakugu's applying to you eh? Same as Midoriya the class started murmuring about how the acceptance rate was low in Yue High. But THT didn't stop the two friends to want nothing more than be accepted. So 10 months later, the entrance exam finally came. And all Izuku and Katsuki did was train and study. In front of the Yue gates, Katsuki and Izuku walked along with other participants. Making their way to the orientation hall, Izuku tripped and braced for the fall. But what's expected didn't come. He was. Floating in midair. He relaxed himself and saw a brunette girl with pink cheeks. Sorry I use my quirk on you, but it'd be a shame if you fall before the exam's right. She said to the redeed. Izuku turned to her only to see her blush after her confident smile. Thank you. He blurted out with a neutral face. Then, I better get going the girl said. 
Kasuki then pulled Izuku to the orientation room and found their seats. Present Mick started orientation with an energetic greeting, unfortunately, it wasn't returned to him with the same energy. The students were silent, and he just decided to start explaining the exam. In the middle of explaining, a boy with blue hair and glasses raised his hand. Present Mick who was happy that a student decided to participate, and talk called over the number of the participant giving him permission to speak. The boy stood up and started talking. Sir. In the printout handed out, it shows there are four types of villains not three like from your explanations. If this was a mistake on official UA material then it is shameful. He exclaimed, well, listener. Thank you for pointing it out. I was just about to get to that part actually. The fourth foe villain is a zero pointer. So it's recommended that you could just run away from it, Mick answered. Then, check your papers and see where your prospective battle centers are. The students looked at their papers. I guess they won't let friends help each other, huh? Bakugu said. Izuku just nodded, not leaving his side on the stage. Later on the participants went to their assigned battle center. Izuku got battle center B. He saw the brunetti bumped into earlier and the glasses boy from the orientation. Everyone was looking at Izuku, his red hair that fades down to white caught many attention. Soon, the gates opened and present Mix screamed go. Where students ran to comply. Izuku uses his cold white flames to freeze the robots causing them to malfunction. Saving others who do not watch their surroundings causing him to gain more points unknowingly. Meanwhile, at the control room where the staff is, Eraserhead was watching boredly at his potential soon-to-be students. Looking around different screens, he saw one participant who was running across faux villains who already has their targets. But before the faux villains could do anything, it was freezed, stuck down to the ground. But instead of freezing to malfunction, its legs melted into the ground slowly. He recognized the structure of the ice, he saw this at the recommendation exams a few days ago. Nezu, does Shoto Todoroki from the recommendations have a brother? Azawa asked the mixed look of bear, mouse, closest to a hamster in my eyes principal. Well yes, he has. The college student in a medical course. The smart animal answered. No other. The other two are dead if I look back from 10 to 11 years ago. The tired looking man sighed and continued to watch the participants as Nezu pushed a button to release the giant zero pointer. Here we go again. As Azawa thought. Back at the battle center, the ground rumbled and a big robot, specifically the zero pointer, rose from the ground. It was bigger than the robots they have been destroying. Somehow it was fearsome, but it's a zero pointer, they don't need to take the robot down, they don't have to deal with it. Most thought, even the red hat Izuku thought of this. But just before leaving, he saw the kind girl who kept him from falling earlier. She was stuck under rubble. She couldn't run away from the giant foe villain. Changing his course from running away to running towards the villain, Izuku shot his cold flames towards the stuck girl. Then he shot his red hot ice glaciers far above her before the villain steps on her. Controlling both temperature, the girl didn't burn because of the cool of his quirk, nor freeze from the low temperature. The girl didn't get crushed as the hot glaciers melt the structure of the robot's legs. He saved the brunette by taking her out of the rubble, and carried her far enough for the robot not to fall on them both. He used his cork to warm up his body, so that the girl would have her normal body temperature back. Then pressed Mick called the end of the exams. Recovery girl started walking towards Izuku and the girl he comfortably sat on the ground. I think she had a spring. Izuku said to recovery girl in a neutral tone. Recovery girl kissed the forehead of the brunette, and her sprain, and some cuts started to disappear. Back at home, Inko Midoriya was waiting for her son. She knew he passed just from watching him train by himself for Wakatsuki. As a special treat, she made her katsudan and soba. She couldn't usually make both mostly because of the time it takes and her job and resting hours. Izuku understood this, but this was special, and she decided to take a leave off her work. Izuku came home earning a hug from her mother as he took a step in the house. Hey ma, he greeted with a small smile forming his face. This smile usually shows whenever Inko's around, or Katsuki would do something pleasing than crude. How was the exam? She asked helping Izuku out with his stuff. Tiring. He said. Inko knew how Izuku is not a talker, so she doesn't mind short responses. I made you your favorites. And I made sure the soba is cold, just how you like it. The smile on Izuku's face grew a bit more. Inko would notice this small difference. And so the night was filled with stories and pride. All that's left is to wait for the acceptance letter. Similarities and unpleasant surprise. A week later, the day has finally came. The letter of UA is supposed to arrive today, Izuku was honestly nervous. Even though it doesn't show, his mom could read his face and actions like a book. It was already the afternoon and he was internally panicking. 
in his room obviously sulking on his bed, Inko could only think of how bad this thing's idea of his is. Izuku wasn't the type to dwell on things, but this is not just a simple thing. This is his dream high school, his future. So she was worried. In the living room every now and then, she was taking glances at the door. Soon enough one, Izuku Izuku. She yells as she ran to her son's room with the envelope in her hand. It's here. She waved the envelope. Izuku walked to her mom, she gave him what he's been waiting for, and decided to give him privacy. With his patience testing him, he ripped the envelope vigorously only for a small machine like to fall. Not seconds later, the machine showed a hologram projection of All Might. Congratulations young Midoriya. Izuku continued to watch the hologram. You passed the entrance exam. Not only that but got the highest score in UA's entrance score history. With the villain points of 81, but that's not the only thing we grade. You received 55 rescue points. Which gives you a total of 136 points. It showed the rankings and saw Katsuki second, just below him. Then it went back to All Might again. Congratulations. Welcome to your Hero Academy. Then it stopped. Izuku was so happy. He ran to Inko and hugged her tightly seeing he passed. She was so proud and knew his training was worth it. He called the Bakugus through the landline but Katsuki answering it after the fourth ring. Oi e nerd. Kakin you passed. You scored 105 points. The red hat said. Yeah. Congress on placing first. The blonde said. Which made Izuku smile fully because Kakin acknowledged him. Even though he knows that Katsuki acknowledges him, even from the start, the blonde doesn't really say anything. Finally, the first day of UA. In the Todoroki household. Shoto woke up early like he usually does. Got ready then changed to his uniform. He heard Fayumi call her from the kitchen. Complying to her calls he went there and said a quiet good morning. Fayumi is now 22 years old and helps his brothers like a mom. She cooked pork cutlet bowls for breakfast. Natsuo already ate and left, make sure to finish okay. She said as she was taking her leave to get ready for work. Natsuo is 19 and in college, leaving Shoto to be 16, along with his long-gone twin. Shoto was done eating and Fayumi is ready to leave. Don't forget to pray for them okay? She said as she was leaving the door. Shoto nodded and put his plates to the sink, then went to a room. In the room, nothing else but showcased two batsidents with open doors. Fayumi probably opened this he thought, looking at the pictures inside of them. He lit the candles again as it was dead. He bowed down and paid his respects. One picture showed a kid with red and growing white hair. The other one showed a dark hair fading down to white, no more than three years old. The picture was monochromatic. He knew this was his twin, he remembered being close to Izuku, but not the same as Tuya. Every day, like a habit, the Todoroki family would visit and pay their respects. Ray still hasn't gone home from the mental. Still keeping her hatred, anxiety, and sadness. She keeps on remembering the abuse and the death of her children. Fayumi and Natsuo would visit but, Shoto still doubts himself, and thinks his mother hates him. After paying his respects, Shoto then started to walk to the station, Loki being excited for the first day. In the front gates showed many students, Shoto is wondering if any of the students he see are his classmates. He entered the building and searched the halls for class 1A. After walking a few, he found himself standing in front of the giant door that opens to his classroom. He saw Yoi Rozu who he met at the recommendation exams. She waved at him and he gave a nod. Soon enough, more classmates are starting to get in. Then a loud blonde came stomping in the room. He walked to his seat, you can feel the pride confidence he reek of. Relaxing his foot on his desk, the blue-haired glasses guy, who arrived few minutes earlier, started scolding him. Even until more students came. Meanwhile, in the hallways is a lost Izuku. After a couple more wrong turns in the hallways, he finally arrived at the tall door of 1A. When he finally opened the door, he saw his friend arguing with the one with blue hair and glasses. The guy in glasses saw Izuku from the corner of his eye and suddenly ran to him. I'm Ida Tenya, I'm from Sume Academy, and you saw something more to the exam right. Ha! So this extra is an elite. It'll be fun to crush you, Bakugu said from his seat. Excuse me. Are you sure you wanted to be here? Ida said. Others are just too shy to interfere. I'm Izuku Midoriya. He said bluntly. Hearing the name, Shoto looked at where the voice came from. Izuku. He blurted out. Yay, that's my name. He answered back. Then ignoring any other comments, he walked to Bakugu. Hi Kakin. He greeted. Hey, nerd. Azawa walled to the podium quietly. The class didn't seem to notice as they started to make friends with their seatmates. Then Azawa saw the red head poke the ash blonde's shoulder who was looking out the window and pointed at him. Nice to know someone noticed me for a second. Ahem. If you plan on playing friends you can get out of here. As always said. 
catching the attention of all his students now shrieking in surprise. He just sighed. Name Shota Azawa. I'm your homeroom teacher. I know this is sudden but he took out a gym uniform from the sleeping bag he carried in the classroom. Change into this and go outside. Once everyone was outside. Bakugu, since your quirk would be a perfect example for this, what is your farthest distance throw in the softball when you were in junior high? Azawa asked. 67 meters, I think. Right. Now try doing it with your quirk. Bakugu complied to Azawa by walking to the surls. With the ball Azawa gave to him, he is now stretching inside the circle. All right, anything goes just then. D. -E. He screamed as he threw the ball with a massive explosion. Azawa showed his score. 705.2. Izuka Pav. Right now, I couldn't care less with the fuming of the class. Same goes with Mr. Azawa looking cool on scolding them. I was staring at this kid. We haven't made introductions yet so I don't really know his name. He has red hair on the left side, and the other half was white. It's amazing that his hair perfectly cuts to the middle. I also found it a great coincidence that we have the same hue of red. Soon enough, I was brought back to my thoughts as Azawa Sensei said we will start. So just like middle school but with quirks, got it. I am very determined to do my best even if I don't show it on my face. Dot. First was a 50 meter run. I just used my hot ice path to speed me up. I glanced seeing the boy with a scar white eyed, looking at me. Then when I watched his turn there's also an ice path similar to mine, but his is blue, and what enormous ice would look like in mine's red. It was so cool I need to talk to him, but breathe in and out Izuku, you need to compose yourself. After every practical test, Azawa showed a hologram of our rankings. A girl named Yeoi Rosu was first, then Kakin, then this Todoroki kid, and I got fourth. It's not that bad. Oh right, the expulsion was just a logical ruse. I just said it so you would give the best of your abilities. As always said with a shiz eating grin. Wait. You said something about someone being expelled. I blurted, everyone looked at me. Ha you got distracted again earlier, Kakin exclaimed as he light chopped my head. Sorry. I said with a bit of disappointment in my voice. Jeez, stop those habits Izuku. So Racer heads our teacher huh? I said to myself. Dirt pov. In the boys changing room, they went to their assigned lockers and started changing. Some were already talking with their groups of friends. No one seems to mind Izuku. But then another Redeed started a conversation. Hello, I'm Kirishima. You're Midori, you right? Izuku nodded at him. Say. Are you guys, brothers? Kirishima asked pointing at Shoto and Izuku. My brother died 11 years ago, Todoroki said with a neutral tone and a neutral face. Not that I know of. Izuku said. Um? I'm only adopted. He said with the same expression as Todoroki. Wow, but it's so cool. You guys really look like brothers. Kaminari butt in. Oh, I'm Kaminari by the way. Denki Kaminari, just call me Denki. Yeah yeah. You almost have the same quirk. It looks like ice. Siro said not minding that he was unknown to his classmates yet. It is ice though Todoroki answered. Well, mine's kinda different he said. What's the name of your quirk? Maybe we'll get a better explanation. Kirishima suggests. Half hot, half cold, Todoroki said. Really? Izuku asked him. Shoto simply nodded. I was going to name my quirk that, but the doctor said someone already got it a few days before me too. Izuku explained keeping his monotone voice. Dot dot anyways I named mine cold flames, hot ice. So it is literally what you guys call it. So Todoroki and Midoriya, you have flames too. I don't use them the boy with scar bluntly said with a hidden pained expression same to Izuku's. Izuku simply lit his bluish white flames that also created small snowflakes. In both hands. Todoroki touched the flames and was stunned face a small second. It really is cold. Others just watched the flames at all. He then closed his palm as he cancelled his flames. Making the others pout. Now being pulled out by Bakugu to go to the classroom, Kakin. Are you jealous? Izuku asked his friend in a bland voice. Ha of course not you shizzy nerd. He screamed. You only call me with profanities if you're angry at something. Oh wait let me change that, you're always angry. Bakugu glared at the small smiling Izuku. Reaching the classroom and soon others behind followed in. Iida decided to initiate introductions. Some are shy and quiet, some are dense like the twins, some are just noisy but fun and good, others are neutral between chaos and peace. Just on cue, their next teacher came in. And the next. And the next, until all subject teachers has made their own introductions. Soon enough the day ended and Izuku was ready to go home to his mom. How was the first day Izuku? Inko asked after hugging her son. It was great mom. Showing excitement wasn't really common to Izuku, so Inko was happy that her son is happy. You meet new friends? She asked. Well, yeah. 
I guess, he said. He wasn't really the friendliest person in his dictionary. Izuku thought of himself more as someone polite. Well, I met someone very alike to me his hair is the same color as mine, but it's like perfect half red and half white, he said, while gesturing his hands to put better explanation. The white side would produce ice, and the red side would produce flames. Inko listened at his son's words. He's the one who got the half hot, half cold court name before me. He chuckled as his mom laughs at the coincidences. Izuku, how about you go to your room and dress and I'll make dinner. He nodded and gave her mother a hug before going to his room. When Inko was sure that his son is in his room, Inko put out a bottle of pills and swallowed much as the prescription says. Inko is sad. When she heard the doctor's words, she didn't know what to tell Izuku. She is in the brink of death in two months or less. The latter has the higher probability. After making dinner, also finishing her debating thoughts, Inko decided that she couldn't see her son crying. She doesn't want to. He can't stand to see him hurt. She wants to keep her son's smile for as long as she can. Till her death. I'll just write him letters and recipes. Inko thought. Then he called over Izuku as she regains her composure. Izuku. Dinner's ready. She called in a happy tone. Izuku rushed to his mom and went to sit on the dinner table. Inko's thoughts were debating again, then he looked at Izuku's small smiling face, and her heart felt pain. She made up her mind. Until my last moment, I want you to keep that smile. Yusche. In the Todoroki household, Shoto went home from his first day at UA. Surprisingly, his father was there. Tension started to fill the house's ambience. Shoto. How was school? Enji asked with the hope of his son replying. There are times this happens. Enji would try to act like good father to make up for his losses, but his kids doesn't really comply. All of them felt like they were just created because Endeavor wanted to beat All Might. Fayumi forgave Enji, but distance was still kept. Natsuo was mad, he is especially close to Tuya. He blamed their father for his loss. Shoto simply rebelled against him by not using his left side or his flames. Surprising Enji, Shoto replied. Met someone interesting. Then he took his leave to his room or so his father thought. Leaving Enji there, he thought to himself. Someone. Interesting. Shoto went straight to the room with the bat sit-ins and looked at his twin's picture. Showing similarities, but he wasn't really sure. He's not the best at these things. Shoto, just like Izuku, is dense. Natsuo, his older brother who is home, came in the room to pay his respects. He woke up late earlier morning. Shoto. You woke up late too? He asked his younger brother. Shoto shook his head no. Not really. Then what are you doing here? I met someone who looks like Izuku. From his two-colored hair to his two-colored eyes. Shoto said in a serious tone. Shoto. Izuku's dead. Natsuo said with furrowed brows in his pained expression. The body wasn't found. He raged. We searched our old city and its neighboring cities Natsuo fought back. Enji hearing their screams went to the bat sit-ins. What's happening here? He asked in a stern voice causing both boys to stop arguing. Natsuo who was mad at Enji left immediately and Shoto just stayed there looking pissed. Shoto. We already tried looking for them. Enji said to his son. Shoto Huff then bowed to the bat sit-ins before leaving. Enji sighed. He looked at the two pictures in the bat sit-ins. He made a painful expression as he saw the smiling faces of his dead sons. He closed the door to the room and left quietly, deciding to go to work so he could escape his sadness. Weeks passed and classes were all training and lectures. Looking at the schedule, as always saw that it is time to go to the USJ. Okay class, tomorrow we will be going somewhere for class. He said in his dull voice. Now it's time to do something that will probably affect your whole school year. Everyone tensed up, what could it possibly be that it will affect that much time? Since we have this field trip tomorrow, you will be picking class representatives. It's normal. The whole class exclaimed in their thoughts. These students keep forgetting that UA is still a high school. I don't care how you do it, just pick one before class ends. As always said zipping himself in his sleeping bag and face the wall. Okay, we should vote class president and vice president Ida said, chopping the air with his arms. Most of them wanted to vote for themselves volunteering themselves. Izuku couldn't care less. How about this, write the name of who you want to vote in a piece of paper, and we'll count the results. Iida suggested. Then wouldn't that just means all of us would vote for ourselves? Denki asked. Which is why you can't write your own names or vote for yourself. In the end, Momoyeo Rozu became the president and Iida became vice president. The next day, Iida and Momo lined the class up to the bus. But they seem to fail and just hive up on forcing the arrangements. In the end class 1A is with their group of friends. Finally making it to their destination, the class went out the bus to be met by Pro Hero 13. It's 13. 
Yurok exclaimed as she was a big fan. So this are your students Azawa Senpai. Thirteen said. Surprised no one's expelled yet. Azawa hummed at his co-worker's comments. You like your class this year, huh? Azawa just gave him a seriously. Look. Thirteen laughed before setting the attention to the students. Follow me inside the building. Once inside, the students were amazed at the big dome that reminded them of Universal Studios Japan. This is where you would be practicing on saving people in natural disasters. You can see that we build different situations where you can practice. This is the unforeseen stimulation joint. Or to call it shortly, the USJ. It really is the USJ, the class exclaimed. Now 13 is explaining her quirk and her line of hero work. 13 doesn't usually fight villains, 13 does more rescue work. Izuku who had been paying attention suddenly caught Mist appearing. Then he heard Kirishima talk, wow they have fake villains too. That's not fake villains. Izuku said out. He's right, everyone out. Those are real villains. 13 said. 13. Protect the students while I fight. But Eraserhead. There's so many. Izuku yelled. Eraserhead was taken aback that the kid knew who he was when he didn't even reveal anything but his scarf. But there are more important things right now. You can't be a hero with only one trick. He yelled as he charged at the low-tier villains. A man with blue hair was talking about something, a plan on killing All Might. The motives of killing All Might. All Might should be here. Where is he? He screamed as he scratched his neck more of irritation. Thirteen was leading the students to leave the facility, but was stopped by the Mist Man. The same one from 10 to 11 years ago. Kurajiri. Kurajiri blocked the students' way and warped them in different places, after the failed attempts of attacks were shot towards him. Izuku was dropped off at the water area with Sayu Asui and Mineta. He would have easily just used his hot ice core to make a slide or a bridge from the boat to the shore, but he can't leave his classmates alone. Izuku can't totally control the heat of his ice quirk. He can't fully suppress the hotness to the extent where he wouldn't give them burns. He started planning on things with difficulty. What do I do? Flashes. What do I do? Izuku thought. Wait, they don't know our quirks. He suddenly blurted out. What do you mean Midoriya, Kiro? Asui asked and Mineta is panicking in a corner. Your quirk works best in wet places right? Asui nodded at Izuku. And they brought you here. The idea seemed to hit Asui. Mineta, we might have the upper hand here. She said to the purple head. They calmed down Mineta a little bit. Izuku think for more seconds, snowstorm. Izuku thought. Asui, Mineta. I want you to survive snow. Is that alright? Hiro, I'm not good with snow Midoriya. I think I can. Mineta said. Izuku sighed. Think more for a few seconds, then he shot in blizzard of ice around and near them. Causing the villains that surround them whine at the heat. Even his two classmates. You two might have a fever after this. Izuku said, I let a strong snowstorm lead us to the shore. Mineta, stick to me using your balls and Asui wrap your tongue around my leg or waist, so we stick to each other. Or Mineta use your balls to stick Asui to me too. Asui, I need you to jump to give us boost in the air, it would be easier. I shot hot ice around so your temperature are controlled. Either way they got out of there. Izuku started his cold flames, resulting to a snowstorm-like form. It was so big and strong that not only the water area felt the cold. Was that Midoriya? Or Todoroki? Mina asked as she was with some of their classmates near the exits already. Then Todoroki walked towards them. Then, it's Midoriya. They exclaimed. Todoroki tilted his head at what they were talking about, then felt a little cold more than his limits. He looked at where the wind is coming from. Now, everybody is staring at the snowstorm Izuku has created. Azawa and the villain stopped and stared a second or two, but Azawa continued to fight wasting no time. Now at the shore, Izuku, Asui, and Mineta took a breath. Izuku who was exhausted is at the brink of fainting. Asui felt feverish, Mineta was shaking from the cold. Azawa is now barely surviving with a broken elbow and a nomu. Todoroki and Bakugo, along with Kirishima, ran to where Azawa is. They noticed their teacher, but Azawa fended them off. A gush of wind suddenly whirled around. The door opened revealing All Might and more pro heroes. Rushing to the center, All Might gave orders to the three student present. Take young Midoriya and the other two out of here, I have a villain to finish off. The three comply. Izuku who fully went unconscious, is carried by Bakugu and Asui was carried by Kirishima, then leaves Mineta to Todoroki who warmed Mineta up to stop the shivering. He then exchanged with Kirishima, then warmed Asui. The day was saved in the end. Izuku and Izawa was put to a stretcher and got sent to the hospital. Since Nezu announced their classes done and a week break to let them rest and upgrade security, Katsuki decided to stay with Izuku in the hospital, while his auntie Inko is being called. The next day. Izuku jolted away panting. 
This caught Katsuki and Inko's attention. Izuku, are you okay? Inko asked. Suddenly a flash of scenery came to Izuku. He tripped and a woman with white long hair ran to him and asked Izuku. Are you okay? W what? He blurted out. Are you okay? Inko repeated. With a soft confused face, Izuku nodded. Then he earned a hug. He smiled at his mother's actions. Glad you're okay nerd. I'll call the doctor auntie. Katsuki said as he take his leave. A few minutes later, the doctor went in. How are the others? Was Izuku's first concern. The doctor chuckled at the heroic boy. They're fine, nothing mire than bruises and scratches. Azawa and 13 though have their own rooms until recovery girl is available. How are you Izuku? I'm fine. He answered. I remember you're that amnesia patient right? We weren't sure if it was permanent or not, are you willing to do some tests? Before Izuku could talk Inko agreed. Then I'll schedule you later tomorrow. You only fainted from exhaustion and overuse of quirk. You didn't control your temperature which pushed yourself to a limit. You'll be fine with a few days rest recommended. Izuku nodded. Inko thanked the doctor. Midoriya-san, can we talk outside? Inko complied by following the doctor. Midoriya-san, have you told him yet? Inko shook her head no. The doctor sighed, so you don't plan on telling, is this why you want to do tests on his amnesia? Inko nodded. If his memories as a child came back, then, he'll find his real family. When I'm gone, someone will take him in. The sad conversation continued. Inko-san, he is a lucky boy to have Nim found by you. The next day, Shoto decided to visit Izuku. He doesn't know why, but he has the urge to. When he arrived at the floor, he saw Kasuki leaving. Oi, I see hot. The blonde called. Oh, Bakugu, he said. Is Midori awake? Shoto asks. You would have to wait, he's being tested for his amnesia. Bakugu said grumbling. He has amnesia. He didn't get it from the USJ attack so you could calm your mind off. Shoto looked confused. Izuku had his amnesia when he was three years old. How did he get his name? GRR. Ask him those type of questions. How am I supposed to know? Katsuki yelled, only to be stopped by a nurse. Shoto sighed and made his way to the receptionist of the floor, and Katsuki went in the elevator. Izuku Midoriya. He said. The nurse gave him the room number, and he sat on the near chairs to wait. Meanwhile, with Izuku. He jolted awake again as he dreams of sceneries. To be exact, memories. This is the fourth time. He would be put to sleep for minutes, five or less, only to be jolted awake by vague flashbacks. Soon enough the doctors concluded that he is slowly regaining his memories, maybe even pop it all at once in his head. Inko san he's starting to remember. Inko and Shoto. Inko was relieved at what she heard. Izuku would remember his family. She walked to Izuku's room as Izuku was being shot with calm sleeping serum. In the chairs next to the Izuku's hospital room door was a sitting Shoto Todoroki. Excuse me. She caught the boy's attention. Are you here for Izuku? The boy nodded. Inko looked at Shoto closely. The eyes, the hair color, the face shape, his ambience. Are same as Izuku Shoto bowed. You must be Mrs. Midoriya. I'm Shoto Todoroki, Izuku's classmate. Hello Shoto. Izuku would be asleep for a while, are you willing to wait? She asked. Shoto just nodded. At least more time away from that old man Shoto thought. Inko invited the boy to Izuku's room. Soon enough, nurses came in with a sleeping Izuku on a stretcher. He was carried to the bed and left there to sleep. Returning to the privacy. Shoto. The boy looked at Inko. Actually, I'm dying. This surprised Shoto. Mrs. Midoriya looks so healthy, no signs of fatigue and sickness. Izuku would be alone. I adopted him with the hopes of growing old and watch him be a pro hero. Unfortunately the world is cruel. What are trying to say Mrs. Midoriya? His memories from amnesia will come back when he finds his real family. I want to make a request to you. If you don't mind. What is it? I'll do my best Mrs. Midoriya. Shoto said with a barely noticeable hint of determination in his face. Inko took notice to this. You sure are determined. Shoto tilted his head. You are like Izuku. The way you show expressions are barely seen. But I can read him like a book. Mrs. Midoriya, where did his name came from? Shoto asks. Well, when I found Izuku, it was just months after my husband died. After adopting him, I named Izuku what my husband wanted to name our child. Shoto hummed in response. Soon after, Izuku started to shuffle in his sleep. Then tears started to form. Izuku. Izuku. Inko called to wake him up. The boy jolted awake for the many times this day. Is it that bad dream again? She asked. Izuku just nodded at her. Oh. Your friend is here. Izuku looked at where his mother pointed. Todoroki-kun. Hello, Midoriya. He said in monotone voice. 
Hello, Izuku returned with a smile. Somehow, Izuku looked different in Todoroki's eyes. Instead of a strong classmate, like he had seen in the USJ and his school, he was a little boy who longed for something. The content is still visible in his eyes. He must have loved Inko-san. Shoto thought. How's he gonna cope with her passing? For now, Shoto let the idea drop out of his head, and just wait for the time Izuku needs comfort. He took his leave for now, he didn't want to take much up of Inko's time with his adoptive son. He waved them goodbye, and both mother and son thanked him for coming. Shoto now on the way out of the out of the hospital, saw his sister. Fayumi. Fayumi. What are you doing here? He asked. Shoto, I'm here to see mom. Wanna come with? She asked. Shoto shook his head no as his brows are furred. I thought mom is in the mental. He asked. Well yeah, the mental building is behind building B of this hospital. Oh. Okay. How about you, what are you doing here? Fayumi asked curiously. Someone interesting from class got hospitalized. Shoto said blandly. Is it a G.I.R.L. she asked, teasing her little brother. No. Another answer with a bland voice. Geez Shoto, you're no fun. She pouted at his aloof brother. If there's nothing else, then I'm going. With Shoto's statement of leave, Fayumi felt heartbreak. She couldn't take this coldness between all of them. As she watched Shoto exit the hospital, her thoughts couldn't ignore the want to be with Tuya. The week break passed and students are to attend school. Midoriya didn't need to spend long wait in the hospital bed. He was discharged the day after Todoroki visited him. Well, Azawa forced his way out of the hospital, and his co-workers just gave up on him. Even Nezu. In the Midoriya apartment, coughs can be heard from the kitchen. Mom, are you okay? Izuku asks as he noticed the roughness of his mother's throat. Drink water okay? Maybe it's dry throat. He said as he put his shoes on. Okay dear. Good luck at school. She waved bye to her son from the kitchen. Love you mom. Love you too. Izuku happily walked to Yue. The classroom was noisy and chaotic as usual when he entered. Then just behind him, a gruffy voice spoke behind him. How are you Midoriya? Izuku looked back with a bit of stunned face, but relaxes no more than a second. How could he not? His sensei is still covered in bandages looking like a mummy. I am okay sensei. He said. How about you sensei? Well, it's better here than the hospital. As all was said as they both walk in. Sensei, the class shrieked. Sensei. Should you really be working right now? Azawa sighed. He thinks it's better here than the hospital. Izuku answered for Azawa. The dull teacher was secretly grateful for that. Go to your seats. In the next two weeks, the UA Sports Festival will be held. Their teacher said. Azawa sensei, is it really okay for the sports festival to continue? The UA Sports Festival is an important event on par with the Olympics. We can't just cancel it. Plus, we'll just be giving what the villains want by doing that. The class nodded as they understood. In these two weeks, I want you all to train. Since I'm too disabled to do actual lessons, Ectoplasm will take over in training you with his clones. Good luck. Ectoplasm came in, okay 1A, let's go outside. The class went to the changing room then went to where Ectoplasm is. Well, you have the whole hour to yourself with my clones, call me if they die out. I'll try to attend to you whenever I can. Ectoplasm said as he created his clones. Sports Festival. The day before the sports festival. Izuku was excited to go home, sleep, and wake up the next morning. Arriving home, Izuku was not greeted by Inko. With the thought that she will come back later, he went to his room, do the few homeworks and dressed in the living room a bit and watched the television. Not long later, jingling of keys are heard, and the door opened revealing no one else but Mama Inko. Hey mom. You're late today. Rough day. Inko looked tired, than usual. And a bit down. How about, I'll make dinner mom. Rest for a bit okay. Izuku offered. I want to cook for you at least this last time. Inko thought. How about we cook together? Ink smiled wide. A small smile like usual appeared on Izuku's face. Okay then. After Inko changed, she was determined to stay happy and be happy for and with Izuku. He may not be her real son by blood, but he's worth more than the universe to her. Inko already said goodbye to Mitsuki, who accepted her death as a request from Inko. Of course Mitsuki would want to spend more time with her best friend since high school but, Izuku would need his mother more. After making dinner, the two ate talking to each other. For Izuku, somehow, their conversation is happier than usual. Which made him smile more than he usually do. He showed his childish side that rarely comes out. Where his chuckles back him loud laughs, satisfying Inko's heart and wishes. Izuku's wide smile. After that, they're ready for bed. Hey Izuku. Can you sleep beside me tonight? Just for tonight. Izuku agreed to his mother's wishes. Now on the bed together. 
Inko and Izuku were just enjoying each other's presence. Mom. Promise me, you'll watch me live tomorrow. I'll blow you a kiss if I ever got caught in the camera. Inko chuckled. Yeah. I will. I'm sorry Izuku. I wouldn't be able to see you be cool in the sports festival. Izuku. Always remember that I love you okay? I love you too mom. Promise. Promise. Thank you Izuku. The next day, Izuku woke up early and alone in his mom's bed. Smelling the aroma of katsudin, he immediately rushed out the room and to the dining. I delivered your favorite. Inko said keeping her smile. Mom. Good morning. Good morning Izuku. Eat okay. You don't want to be tired all day if you want to win. Before she even knew it, her son already ate half the bowl. Slow down. You still have an hour and a half before call time. Izuku nodded but ate the same speed. Inko sighed and smiled in defeat. Soon enough, she gave one last look at his son with proud eyes. She tears up Izuku you are so cool. I'm so proud of you. She exclaimed hugging him. Don't cry mom. You'll see better stuff in the future. She just nodded and sent her son off. After a few minutes Izuku left, she decided it's time for her to leave too. Taking one last look at the apartment and reminiscing memories of her and Izuku playing and laughing. At UA. Everyone is pumped up. Even Izuku and Shoto who showed neutral faces, reek of determination and winning. With the crowd full of energy, present Mick and Midnight started welcoming the start of the festival. As Awa was just contradicting everything Mick says in the background, maybe small arguments here and there. A lot of heroes will be watching and is sure that they want to recruit students to join their agency. Especially, Endeavor. He came to watch his son, Shoto, to win the first place. But, there's something more that awaits the hero. Now on the sidelines, Endeavor is standing proudly in his hero suit and flames. Now that all classes are here. Izuku Midoriya. As the representative of the first years please give a motivation speech. Midnight called out. The red hat walked towards the small stage. Enji's eyes widen a bit at the familiarity. The hue of red, the tips that naturally fade into white. How could he not? The youngest child, his youngest son had the same hair. With his thoughts he didn't get to hear what the boy said. Izuku walked down on stage, with Midnight announcing the first event. An obstacle course. The students are ready at the starting line, all they are waiting for is the ghost signal. And on cue, start. Midnight yelled. The first thing that happened was ice. Shoto froze the whole tunnel with the hopes of freezing everyone and get a head start. Of course some of 1A saw this coming. Shoto was now running in the lead, but he felt heat. Hot like his flames. Izuku. Red hot ice path now taking the lead. The crowd went wild as this became a two-man show rather than one. Soon enough, both ice and fire users heard screaming. Bakugu they both sighed. Present Mika's commentator hyped the crowd more and more, others were still stuck with zero pointers, and the two simply used their different ice court to pass through them. Izuku felt sorry for those who touched his hot blizzards, but he needs to make his mama proud. Apparently, Shoto and Izuku are pretty much doing the same thing and in the same speed. The only difference is hot and one is cold. Endeavor was still eyeing Izuku wide-eyed. Instead of Shoto, he took interest in Izuku. Not in the way of training him to be the next number one, maybe if he brought him back, just maybe. Their family would slowly build up into a happy one again. He wants to make things better piece by piece. Looks like the two in the lead are being considerate folks. Present Mick announced since both boys avoided the mine bombs without their quirk. They're not being considerate, those bombs will blow up when the others will arrive. Which will slow them down. Eraser had sighed. Come on Eraser that's not a comment to hype the crowd. Then Bakugu started throwing faint explosions at mines in front of Shoto and Izuku, which made a war of three. Looks like they're fighting for the lead eraser what do you teach these kids to have so much determination, I don't do anything, they just have the will to be number one. Oh look, someone's coming out. And our first place is Izuku's rage. Oh look, someone's coming out. And our first place is Izuku Midoriya everybody. Present Mick announced. The crow cheered and Shoto got second, and Bakugu got third. Look. The quirk with spiky rubies is first amazing. The guy from the crowd said as he thought it was Izuku's quirk. And more comments. Once everybody arrived. Now, for the next event, everyone waited intently for Midnight's announcement. Cavalry battle. She exclaimed. Students were quite confused, so she went on with the rules. Same rules as the Anime. Currently Izuku is now struggling finding teammates, all because of his headband that's worth 10 million. Fortunately, someone same as him came up. No other than Shoto Todoroki. How about we help each other out to get to top? Shoto says, making Izuku smile small. They almost look alike. Then, they were joined by Mei Hatsune from the support course, and Fumikich Tokoyami, their classmate. 
I can handle both temperatures, baby. May exclaimed, making Izuku chuckle a bit. I do well in different temperature, I guess. Tokoyami said with a somewhat depressing tone. Time's up. Now, let the cavalry battle begin. Meanwhile, in the hospital, Inko Midoriya is sitting on the bed watching his son win the obstacle race while waiting for the nurse to come back with the sleeping serum. Aside from her many requests for Izuku, dying in her sleep was one of her wishes. The last time Inko Midoriya was in the clinic, the doctor already gave her the amount of time she has left. So she went to Mitsuki then eventually to her son. Right now, she's willing to accept her death and hoped Izuku for a happy life. She fell asleep after a few minutes of the serum affecting her. Her heartbeat in the monitor is still normal, too early to say, as the nurse said that to her co-worker. The heartbeat suddenly went wild, slow, fast, slow, slow, fast, then dropped. The sound of flatline ringed in the room, aside from that, the TV which played Izuku Midoriya's team won the cavalry battle. The close doctor to Inko came closer to her. Your son won Inko. She said holding Inko's hands, the female doctor looked at the nurse. Of course they know what to do, they covered her body and took her away from the room. Back at the sports festival, Midnight was announcing break before the one-on-one -on -one tournament. Enji Todoroki was waiting for his son to have a little talk with him. Instead of Shoto, he bumped into Izuku. Oh, you're the ruby court guy. Endeavor said as he raised his brow. Izuku gave him a look that Shoto normally wears. Neutral face. Not really. He answered. Then what do you call your quirk? Well, it won't be a surprise anymore later, but... It's called flames, hot ice. It's basically what the name is. Endeavor's eyes whitened. You have almost the same quirk as my son. Endeavor ruffled his head. Izuku bowed at the hero then walked his own way. Izuku went to lunch with Katsuki, and Katsuki's newfound friends joined them. Namely, Kirishima, Siro, Mina, and Kaminari Denki. Look, pairings are posted already. Denki pointed at the big screen. After 40 minutes of wandering around the festival stalls, Midnight finally announced the start of tournament. First battle is Izuku, who is matched up with someone who knows what his rubies do when touched. No it's not Hitoshi Shinsu, I won't be naming this character. Izuku took notice of this and just scared the boy away with his hot ice until he's out of bounds. He's saving his call flames for stronger matches. Izuku dubbed winner of the first match. His classmate Siro Hanta started making his way at the center. Meanwhile, at the waiting halls under the stadium. Shoto is making his way to the center of the stadium, on his way out is a waiting endeavor. You're in my way. Shoto said making endeavor feel a bit of guilt, but pushed it away. Use your fire Shoto, after that I'll be a father again. You were never a father what do you mean by again? Shoto replied with hatred seeping out his voice. What? Can't talk. I won't use your power in fighting. You will reach the limit of that power soon. Shoto walked out mad. His match was fast, taking out his anger at Siro. As the match announced start, Siro wrapped his tape around Todoroki, with the plan of pulling him out of bounds. Unfortunately the latter is not in the best mood right now. Todoroki used his ice, freezing a part of the stadium. The ice was so big that the whole stadium fell cold, it can also be seen from outside the stadium, which shocked the pro heroes patrolling outside. Sorry, I took my anger out on you. Todoroki apologized as he melts the ice off Siro. After that, other more matches took place before finally, both boys with quite similar quirks are called on to battle. Izuku Midoriya from Hero Course and Shoto Todoroki also from Hero Course both of these kids have almost the same quirk actually present Mick announced. The crowd saw Todoroki's quirk in full power, what about Izuku's? The curious crowd was excited for the match. Though Todoroki took notice of Izuku's difference in his expression. A few minutes before the match, Izuku is sitting with Bakugou with the crowd. Ijiro came to them saying that a call was ringing from Midoriya's locker. Izuki was excited thinking that it might be his mom calling him to congratulate. The low-key happy red had speed walked to the locker rooms and took his still ringing phone. He didn't bother to look at the caller or the number, he answered, hey M. Hello, MR. Midoriya. This is the hospital. He was cut off by the caller. Izuku overcame with worry all of a sudden. I is there something wrong? He stuttered. Your mother must have kept thing a secret but, she has this illness for quite a while now and. She, she's already dead. In one phrase, the nurse from the other line went straight to the point. Izuku's head went low. You're joking right, an angry voice echoed in the room. It's not real. He said, not accepting anything the nurse said. I know you have a battle soon. But she said to show your best to the crowd. I came to pass that message too. So instead of running off to the hospital, Izuku stayed and went to his match. Proving my cold flames once is enough to show right. Then I'll say my goodbyes to you properly. He whispered to himself hiding his tears and turning them to rage. 
With furrowed brows, Izuku came out of the shadows and met Todoroki in the middle. Start. Shoto immediately aimed his ice at Midoriya, only to be countered by the latter's hot ice, making steam seep off the stadium. Why is there fog? Steam. What's happening? The confused crowd went on. Then comes in present Mick. Actually folks Izuku Midoriya's quirk are not just red crystals that is hot ice. Talk about frozen love listeners. Hey you. Midoriya called as his head was down leaving shadows for his eyes. How am I supposed to tell my mom that I showed my best if you don't use your fire? Shoto's eyes widened at his statement. He ignored it and continued to aim his eyes to Izuku who kept countering them. Soon enough both ice breaks off or melts due to their scientific reactions. The younger had enough. Use your fire damn it Izuku screams and surprised Shoto. Not only Shoto but Endeavor is surprised himself. The half and half boy didn't know why, but he had the urge to use his flames. Burning his uniform, Shoto let out his flames on his left side. Making Izuku chuckle in content. That's it. He said as tiny snow and snowflakes started to form on Izuku slowly dedaking and falling to the ground. The coolness being let out as bluish white flames slowly grows. Todoroki grew his flames, aiming to Midoriya, the latter grew his cold flames, creating a snowstorm-like experience around the stadium. Two temperatures fighting for its own victory, a racer. What's with your class? Mick commented. Now with the snowstorm, the only way for every watcher to know the upper hand, is whether the red flames they see would take over the cold. Not controlling his emotions, just like Shoto earlier, he took out his anger in the battlefield. Intensifying the cold fire he has, the temperature is getting lower some walls are starting to freeze, and blizzards are forming. Todoroki's red flames are slowly disappearing until it's completely cold only. Midnight put Izuku to sleep as he there seems to be no stop to this. Once the red hat is asleep, the flames disappeared, and so is the storm-like occurrence. Leaving only the frosts on the walls and some snow on the ground, making the stadium look Christmas-themed. All other heroes and watchers could do was stand there frozen and stunned at the stunt Izuku Midoriya pulled off. Aftermath. Once everything can be seen clear, Todoroki is on the ground, knocked out, shivering from the cold. He uses his ice but can never go to a temperature lower than what his powers set. In Izuku's case, just like how Endeavor can adjust the high of his flames, he can adjust the flames lower. Both boys knocked out was brought to recovery girl. On the bed, Midoriya woke up and remembered the hospital. And so ignoring recovery girl, he ran out of the infirmary, changed his clothes, and made his way fast to the hospital. The ambience of the hospital was depressing for the boy. Once arrived at the floor where her mother is said to be, he opened the door and saw the dead body of her mother. The nurses and doctors left the room to give him time and privacy. Seeing his mother lifeless on the metal bed, he took her hand and cried on it. On the floor, he wasn't like his usual stoic self. His emotions are all out there, he screamed. Luckily, rooms like that are soundproof. It avoided disturbance of other parts of the hospital. W.Y. Didn't why you tell me. I could have spent em more time. With why you Izuku said in between sobs. And no dot dot wonder why you h have those as strange requests. I could have g given more you em more. Mom. I a dot I did em my best I won. So please e don't l leave me. You haven't even s see me fight a v villain yet. Please. Please Izuku's voice becomes a whisper as his pleadings end only to start a loud cry again. It was the afternoon and the sports festival is almost a finish. In all honesty, Kasuki would admit he's scared facing off Izuku. He knows that his friend is. Different, today. But he didn't know why. The Redi didn't tell him anything. Instead of fighting head on with Izuku, Kasuki won by default. He was happy he won, mad that he didn't get a good fight, and worried that his friend didn't show up. Izuku wasn't the type to run away. Shoto ended up second because Midoriya was gone, Kasuki at first and Tokoyami at third. Back at the hospital, the doctors came to check up on Izuku. The boy fell asleep on the floor with his head leaning beside the bed, holding his mother's hand. It was obvious that the boy cried for hours. It's already midnight and he went in there around 3 or 4 where the sun is still up. The female doctor who checked called a male nurse or at least someone who could help carry Izuku to a room. It's the least she can do for the pitiful kid. They offered the boy a hospital bed. Poor kid, he cried himself to exhaustion. The male doctor said, is he gonna be part of the foster system? She asked him. He's almost 16, the government allows them to be alone if they can provide for themselves. Kids his age won't usually get adopted easily. He answered. They close the door behind them and continue with work. The next day, early morning. They check on Izuku's room but he wasn't there anymore. A note was left though. Thank you for providing a room. It was a simple note but admirable for someone who's suffering. It's the weekend Suzuku has all day free to himself. He chose to go home and lock himself in this mother's room. 
not minding the kitchen or any other part of the house. He took the pink cardigan in her drawer, the one she always wears. I miss you, he said as he hugged the clothing on the floor. He himself to sleep again. Waking up a few hours later, he stares to the wall looking at nothing but playing happy memories in his head. I should have noticed, he mumbled. He would go to the bathroom, drink water, sometimes thought of hurting himself. But he knew better than that and turn away immediately. He would wrap himself in a blanket and just sit on Inko's bed. This was all he was doing until the next day. Sunday passed fast for Zuku, the boy only cried, sleep, and bathroom the whole day. He didn't feel like going to school either. It was as if he forgot his dreams of becoming a hero. Then knocks on the door were heard. It got more aggressive and aggressive as seconds pass, the redhead knew that it was his blonde friend knocking on the door. He didn't want to deal with anything, so he ignored the knocks until Katsuki disappeared. He was successful at wasting the angry blonde's time that Katsuki went to school late. At UA, the two friends are supposed to be with each other, but no Midoriya came into session. Bakugu was late, he slammed the door open angrily and went to his seat, ignoring Izawa. The class waited for the other tardy but no one else. Just Bakugu. Bakugu, where's Midoriya? Sensei asks. Bakugu shrugged. That nerd's the reason I'm late. He exclaimed. Dot dot he wasn't at home. No one was answering their door. I couldn't reach his phone too. He said, calming down a bit. Azawa sighed, rubbing things off as a one-time thing. But boy was he so wrong. Azawa resumed his class. Actually, you're just in time Bakugu. We'll be talking about a genesis that wants to recruit you. Here's the list. As always showed the list to the class, Midoriya having the most number of agencies, then Shoto then Bakugu. The rest of the class also had been recruited, but can't really compare to the three's number. You have three weeks to chose. And it's time to pick hero names. Since I'm not really the best with this type of stuff, Midnight will take over. With that, Azawa put on his sleeping bag and slept on the floor. Then Midnight slammed the door so hard that it made a bam. Hello, 1A. Am so, the class continued. No show Izuku went on the whole week, up until the half of the next. And Izuku's achievements in those days is he has advanced himself to self-harm, just as he thought that he knew better, he doesn't know what he was doing until it finished. All he could do after is sob his sorries to his dead mother when he sees himself in the mirror. Yes he does eat. Instant Raymond was all he ate. He gave up on the non-eating spree after the fourth day of his self-confinement. And due to his lack of emotion control, Izuku lacked the control of his quirk. Whenever he walked the halls TP get Raymond or to the bathroom, either his cold or hot would activate. It's now Wednesday, Izuku has locked himself up from the world 12 days straight since last Saturday. Azawa ended the class but called Bakugu to stay a little longer. He knew that the blonde has a close tie to Izuku, he couldn't allow his student to continue like this, especially a promising one. What if he's in danger? That's what worries the teacher most. Bakugu. How many days has Izuku lost contact? He asked Bakugu. After he left from the sports festival. The blonde answers. Is his house locked? Katsuki nods. How about her mother? I haven't heard from Auntie Inko since the last time I saw her. He replied to his sensei. You say your family's close right? Does your mom know anything? Azawa asked hoping this would lead to something. I don't know. But old hag's been acting weird lately. Let me talk to Nezu. You wait outside. Azawa said. After talking with Nezu, specifically asking permission to break in the Midoriya apartment, the principal nodded. Bakugu, we're gonna break in Midoriya's home. Bakugu wide-eyed surprised at the fact that they're actually gonna break in. Meanwhile, Izuku was in another session of cutting in the bathroom. His vision started blur, and he straighted to shake. Whoops. I I went too deep. He said in a weak voice then. Thud. I don't want to see you depressed. Azawa and Katsuki are now in front of the apartment. Knocked on the door hoping they didn't have to break it, but it remained as a hope. Bakugu blew up the front door revealing mess. Raymond cups on the floor, temperature is not constant. You'll see some of Izuku's hot red eyes glowing like lava in the dark, some snow-like stuff are on the floor. What happened here? The blonde let out as he took a peek in Izuku's room and opened the lights. The room's untouched sensei. He said, as Awa made his way to Katsuki from the kitchen. Avoiding burning himself from the hot ice. It was weird, the mess outside was far from his room. Though dust may be seen on some surfaces. Then, they checked the next room. Inko Midoriya's room. This is Auntie Inko's room, by the look of this house. I think she hasn't seen it yet. Bakugu said. Azawa slowly turned the doorknob to open a somewhat messy room. A burr of Raymond cups at the corners, some of Izuku's quirks on the floor. And walls. 
though it was colder than any places in the house, frost on plastered on the walls, the floor where you could slip and fall as if you're in a skating rink. Blanket a mess on the bed and a crinkled pink cardigan. Then, a faint smell of iron meets his always nose. His eyes widen. Back you go the bathroom. His student complied and ran to the bathroom, where he filled both investigators. The smell only gets stronger and stronger as they near the door. They only have to push it wide open. What they saw made them put horror in their faces. Izuku Midoriya is on his own puddle of blood. Azawa immediately called for help, and Bakugou ran to the knocked out Izuku and pulled his friend in a hug. He checked the pulse, slow and faint, but it's still there. He exclaimed at Azawa. Tears slowly formed his eyes. W what the hell nerd. He said as he tries to stop the slow bleeding. The ambulance is here Bakugou. Azawa said as sirens were heard outside. Kasuki carried his friend to the stretcher, then called his mom. Where are you damn brat you're late in M. Them mom. He rarely calls me mom. Mitsuki thought before answering. Kasuki, what happened? She changed her tone to a soft one. Izuku. At the hospital. Please. Be bring me there. Now. Please. He said in between sobs. Kasuki where are you? Izuku's. Mitsuki hang up, as Awa went with Izuku in the ambulance. Not long later, a car stopped in front of the blonde. He knows it's their car and he went in the back seat. The ambulance already got him. As always sensei is with him. Katsuki was calm. Mitsuki however felt even more depressed than she already is. It's my fault it's my fault Mitsuki cried with tears as she drives. What do you mean mom? I should have been there for Izuku I'm supposed to look after him she continued her blame. Old hag what are you talking about? Katsuki yelled to get his mother's attention. Inko's dead Katsuki. She said. Auntie. Inko. No funeral was held. But she is buried properly with a proper grave. The rest of the car ride was quiet. Meanwhile with Izawa. Izuku is now clean and put into an IV. He has his own hospital room. The doctor came in and looked at Izuku more pitifully than she did last time. Poor kid. She said. Izawa raised a brow. You met him before. He asked. He noticed the attachment of the nurse to his student in her eyes. His mother died the day of UA sports festival. The nurse said. So that's what happened huh? Izawa looked at his student. He's by himself. The nurse added. Azawa gave a shock look. Mrs. Midoriya's husband died 12 years ago. Why are you telling me this? The sleepy ma'am asks. I'm a friend of the Midoriya's, you look like you can help him. She said. Izuku suffered amnesia when he was just three, his memories are starting to return slowly. We are now waiting if he remembers anything about his original family. He's adopted. Inko found him crying in an alley and brought him here 11 to 12 years ago. Got attached to the child and felt lonely after Hisashi's death. So she adopted. Azawa nodded at her. The door creaked open. How's his condition? Kasuki asked as he walks towards them with his mother following behind. He'll be fine. He'll probably wake up tomorrow. He just dropped because of the blood loss and exhaustion. Though, he may need help mentally when he wakes up. A bit later, the Bakugus decided to stay with Izuku. Azawa has to go home and sleep a bit before his patrol starts. The next day, Class 1A was energetic as usual. Everyone is in early Kumurta school. The quiet Shoto was thinking hard on his desk. He recruited Izuku into his agency. What does he want with him? His thoughts were swirling around the fact that his father recruited his classmate. Lately, his father has been acting weird. Less strict and more smiling or good mood. He doesn't have any nad intentions to show either. He stopped pushing Shoto to his limits. Actually, Angie found something interesting the weekend after the sports festival that is worth smiling and thought of as life-changing. The hero thought he could fix his family again. He wanted to be a good father to his son, and make up for his mistakes with the three. Azawa went in the classroom looking tired more than usual. Class. Quiet down. He said. The class complied. Today, Bakugou is not here, and Midoriya is not here since last week. I'll get straight to the point. Midoriya is in the hospital for now. Bakugou is there taking care of him. He's the only person Midoriya has left. Shoto's eyes widen. He knew exactly what happened. Mrs. Midoriya died already. Everyone looked at him. Did I say that out loud? Now really in his thoughts. How do you know the Todoroki? Sensei asked. Talk to her once. She made me keep a promise. And that's the end of his talking not willing to tell more. Then. Keep that promise kid. As always said. The day went on, Izuku woke up after lunch. Oi nerd. Izuku looked at Bakugou. I'm sorry Kakin. The redhead said. Just. Don't do it again okay? Oh? Kakin cares. The tease was lacking emotion, but it's enough to make the blonde embarrassed. I see, I was worried for nothing after all. 
I don't like seeing you depressed, Kakin. I don't want to see you depressed too. Damn nerd. Shoto's promise. Shoto heard what happened to Izuku. He didn't know why, but he has this urge to visit him. Weekend came in to satisfy that urge. He hurried his way to the hospital after breakfast. Besides, someone should give the list of recruits to Midoriya. Once there he was met with Bakugu, again. This time, the blonde wasn't coming out but coming in the hospital. I see hot. What are you doing here? Quiet Bakugu, we're at the hospital. The blonde gave a TCH with crossed arms and furrowed brows. Looking back at Todoroki again, what are you doing here? He asked again. Well, someone needs to bring this to Midoriya. Shoto shows the list of agencies that Izuku can choose on. Then let's go. I lead the way. Kasuki walked towards the elevator followed by Shoto. Arriving at the right floor they walk down the hall a little more, then there's the door that says Midoriya on it. The doctor that just came out Midoriya's room saw Shoto and said, I didn't know Izuku has a brother. This caught both boys' attention. Oh. Dr. Hetsum, he's just a classmate. Kasuki said. Oh, my bad, you look hindo like Dr. Hetsum, the female doctor who took care of Izuku since then, passed both boys. The two went in to see Izuku sitting and looking out the window. Izuku. The Redeed noticed Kasuki's voice and immediately turned to him. Hello. Oh hi Todoroki. He greeted. The two boys sat by Izuku's bedside with the available seats. Azawa gave me your list of recruits. Shoto said as he handed Izuku the papers. There's so many. The red hat exclaimed showing some emotions of excitement. After looking through the list, Izuku chose Endeavor Agency. Then, I'll tell my father. Shoto said. He noticed that Izuku felt empty. Despite showing lack of emotions, Izuku was always filled with determination. This time, Izuku was empty. No flames of fight in him can be seen. Kitsuki noticed the pity look Shoto is giving Izuku. He immediately pulled the staring boy out the room. Izuku excuse us for a minute. He said before closing the door. What are you doing? Shoto asked. Don't look at Izuku like that. Like what? With pity. Shoto was shocked for a moment. He's been diagnosed with depression for the meantime. That's why I can't leave his side. During daytime I am here, mom takes over at night. Azawa would visit every 10 minutes before his patrol. Depression? Shoto asked even more shocked, but hid his emotion inside. Katsuki nodded. I. We saw him, Azawa and I decided to break in his home. It was a mess, his cork was all over the place, empty Raymond cups scattered on the floor. The last thing we saw horrified us. Izuku was in his own puddle of blood. With cuts. He can't seem to remember the time when he cuts. Akigu, why are you telling me this? Shoto asked. The blonde sighed. He doesn't want anyone looking at him with pity. He hates it just as much as I do. I don't know why, but I think he got it from his original family. Shoto then understands. His phone rang and he saw Fayumi was the caller. Tell Izuku that I'll take my leave. He said then waved by at Bakugu. He then answered the call. Fayumi? Shoto. Father found something. I don't care boo he got cut off. Please. All I want is for a family again. He couldn't ignore his sister's pleading. So he hang up and went home. At the Todoroki household, Enji, Fayumi, and Natsuo are gathered at the dinner table. The front door opens revealing Shoto. The boy immediately saw the file on the table. What's that DNA results? He asked the three. Izuku. Is alive. Enji said. He's your classmate Shoto. He added. The boy exactly knew who he was talking about. Fayumi and Natsuo were happy and smiling, even though they tried to hide it. He doesn't deserve this family then. He said shocking Enji. I know. If he really is my brother, I don't want him here. Shoto repeated. What are you saying Shoto? Fayumi exclaimed. He has depression, and this family will only make that worse. He shouted angrily at the three. WH what? Natsuo stuttered out. Shoto. What do you know? Enji asked. He has depression. His adoptive mother died only just recently, specifically the day of the sports festival. That's why his quirk was uncontrollable then. His amnesia is being treated, I don't want to ruin the recovery. He explained. I don't even want him in your agency. But I can't do anything about his choice. Enji was shocked that the boy would pick his agency. I made a promise. Shoto said. The three listened intently. I promised Mrs. Midoriya to make sure Zuku was safe and happy with his new family. That's why I couldn't let him here. Shoto Fayumi and Natsu let out. Shoto, let me make things right. Let's start by taking care of Izuku. Then your mo. Father, this family isn't what Izuku needs. About mom. I'll start visiting her. This statement shocked Fayumi and Natsuo. Really? Was they both let out? Shoto nodded. Prove to me you changed, then I'll let Izuku stay here. 
Dote on him, care for him, make up everything on us. Do anything you want but don't rush Shizuku's memories and tell him we're family. Not yet Shoto said. Shoto thank you for this chance. Was Endeavor's thoughts at the moment. Enji, this is your one time chance. Everything will be fixed. With that, Izuku was set on Endeavor's agency, so is Shoto. Aside from accepting his flames, he also wants to keep an eye on Izuku and Endeavor. In the teacher's lounge of UA, Azawa is making a call to Endeavor. Finally the non-stop talking assistant gave the phone to Endeavor. Endeavor speaking. Endeavor, this is Shota Azawa, a racerhead, homeroom of 1A. Azawa said. Did Shota cause any trouble? The flame hero asked. No, it's about Izuku Midoriya. He chose your agency, but he's gonna join you late. It's okay, I heard from Shoto. Azawa, I need your help with something. I hope we can arrange a meeting. Endeavor said. Azawa was surprised at the sudden call, but heroes do have unexpected work, so he thought it was about hero work. Where do you want to meet? My office will be fine. Endeavor said ending the call immediately after. Azawa shrugged. The erasure hero decided to visit Izuku that night. When he opened the door to his hospital room he was surprised to see Shoto aside from the Bakugus. Todoroki, what are you doing here? He sighed. Visiting my classmate sensei, I'll be off a bit later as Kasuki. Shoto said. Shoto couldn't say to Izawa that Izuku is his brother, the latter would hear. Izuku knowing was what Shoto is avoiding. Izawa looked at Kasuki who was fixing his stuff about to go home with Misair. Suddenly, Izuku winced a bit catching everyone's attention. They all looked at the red hat holding his forehead. Izuku, are you okay? Kasuki asked leaving his packing on hold and rushed beside Izuku. J just a memory. He said, what did you see now? Asked Kasuki. Fire in a traditional room. Also shouting. And sirens. Shoto went white eyed, he immediately looked away. Kasuki noticed this and made a mental note to talk to Todoroki later. Well, don't mind too much about those flashes okay. The doctor said everything will come together in Pisces. The red hat nodded then yawned. Midoriya, you need rest, Misuki will stay with you like usual. The rest of us will go. Get better soon, said Izawa. You go at the front entrance Kasuki, I'll get the car from the parking lot and pick you up there, Misaru said. Kasuki complied and walked out saying goodbye to Izuku. Todoroki followed him out. Walking the halls of the hospital, Kasuki started a conversation. What is Izuku to you? I know you know something we don't. What he wants to show and mean. What is Izuku to you? I know you know something we don't. Shoto sighed at the blonde. I will tell you, but don't tell Izuku my father did a DNA test. Izuku is my brother. You gotta be shizzing me. Kasuki yelled, getting stares from people, making Shoto shush him. I'll tell you the story. The half and half said. They both are now at the entrance, since Masaru wasn't there yet, Kasuki decided to ask the reason of not telling his friend. Hey, why not tell Izuku? Our father's a bastard. Was all Shoto blurted, leaving the blonde at the entrance. Kasuki was shocked that Endeavor was like that in reality. He has always thought that the hero was cool. He could even tell that Izuku's favorite hero was Endeavor. From his hero name to his stoic personality, he may not be the ideal hero, but Izuku liked the way Endeavor tried hard to achieve to be number one. It's what the hero's hero name means. The red hat believed they have the same determination. Kasuki sighed as he entered his father's car that had just arrived. Masaru saw this problematic face, hey Kitsuki, you okay? Kitsuki only gave a hum. The blonde's thoughts went to the Bakugu's plan on adopting Izuku, if Endeavor was really a problem, then they are sure to continue the invite. Of course, this blonde will not expect what he will hear next from Todoroki. The next day, Izuku was still in the hospital and visited by the usual Kitsuki. Meanwhile, at Endeavor's agency, Azawa left his classes early to meet Endeavor. Entering the office, he asked, what job are you in for me today? before even looking up. When he did, he did not saw Endeavor but Enji Todoroki. The man was out of his hero costume and looks defeated sitting on his chair. Azawa. You have a family right? The black-haired hero grew curious of the conversation. Yes, why? Endeavor knew that Azawa was a good dad, he once saw the family out once. I'm a terrible father. The flame hero said, did you know that I have two dead sons? Azawa white-eyed, as far as he know Endeavor has three kids, but recently Nezu had told him that Endeavor did have two more sons. Azawa nodded. I did a DNA test actually. One is still alive. Azawa was surprised yes, but what's the matter gotta be? I had so many mistakes, I abused my family. They hate me, I neglected Fayumi and Atsu, trained Shoto and Tuya past their limits, didn't save Izuku in time, and sent their mother to the mental ward. Shoto went white-eyed. He felt anger grew inside him. What do you mean Izuku? 
he asked the flame hero. I don't know how he kept his name Izuku, but Izuku Midoriya is my son. That will be a problem, Izuku can't stay in a house of a broken family, stated Azawa. Shoto doesn't want me to take him for the very same purpose, but I want to make everything right. Because of Izuku, the kids gave me a chance. Shoto would not allow Izuku in the family unless I changed. So basically you need a how to be a father 101 from me. Anji nodded. Azawa sighed. Izuka right now is lonely, basically grieving from his adoptive mother's death. I assume you don't want to tell him before everything is fixed right. Anji nodded again. All the four Todorokis want to do is give Izuku a peaceful and happy family. How about visit him, dote on him like a father, show your kindness to him and your good means to him. The teacher suggested. The look on Enji was a bit hesitant as he saw the kid was like Shoto. Enji Todoroki, they may seem stoic and serious, but kids will always be kids. Even if they don't show, they want a doting and loving family. They want attention of their parents in a good way. Izuku, sometimes can be childish. One moment he was so serious the other he just seems like a lost five-year-old. The doctor said that his memory may be affecting his personality. Amnesia can get pretty complicated. What does his childishness have to do with this? Enji asked confused, as always sighed tiredly. He just stated a long talk earlier, then he has to explain again. I may not be a fan of kids because they are easy to handle, but I did learn that kids are easy to persuade and make happy. Izuku is smart and kind like his adoptive mother, met the woman once, if ever he'll know the truth. He may be mad but in the end, forgiveness will take over him. Because that's the morals he was taught. Enji nodded in understanding. I get it now, but. If you hate children so much, why be a teacher? Enji couldn't count how many times his all was sighed in their meeting. I was forced to Mata, Nimuri, and Tensei. Any more questions? He said sleepily. Enji shook his head no. Then, let me ask you a question. Enji raised a brow at Izawa. What is it? Why did you decide to be a better father? Realization and interference. Why did you decide to be a better father? Asked Izawa. Not that people can't change, it's just, something must have brought the flame hero to reality. Last year, a few months before Shoto's entrance exam in February, Enji went to the mall. It was nothing special really. He happens to need something in his rest day. What he didn't expect was to see Yagi Tashinori, or All Might, the number one hero and symbol of peace, with his family. He acts so differently towards his family and his hero form. Enji thought. He fell somehow in pain, the sight of a young blonde girl teasing with her older brother. Tashinori holding his wife like a treasure. Walking past him were the smiles of the Yagi family. Jealous. No. Just realized something. His memories played in his head like a movie, the mistakes he made, the abuse he put upon, the cries of his kin. I was the problem all along, huh? He murmured to himself. Enji became aware of himself. After that, days passed. In those past days, every night, he would dream. The dream was happy, but he would wake up sad. It's a dream where he was with Rei, deep down, he knows he loves Rei. Rei would be by his side watching the kids. Izuku was playing with Shoto, Fayumi watching over, Tuya and Natsuo, debating whether who's the best brother. But Izuku would end up choosing Shoto. The sight would disappear every time, then he'll wake up crying. On the other end, if there are dreams, there are nightmares. The family was complete, peaceful, laughing at the dinner table. But, where is he? He's not a part of it. He's nowhere to be seen. He would wake up crying again. From that, he had a new dream. Forget surpassing all might. He'll make things right slowly. Bring flowers to Rei every time he can, even though he wasn't allowed to see her he would just send them. He'll make up with the kids, he'll slowly start with Shoto, hoping Fayumi would forgive him. Natsuo would let him talk. I saw family the memories flash to me like a movie. I see and admit my mistakes, wrongs, and faults. If I want to move forward, admitting my wrongs would be the first step in changing. I won't force their forgiveness, I have to earn them. The flame hero said. As Zawa nods. I'll help you. The statement shocked Enji. The kid deserves a right family. And Shoto, he wouldn't be a great hero if he still will hold that grudge against his past. I want to see my student succeed. As always said, sighing again after. Enji could have sworn the man sighed more than ten times already. Todoroki, change is already an amazing thing itself. Changing for the better from the worst is almost immaculate. Like a super villain changing into a hero. As always told Enji to reassure him. After more talks, soon enough As always has to take his leave. I'll take you to him tomorrow. Act like a dad not a father. He told Enji before exiting. Truth be told, Azawa didn't like the man at all. Endeavor, a man who focused on the limelight. Seeing Shoto Todoroki it was obvious the man wasn't taking care of his family. Which made the underground hero hold a grudge more for some unknown reason even to himself. 
Maybe Azawa just cares about family so much. He remembered his days where his family was unworthy to call one. Obviously Endeavor right now was honest. He has completely forgotten about his dream of surpassing all might and career the happiness of his family. Which made Azawa like the man. Turns out they have a lot in common. Not that Enji noticed this comments, but Azawa did. The flame hero was simple minded and indeed in need of help in this messy situations. His natural born stoic ambience, the environment he grew up in. Azawa knew of this. He once read documentary of top heroes. So Azawa was proud of this someone is willing to change. Izuku is laying on his hospital bed, he's supposed to be sleeping, but he couldn't. He was so used to Mitsuki's company, unfortunately the blonde mother isn't available. Azawa took over. He entered the room to be met with a worried Izuku. Why are you up? He asked. Can't sleep. Then what are you thinking? The Redeed shifted his head from the window and faced Azawa. My family. The boy said. You worry problem child. Izuku hummed in agreement. What if they don't like me? What if they're not what I expected? What if they're dead or gone? Incomplete. Shota was shocked at the long talk Izuku has made. The boy was rather reserved and always limited his speech. Even in class and talking to Katsuki. You just want a good family right? Azawa said. The boy nodded. Azawa sat down on the chair available at the bedside. I know I must not interfere but. I know who your family is. He said catching Izuku's full attention. You're closer to them than you thought. It's just, they have problems to fix first before bringing you in. What do you mean problems? Izuku tilted his head. You'll find out soon but know that they are doing their best to provide you a healthy environment. As always said. You should sleep. Then, if they're doing their best for me. That's more than what I could ask for. It is my worries that they still want me. Izuku told Izawa before closing his eyes. I made the right choice. Izuku is forgiving. Telling him this will help him understand. Izawa thought as he slowly heard the redhead snores. Meanwhile. In Shoto's bedroom, he is debating whether he would stick to his word in visiting their mother or not. Not visiting her for all these years was already guilt building in him. What kind of son am I? He whispered to himself. Laying on his back, Shoto was ready to sleep. He reminded himself to visit Midoriya after internships. Azawa was talking to the doctor before he take his leave to UA. He still has a teaching job you know. The covering amnesiac patients like Izuku would probably remember most of their memories before the incident. I know that he was three, but this has no exceptions. If it was traumatic, then we have to put him to more therapy. Just to be sure. Dr. Hetsum told Azawa. How long does he still need to stay? Azawa asked. Well, by the end of the week he should be okay. If his complete memories didn't retrieve by then, then. You could just visit any time. She said. Azawa nodded, then excused himself. He left Midoriya doing classwork so he doesn't miss out or get left behind. Soon enough Bakugu should be here to help Izuku before his internship starts in the afternoon. Leaving the hospital, Azawa made a call pulling his phone out of his yellow sleeping bag. Don't question me where he kept his sleeping bag all along. Ringing Enji, hello. The flame hero said from the other line. It's Azawa. Did anything traumatic happen to me Izuku back then before he was taken away? We always kept him away from his siblings fights and our training. Basically we hid everything from him. Angie explained. Are you sure? I'm not sure if he remembered the fire incident though. The flame hero let out. Azawa sighed. Okay. He remembered the burning room, but that's all, nothing else yet. I'm asking because he's a recovering amnesiac patient. I hope you're aware of that. Yes, Shoto told me. Anyways, I have to go. Internships are starting. Endeavor hang up on Azawa and the latter did his thing. At Endeavor's agency, Shoto entered the room with furrowed brows like how he usually greet his father. Endeavor just sighed like Izawa. We will postpone our schedule Shoto. We will visit Izuku. Enji said. Making Shoto lose his cool. What? The loving father. What is he trying to pull out here? Shoto thought irritated at the man in front of him. I said we're visiting Izuku. Enji repeated. I told you thought Shoto was cut off by his father. I know you might think that it's too fast or early, but I really want this. He said to Shoto. Of course the younger Todoroki expected that his father would meet Izuku and slowly get close to him not rush and speedy like hawks. He can't really do anything if he wants to stick to his words. He did say that he'd let his father do what he wants, but not rush his brother's memories. Okay, he let out. And so the two left the building, and Shoto led the man to Izuku's room in the hospital. Shoto entered the room to be met with by Izuku, who seemed to stop what he was doing. Oh. Hello Shoto Izuku smiled. He seemed rather lively. But after that super bright smile he immediately coughed it out and compassed himself. What it's Sundir. 
Shoto smiled a small and greeted the redhead. Hello, Izuku. Shoto walked towards his brother and gave him a pat on the head. Izuku enjoyed this feeling. He didn't mind Shoto being close and touchy. He felt safety in their interaction. You have a visitor, he said to Izuku as he backed away. The only visitor he gets was Izawa, Shoto and the Bakugus, so he was surprised when he saw Endeavor walk in the room. The Endeavor. Izuku suddenly got a backflash of him and his always conversation. It's just, they have problems to fix before bringing you in. The words of his teacher rang in his head. Izuku smiled a small one, Shoto and his father not giving it too much thought. I see. Thank you for your efforts. Suddenly he started to tear up when he read the situation and plans of the people in front of him. Shoto became worried and brotherly instincts took over. He came near Izuku and rubbed his back trying to calm him down. But of course Izuku was only crying tears of relief and joy. T thank dot dot you. He said. Enji and Shoto were obviously confused and lost with Izuku's words, but figured it was because of making the number two hero visit him. A few minutes later, Izuku came to his calm, and Enji took this chance to greet him properly. Hello Izuku. I'm. Enji Endeavor. Izuku smiled at the man. How are you kid? I'm doing good. Izuku hummed. The rest of the day was them getting to know each other. It was safe to say that Izuku smiled a lot more than his usual self. Through the week until Izuku was discharged, Endeavor and Shoto visited him and put aside the internship or work studies. They showed Izuku the care of a father and brother. Shoto would sometimes talk to Izuku about their other siblings. The Redeed was happy and excited to meet the set Fayumi and Natsuo. Shoto and Enji sighs in relief, knowing that the youngest seemed to like them, not knowing that Izuku figured things out. Shoto and his mom are in a good relationship. He was easily forgiven. They would talk about how Shoto was doing at the hero course. Fayumi and Natsuo were talking to their mom about how excited they are for the winter, which a long time to go. They were fond of the cold. Rei told her children about how Endeavor is to her. Your father. Give him a chance Natsuo. The said son gave a look of hesitance. But he was so mean to you. Natsuo exclaimed. Rei smiled as soft. You see those flowers. She pointed at the nightstand. Shoto, Natsuo, and Fayumi looked at the Rindu flowers their mother pointed at. That is my favorite flower. I only mentioned it once, but he remembered it. And sends me every time. But mom, aren't those flowers always here? Fayumi asked. Rei nodded with a smile. To Natsuo's dismay, he's been here he exclaimed. Many times apparently Rei answered. Shoto was just glad that Endeavor was doing his best with their mother. I don't get to see him, the doctors do not recommend it. But you see, he's trying his best. Mom? Shoto called. I think you should know. Fayumi and Natsuo perked their heads to their younger brother. You think this is a good idea? Fayumi asked with a worried face. Natsuo put a hand on her shoulder and said, she deserves to know Yumi. And with that, Shoto continued. Mom, Izuku we found him. Their mother was stunned. Ah really? She gave a helpful look to her children. They all nodded. Thank God. She cried. Fayumi went to hug her and dry her tears. And Enji. Is being a good father to him. Shoto said shocking Fayumi and Natsuo. That's the biggest lie I have heard Natsuo controlling his voice, but obviously irritated at the mention of the joke. I'm not lying okay he kept his promise. I've watched him and he was sincere Shoto exclaimed. He just left the hospital yesterday. He's staying at the teacher's dorms at UA until we take him in. Shoto told the three. Shoto, why not take him in now? Rei asked. I dot dot, I promise. I promise Mrs. Midoriya, the one who took care of Izuku, to make sure Izuku is safe and happy in his family. Rei audited his son's determination. And even if I hadn't made that promise, I would have made this deal with him or never let Izuku know about us at all. Well, we are trying our best now right? Fayumi said in comforting manner. Then, I should do my best too. Rei smiled as she showed them her determination. Dobby, bring this new scout here at the base. They're at Alley 51. Kurajiri would help you. Shigaraki said to the black-haired man. Dobby, it was his chosen alias. He has a few burns on his arms. Luckily the burns doesn't connect to his pretty face. Those burns heal through time though. Sure. So we're recruiting Yandir. Great. A sarcasm as he looked at the picture of a blonde girl with a knife on her hand, he kept on with the act. Kurajiri opened the portal meaning it's his cue to leave. As the war close behind him, he was alone at Alley 51. Quiet footsteps is soon heard. The heels of her school shoes were creepy. Perfect for the job. Toga. He said. Hello, Tuya. The girl greeted with a giggle. Dobby. He corrected. He took out his phone and made a call. Kurajiri. She's not late. Then ended the call immediately. Remember what you're here for. He said to Himiko Toga. The request. 
So, why do you want to join the league? Shigaraki asked the blonde. With her cherry self she answered. I want to live in an easy world. I want to be free and act how I chose I want a new society where people like us are free to roam around. Shigaraki gave a hum, and Dobby gave a comment. PFFT, immature. He muttered but audible to everyone's ears. Suddenly Toga decided that she wanted to scrape Dobby's pretty face a little, irritation must have got the best of her. Kurajiri fortunately didn't let any violence happen. Welcome. Was the only thing Shigaraki said before continuing back to his video games. Dobby has been in the league for four years. One of the original members after Kurajiri and Tumur. His set reasoning was no secret to the first league members. His endeavor's son, and apparently he hated the flame hero's guts. It gave him an automatic pass. He told them about the abuse and that he's had enough. From then on, all for one accepted him fully because of the guy's hatred. But there's more that lies beneath. Sensei. Is there anything I can do to help? Izuku asked his teachers. It was early in the morning probably three hours before school starts. In the kitchen of the teacher's dorms was a whining Izuku. I told you leave the cooking to us present Mick insisted. The younger tried to whine more but ended up losing and ate his breakfast quietly. It was a weird morning for Izuku. In the teacher's dorm can be found a human alarm clock, yellow caterpillar, doting ante, and cleaning robots made by power loader. He swore the caterpillar would someday turn into a butterfly. Apparently there's also a skeleton, considerate enough that he noticed the hero was all might, he didn't say a word to avoid rudeness. And there's also the principal who drinks his coffee on the couch. This wasn't the usual, but all teachers are busy with paperwork and had to cram. They didn't have time to go home so they stayed there. You're an early bird. Shota said to his student. Um, yeah. Just have it. The boy answered. Have it. Yeah, I train my quirk and close combat every morning before you and everything. Izuku said, earning the interest of the hobo man and Nezu. Hmm. Hardworking I see. Nezu said then he sips his tea. Can I jog around campus? I promise I'll come back. As always shook his head no. You need to rest problem child. The Redi pouted a bit but shrugged and went to his assigned room. He found pens and paper and decided to draw and do flowers. It is his favorite flower, it can mean justice, victory, or lonely love. He doesn't know why he loves it, but it was aesthetic to his eyes. Soon enough, he decided to get ready for school. Leaving the same time as the staff, he was early, but a couple early students gave him company somehow. The class was almost full, and everyone noticed that Midoriya is back in class. Of course they greeted him back. They'll do some morning lessons then start internships at the afternoon. Azawa was still the usual sleepy teacher, thus consequently making the class have a free time. Izuku. How are you? What happened? You were gone for a while. And a couple similar questions were asked. I am fine thank you. He said lessening the worries of his classmates. Something came up and have to take care of. He added. He was happy, Izuku thought that he has wonderful siblings and a willing family. A father, and still has a mother. But no one will replace the care of Inko. He smiled to himself, he can't wait to meet the name Fayumi, Natsuo, and Rei. School hours ended and it was time for the students to go to their internships. Izuku spent his time catching up with Kasuki who kept complaining about best genus. Izuku, let's go together. Shoto said. Oh right. Izuku waved his best friend by and went with his brother. While in the train station, Shoto couldn't help but ruffle the younger one's hair. Izuku didn't mind. Must be hard for Shoto to keep this from me. He thought. He was glad to have such a kind brother. Let's just say that Izuku loves the attention like a three-year-old. They just talked until arriving near the agency building, they learned some new stuff about each other. They found out that they both liked cold soba. Izuku's head started to hurt, then it really hit him hard. There was a wave of headache that passed him. Suddenly he saw visions. It was blurry, but he managed to recognize the figure thanks to a recent incident. The missed man from the USJ villain attack. The background was a night sky and a brick wall that looked like an alley. Then moving, then all black, then the night sky with a different alley background. The vision stopped there. Zu dot dot is. Izuku. Izuku. He looked at Shoto who was calling his name. Huh. Are you okay? Izuku nodded at his brother. Just another flash of memories. Nothing too big. He shrugged off. Well, we are late. We should head in. The older pulled Izuku in the building and is greeted by the employees. Izuku bowed his head at them to show respect. While waiting for the twins to come, Enji was talking, more of like begging the doctors to see his wife, Rei. Can you at least ask her? He asked. We'll do Sir Todoroki. Then the call ended just on time. Shoto and Izuku entered the room without a knock. Shoto just went in straight, Izuku bowed at the lack of manners. No need to bow is Midoriya. Endeavor said. 
How about you two change into your hero costume, and I'll bring you to patrol with me. Since you can't engage in fights yet, I'll let you watch and maybe practice at the training room downstairs. Izuku nodded saying to Shoto. They both look alike in their stoic demeanor. After an amazing tour of Endeavor's usual daily life, his patrols, he made the kids use the training room to their content. The training room was especially made for with temperature-based quirks. Watching from the sidelines while his assistant named his week upcoming schedule, he got a call from the number earlier. Hello Mr. Enji Todoroki. Speaking. She agreed also with the requested schedule. Okay, thank you. He said then he ended the call. He looked back at his sons and focused on Izuku. You'll come home soon. He said with a soft smile. Hey Todoroki. Are you scared of him? Mrs. Todoroki, you need to tell us something in order to help you. The doctor said. Yes. Did he hurt you? Yes, but Ray was cut off. Right now, she was just sent into a room after being pulled away from her home. It's fine, you don't need to say more. Then yes or no. We'll take other questions to fire me. Ray didn't reply and just stared to the white wall. What was she doing here? She's not crazy. She thinks it was normal to be scared of a monster for her husband. He's so different from when she met him, from when they were just dating, when Enji tried his best to capture her heart, and for what? For this kind of future. Ray didn't wish for an abusive household. He just wanted a husband that will love their children who would support and care for each other. He said he was happy. Even Tuya was happy with their intense training. Even though he wished he could go gentler so why? Why did he want more? She mumbled underneath her breath sitting on the bed. It has been many years, estimated 10 to 12 if she remembered correctly, since she was sitting on that bed and mumbled questions under her breath. She is traumatized and hurt, she filled himself with hate but learned to forgive through time. The only thing that's left is her fears and some sadness from the loss of her two sons. But, Izuku is alive. This brought her an increased rate in happiness. Shoto told her that Izuku is close to him, she loved hearing about Shoto's stories. Aside from Izuku's case, she also took interest in Endeavor's progress. Whenever Shoto visits and tells her more, he would try hide his proud face in a stoic mask which isn't new to Rei, so she knew all too well how Shoto was enjoying his father's change for the better. Of course it will not pass her, and she used to hide his emotions in that stoic mask, Rei took her time to observe and giggle it off. Ah the good days. Today, she will face him, Angie. Even though she still fears him she's willing to face him. How will you suppress your fears if you would not face them? She sat on a chair and looked out the window watching the same view as her yesterday's. The door opened. Ray. Angie let out. Now that she saw him, she thought she would have a breakdown. Cry, shout, but no. She was calm and contented. She wasn't expecting this. Did my fear left with my hatred? She asked herself. Looking at his husband, her eyes landed on the flowers he was holding. Her eyes perked up to his eyes. Now both locking in each other's soft gazes. Rindus. Enji walked towards her and gave her the purple and blue flowers. She took them and smiled at him. Thank you. Ray. I'm sorry, everything's my fault. I, I should have known better. Enji, at first, it was pure hate and fear. Now having my time to think, I guess. You just taught them how you were thought Enji's eyes whitening. Enji never told Ray anything about his parents. The man would always avoid the subject. He was always forced to be strong, but with how his father taught him, strong as being number one or at the top. Ever since he was a young toddler, and she was first until middle school, he would get in trouble if he let his achievements slip. High school came and he couldn't beat All Might. This was also the time his grandparents lectured his parents, and so the beatings stopped but. His beliefs are tampered. Learning the hard way, here he is now fixing everything. How did you know? He asked. Do you know that your mother and father came to me when they heard you're gonna marry me? The hero shook his head no. Well, they told me that you might not be the perfect father I didn't pay much attention. No one's perfect. But what you showed scared me. I, I didn't know not being perfect came to this extent. She said. Then she smiled and yelled in front of her, making it the same height head to head. I'm still not perfect, but let me make things right. He said making Ray smile. Stop that, so cheesy. A word learned from Natsu. And she chuckled while she giggled. Seems you're better now. Yeah. I am. I hope you know that. I'm not only doing this for Izuku. Her eyes widened at Enji's statement. I have to go. I'll visit you again until they let you out okay. She nodded at him and waved by. When the hero was out of sight. She cried. Not a sad one though, she has a smile. Looking at the flowers he gave her, I love you too. She let out. Seeing the aster flower in the middle of the rindus. Enji would give Ray an aster flower from time to time, mostly when he comes home late from his past patrols. 
He would always end up sleeping before talking to her so as an I love you, he asked his assistant to deliver her small asters, which she would happily plant in their garden. Ray and Engie thought that their meeting went beyond better than what they had expected. Sorry to keep you two waiting, is it alright if we change our schedules a little later than planned? Engie said to his two recruits. The two brothers just nodded at him. Izuku was confused, but he's willing to take some time to rest. Shoto on the other hand knew that the talk went well. Now exiting the building, the two followed Endeavor in his patrol, and made sure the civilians are safe from the fight Endeavor has with the villain. In the sky, a red-winged hero caught the scene. Endeavor and his son. Then he averted his eyes, then landed them on Izuku. Ha. Huh. Another Todoroki. He muttered to himself. He swore from what he heard Enji only had three sons. So he landed on a building and rang a phone. Hello. What? On the other line greeted. Ouch, so cold. Hawk said. Endeavor has a fourth son. Hawks continued. The call ended. No reply from the other side. Well, I guess that confirms it then. Hawks said then flew off. Training Camp Quirk Training. Over the months, a lot has happened. Iida survived the hero killer's attack. Izuku being Izuku came to save Iida, and Shoto being a big brother, followed Izuku and ended up helping. They then studied for the tests for the next upcoming week. This included the teacher versus student exercise. The brothers managed to pass and get to join the upcoming summer training camp. It was lunchtime in Yue, students are now crowded in the cafeteria, and the hero course is chatting about their upcoming trip. Hey guys. I wonder what camp would be like. I'm excited Hajikur said. I don't know, as always Sensei made it sound like hell. Siro exclaimed. They all had their comments and looked at Bakugu who just wanted to eat quietly. What? He questioned with a scowl. Then everybody turned to their half and half classmates sitting side by side slipping cold sobas, hoping they could get an opinion. You sure you aren't brothers? Denki asked as Mina took a pic. Izuku and Shoto knows deep down that they are brothers, but decided to shrug at their classmates, as they didn't want the other to know. Seriously, even Denki sees it. Katsuki thought as he put a spoonful of his spicy meal in his mouth angrily. Looking at the twins who were slurping their cold sobas with the same timing. WTF. Lately, this angry Pomeranian has been thinking on how Izuku doesn't notice at all, while well, Katsuki himself couldn't believe it, but it's there. It was no secret to him that his best friend Izuku is adopted by his auntie Inko. But he always wondered how someone powerful and looks fitted to be in a rich family, was found near the trash cans of an alleyway. Even his clothing when he was found showed that the boy was from an elite. Hell he was wearing a kimono when he was found. Meeting Shoto Todoroki, Katsuki had connected the dots, he got the elder's confirmation. Shoto, recently he has been acting a bit doting and careful of Izuku. Of course the ash blonde didn't ignore that, it feels like Icy Hot was taking his best friend away. But putting the subject aside, Bakugu needs to catch up to those two. And he'll have all his time to train in that said training camp. Well, little did he know Izuku already knew. His frustrations just went to waste. Now trying to cross the beast forest, Class 1A is now fighting dirt beasts as they hope that they'll come out alive and well. Succeeding after 8 hours, the whole class was famished as they met with their teacher and mentors, who's standing there not tired and relaxed on like their state. I wanna sleep. Most groaned out. Well, sleep if you want, but dinner is there ready to be cooked. As always said pointing at the wooden benches and barbecue stove with raw meat and rice ready. The tiredness that the class gave off suddenly changed to cherry in just a second. Man, this generation are monsters eraser. Yeah, food does motivate them. As Awa replied to Pixie Bob. Now, the class was happily eating and cooking the meat. As Awa let them have their fun, tomorrow won't be the same anyways. Dobby and twice, you are important for this mission. Don't screw it. Tamura said as he glared at the two showing his supremacy at both. Dobby just rolled his eyes while Jin excitedly nods. Call Toga here Dobby, if she succeeds in this request we may be able to infiltrate UA successfully. Shigaraki said with a smile. We attack tomorrow. He stated before he went into the warp Kurajuri made for him. Dobby thinks he'll just meet with Sensei. Dobby went out and looked from alley to alley near the base to find Toga. Maybe she is investigating the place around. This area of the city is quite abandoned after all. Dobby sighed as he thought about what he heard from his friend over the call. He pondered about it and ended up brushing it off despite its disturbance. Then he got a call. Handman. He answered the call. Dobby, fine muscular. Sensei wants him to join us tomorrow. The call just ended like that. Why would he want a strong asset? Well, I gotta send information. He thought as he looked through his contacts. The next day was extreme for the heroes in training. Class 1B arrived at the campsite and saw Class 1A suffering. 
Bakugou forcing to make larger explosions, Todoroki shifting from fire to ice, then fire and ice, Midoriya creating a snowstorm like with his flames, while force creating his hot ice at the same time. Yida running miles for long hours by now, same goes with Achako and her try not to puke training. Others are training hard too. After long sufferings, they are finally finished just before sunset. They all gathered and made dinner just like the yesterday. Forgot to mention that there was this grumpy kid named Koda. Despising heroes without a care because of his past. Kid got an attitude. The pussycats got a surprise for the students to reward them for their hard work. Shame for those who needs to retake the test. Were you here too what's a 1A student doing here? Manama mocked. Count on the back of squid minus Bakugu to huff in annoyance with Manama's taunting. What scared them wasn't how long they will study but who their teacher is. Azawa. What's fun in a camping trip without a test of courage? Maybe s'mores but they don't have those. The class get to scare each other. Divided by class 1 and 1B. They got to go in pairs. Unfortunately, in the middle of their leisure, blue fire was sighted. The students came to an alert despite being scared. Azawa was called out by Pixie Bob using her telepathy. Saying the blue fire should be harmless. I know I got a call that the villains are coming, and apparently they have this super strong guy that has muscle augmentation quirk. That's why police and hero backups are on their way, but, I never expected it to be this early. As always said tiredly, quiet enough only for him to hear. You all stay here and wait for Koda, someone will bring him here soon. He said as he ready himself for a fight. Pixie Bob, are you still with me? He asked in his mind hoping the hero is using her quirk. Yes I'm here racer. She answered with her telepathy. Good, tell the students to engage, they are allowed to use their quirks. He thought. Not even a minute, the message was sent to every student. While the wild wild pussycats and Eraser had help fight with the situation, Vlad King was sent to guide. Ragdoll came back and managed to take Koda with her before any villains found him, thanks to her quirk. The boy was left to the study group that Azawa left. You caused the fire? Azawa asked the boy. Don't worry. There. Controlled. The villain replied. Support the students till help comes. They're almost here. He said quietly before melting into a mud-like matter. UGHH I don't get that kid. Azawa complained in his head. Dobby. Azawa went to the other students in the forest to make sure they are safe, while Dobby went running on the loose with twice. And as planned, backup came, but villains just get stronger and stronger. Somehow, Shoto and Izuku found each other while retreating from a villain inside the forest. The girls are dealing with Toga who is showing that she is struggling to take blood from them. Other guys are separated along with 1B students, who are also attacked by villains. Heroes and police that came are busy with muscular. With all the chaos going around, what are the odds that the three meet? Dabi went to met with Toga, and the two brothers are looking for the girls. The chances of the three meeting. Here it is. In the corner of Dabi's eye as he was about to retreat with Toga, he saw Shoto. Beside him was oddly familiar hair. It reminded him of Izuku. Like time slowed, he had the time to remember that call. Endeavor has a fourth son. Hawks asked through the other line. Tuya was shocked, he has never mentioned anything about Izuku, Endeavor's fourth son. He couldn't do anything but hang up. He thought he'd leave Kigo in the air, but the number three hero is smart. Izuku's dead. He thought that time. He looked at the neighboring cities nothing after years of looking when he thought there was an Izuku there, there was no Todoroki. Back to the present, is this Izuku? He thought. Izuku made eye contact with him. They immediately continued to run as Toga shook Dabi out of shock. When they tried to retreat, they felt cold. Cold wind and see bluish white flames. But it was not hot. Flames are supposed to be hot. Izuku used his quirk. Aside from that, he used his hot ice to cover their tracks. Maybe Dabi can pass through but not Toga. They can't continue forward and they're surrounded at the back and side. Then, Azawa came. Izuku. Stop. Catching the attention of everyone including Dabi in the most. Izuku complied to their teacher's orders. Despite the shock he was in, Dabi ran away with Toga. The class was flooding in confusion to why Azawa let them go. But they figured their sensei would explain to them later on. Villains here are gone, we rounded the weak ones up and are arrested. The others escaped and Bakugu was about to get kidnapped, but he managed to escape. Azawa said. Midoriya, I need you to come with me, you two Todoroki. The two boys nodded. I need you to help stop muscular. I heard that muscles could be weakened in the cold. Todoroki can continue non-stop on sending him ice. And Midoriya, surround him with a snowstorm. We aim to capture him and put him in Tartarus with less damage as possible. But Sensei. What if cold won't work? Izuku asks. Their teacher sighed hoping it wouldn't come to this. Use fire and switch roles. 
burning him and his augmented muscles would surely weaken him. Disappointment was clearly heard in his always voice. Muscular was taken and Bakugou was safe from disintegration and kidnap. It is said that Dobby's fire got out of control and reached to the villain's area. The remaining forcefully had to retreat. Shigaraki wasn't happy. What is wrong with you? Shigaraki exclaimed. I told you my fire got out of control yelled Dobby. Don't you have full control over that freaking cork of yours? I never said I have I can't control a whole forest fire and spreading hand man stop blaming me. You had job to kidnap or kill the Bakugou brat and you didn't. Dobby defended. Toga was now looking like a disappointed girl as she only scratched a few faces and less blood than she had expected. Others just watched the two fight and blame each other. Dobby, Tamura, fighting will not help. You did a good job and has put heroes on alert. This means you are making a name for the league. A deep voice from the television scared the other villains spineless. But Dobby, Tamura, and Kurajiri are obviously used to this. Rest up. The future has many to hold. With that, Dobby went out the bar and looked for his room. He lay down on his bed and started thinking about the Izuku from earlier. Is he really? He mumbled looking at the ceiling while remembering the fire in his household years ago. Hoping no one would hear him, Tuya woke up with his mind made up on running away to find his younger brother. The sun rose and his in front of the Hero Public Safety Commission building. He remembered when he didn't get cut out for the program. Let's say he visited a friend. Kigo Takami, Hawks. Hoping the trainee is in there where he last met him. When he went in, he wasn't a stranger. The president even greeted him. He wanted a talk. President. I want to work for the commission. His words made the president think. In the end, she accepted and that helped him gain access to extra information. He lived with Kiko in an apartment paid and given by the commission. Every time he'll do an undercover mission, he would take his extra time in looking for clues and possibilities on where Izuku could be. He lasted three years before giving up. His last search was in Musatafu. At that time he was investigating, he has searched nearby cities and towns from his old home. The villains couldn't possibly drive or run too far away. Tuya was hoping that if Izuku is not homeless or safe, maybe kidnapped, enslaved, or dead, he wants confirmation of a body and hold a proper funeral if so. Not just as if he disappeared from existence, he can't accept to lose someone that way. It's like a doctor giving up on a patient who can survive if something was done. Or maybe a doctor who didn't do anything because there is no pay. Either way, looking at Misatafu was his last straw. Dabi 2 and Toga. The flashback in a police station. These are all we have here to you, Kun. A blonde girl says as she hands a paper to Tuya. Thanks to Kauchi Chan. He mumbled. I gotta go to you, Kun. Dad needs help on a murder case. The girl left him alone and gave him privacy. On the paper was a list of three names whose first was Izuku and ages 5 to 6. Izuku Tanaka. Izuku Midoriya. Izuku Yanahashi. By this time he was frustrated. What was I thinking? Yusutafu is way too far from my old home. He dropped the files and stood up. Leaving the room. He didn't bother if anyone was listening but nevertheless said. Tell Tsukauchi Chan I left the files on the table. He left the station and got a call from Hawks. He answered despite the mood he was in. I got a job for you. It's an undercover operation the other line said. Go infiltrate the love. Anyway, the two classes has returned to the school. The students were piling up the question to Izawa as to why he let the villains go. Their sensei gave a tired sigh. Dobby and Toga. There are spies under the league. He said. You think Dobby's fire was out of control and spread to the villains area? No. Dobby is known to have sharp control over his flames. Ever wonder why none of you are burned? The class was silent. Silence was interrupted by the girls. But sensei. What about Toga? She clearly is trying to stab us. From afar, I can see very well that her movements were sloppy. Toga may be young enough to be a high schooler, but she helped a lot with investigations. This shocked the class, especially the girls. Toga Himiko. Just a week after her quirk manifested, her parents gave up on her. Her thirst for blood was a part of her quirk. She was dubbed a villain and immediately feared. Her parents not returning for a month, now left her hungry and out of stock. He decided to go out herself and look for them. She sobbed and cried to her content in an alley, now understanding what's happening. She was abandoned. The police found her, there at the station she met Detective Namasa. He solved her case and got Himiko's parents sent to jail for child abandonment. While Toga was under the police's care, the detective grew fond of Toga and ended up adopting her. Giving her the name Himiko Tsukauchi. How did she start helping the government in murder cases? Well, there was a time where they suddenly needed to investigate a crime scene of murder. 
Even though Tsukauchi is not fond of the idea of letting a six-year-old child to see such horrific sight, the case seems serious, and he is requested to help. While his adoptive father talks to one of the officers, she was passed on to another officer for them to watch. She looked at the scene before her eyes, it was bloody, and the iron red is splatted on the brick wall of the alley. As her quirk is, she took a blood on her pointy finger, then licked it. Not long later Himiko was gone, but a man appeared. The lies came on her, shocked there was a man out of nowhere, and the little girl was lost. It wasn't even a minute later that she changed back to her six-year-old self. What she drank was merely a drop. She grew curious of the blood more. A smaller splat on the other wall. She turned to a different man. And with that, Tsukauchi solved the case by face identification and fingerprint from the system, with the help of Himiko. Starting then on, Himiko knew she helped and did a heroic act. She did become a hero like she dreamed when she was three. It made her happy and wanted to help more. Now at 16, Himiko was sent to go undercover in the lav, as her quirk and acting skills are amazing and perfect for the job. She didn't take the comment of her quirk perfect for the job offensive, but rather took it as an advantage. She went under the name she hated the most. Himiko Tsukauchi, alias. Toga. Toga Himiko. Rei Todoroki and Enji Todoroki are taking it slow. But not too slow that they'd keep Izuku waiting. They got along, they relearned about each other, but there are times where they both are awkward. And sometimes, argue. At the end of an argument, Enji learned to say sorry, even though he didn't start the argument sometimes. Sometimes they all would be in the same room, and Natsuo became convinced that Endeavor is trying to change. He even fell down to number 3 in the last hero rankings, and didn't bat an eyelid to it. This made the four proud. They are suited enough to take Izuku with them already, but, they want the doctor to confirm that Rei can go home now. Sadly, they didn't so it may take time. Hearing this, Rei cried. Please. Enji. Just bring Izuku home. Be before we. I'll lose him again. She sobbed on the chest of her husband. The other three couldn't help but felt sad for their mother. They all wanted Izuku with them right now. Now Enji came to a decision. How about we take Izuku in our home now and. We'll visit you. Clearly you are perfectly fine already. Enji suggested, lighting up the mood of the three and surprised Rei. Her tears stopped and white-eyed from shock. Ah oh, really? The flame hero nodded. Fayumi, let's fix the house later and prepare for Izuku's arrival. Izuku meets Fayumi. Another day of school for Izuku and his classmates. Yesterday, Azawa told us about the spies under the league. They also said that it's better to be blind to this information. Not knowing something would be the best weapon in deceiving and more safety. Shoto didn't walk Izuku to the teacher's dorms yesterday, the Redeed was disappointed, but Shoto said he'll visit his mom. Izuku hopes he goes there with his brother accompanying him this day. Apparently more things came to him. Izuku, Shoto, come to the teacher's lounge after school. As always said before he starts the lesson, both boys just nodded. The day went on with their classes and training like the usual every day. Finally, the end of school hours, both boys went to where their sensei wants them. Of course Izuku said his goodbye to Katsuki who went with Kirishima and the rest of the dubbed Baku squad. Izuku enjoyed the nickname more than Bakugo did. He was glad that Kakin already got more friends aside from him. While Izuku was curious as to why he was called, he kinda figured it had something to do with family or training, since Shoto is involved. Shoto already knew. He and his father talked to Izawa about this. Sensei. Why do you want us here? Izuku asks. Follow me. Their teacher stood up and walked out and went to another lounge smaller. He figured they need privacy for this matter. The two boys followed him and sat on the couch opposite to where Izawa was sitting. Izuku, your family is ready to take you in. The Redeed lit up at his sensei's words. Not to mention he wants to hug Shoto so bad but restrained himself. Izuku didn't want their efforts of doing their best for him to go to waste. And. Shoto is your brother. You can choose whether you keep Midori or Todoroki. Izawa added. Izuku looked at Shoto who made a smile creep his face. He hugged Shoto, and the latter hugged back. You can move tomorrow problem child. They have been waiting for you. Azawa said with an unusual small soft smile on his face. I know you're amnesiac still but share anything if you get flashbacks okay. Izuku nodded. Right now, feeling the officiality of being brothers, he was closer to Shoto. Izuku has always liked to stick to someone like an needy kid. Like how Inko spoiled him with love and affection and Kasuki making sure he is never left out or always close by. Shoto smiled at his younger brother. After their talk, a cheerful Izuku is walking with Shoto on the way to the teacher's dorms. Even though he only has a small smile, a bit whiter than the usual, it was already a big thing for someone who came from the Todoroki. Being stoic and the lack of smile just somehow made its way to the family's nature. 
Fayumi and Atsuo doesn't really smile wide, same goes for their mom, and most certainly Shoto and Enji doesn't smile with bright sparkles. The best they could do in honest and real happiness was to smile small or chuckle softly, and in Endeavor's case was able to laugh proudly. Shoto went home to make sure everything was ready. Izuku will just pack and maybe earn help from some teachers later. Shoto walked to his residence and everyone was there. Complete in one area, specifically the dining area. Natsuo isn't locking himself in, Fayumi wasn't worried, and Enji was intense. It was peaceful. I'm home. He said. It was loud enough for everyone to hear. Is Izuku told already? Natsuo asked. Shoto nodded with a content smile. I can't wait to meet him. He exclaimed, Fayumi let out a giggly while Enji smiled. That changed, and help us clean Izuku's room. Fayumi said. Shoto walked his way to his room and passed the room that once had two butsidens. They already got rid of it. He thought. He went inside and decided to talk to Tuya. They weren't as close like Hanatsuo is but at least he wanted to share that Izuku is with them. He kneeled down in front was the picture of his oldest sibling. Tuya, Izuku is with us. We found him. I can't promise him a complete family with you gone, but I know you are a good big brother to us, even if I can't remember much. I hope I can be a good big brother too. Tuya. A voice came and followed. It was Natsuo. When Shoto found Izuku alive and well, I was hoping you were alive too, and well too. It gave me hope. I miss you. He let out as he kneeled beside the younger. Natsuo. Was Tuya a really great brother? Natsuo gave him a look. Yeah. I always lost to him whenever we made you and Izuku choose his a better big brother. He said making Shoto chuckle a bit. Slowly but surely, the Todoroki household is starting to light up. Shoto went to his room and changed meeting Fayumi in the halls after. Enji was supposed to help but, the hospital suddenly called and claimed that Rei wanted to talk. Fayumi thought it'd be best to let your parents get along and have some alone time. Izuku Pav. Are you ready to go problem child? Azawa sensei asked. I was grateful to UA staff and Nezu for letting me stay here for a while. I nodded at him as we both walked to the entrance. Sensei helped me with my bags. There at the entrance was a car. The young woman was there waiting for me. She has white hair and streaks of red in her hair. Since I showed us said mom I still need to get used to this. Was in the hospital, I figured it was our sister whom he calls Fayumi. I can't help but run up to her and hug her. I know it was pretty childish, but I'm happy to have siblings. I have always wished for it, but I never asked mom, Inko-san, about it because she seemed stress raising me already. Plus, I wasn't her real son which made me feel guilt. But I know she loved me and I loved her. That's why I won't let the negative thoughts get through me. It was lonely to be alone. Mom works in Kakin wasn't available sometimes. I am home alone and during those times I wish I had siblings to take care of or the other way around. That's why learning I have not only one but more siblings made me happy and excited. At first she didn't return the hug, I looked at her to see that she was in shock. Then she smiled a soft one, then hugged me back tightly. Hello, Izuku. She greeted. Hi. I replied. Even though I had the courage to run and hug her, I was still shy. The first act may have been adrenaline rush or my emotions taking over. Ever since I let out my frustrations in my old house for a whole week and a half, I felt like I am able to express my emotions a bit more. It's kinda relieving and felt lighter inside. I looked back at Izawa after we put my stuff at the back trunk. Thank you sensei. I said as I bowed to him. Be good problem child. Izuku, let's go home. Fayumi smiles. Into the household. Izuku Pav. The car ride was no longer than an hour, but not lesser than 30 minutes. It wasn't awkward. Fayumi, my sister, didn't push everything with the questions. Just some few about how was I with mom, Inko Midoriya. I didn't really bother, the hospital and my friends helped me with the sensitive topic. I answered how I felt like I should answer. She seems to be like a mother. I just felt that way around her. Just as I thought that, she brought up stories on how she takes care of our siblings. I don't know the full story yet, but they say they'll tell me when they're ready, same goes for me. Must be messed up while I was not around. I decided to leave it at that. Right now, I'm standing in front of a somewhat traditional styled house. The garden was amazing. And quite big. It was perfect on relaxing, taking a fresh air, and planting. Then, at the corner of my eye, I saw Indus. My favorite flower. Forgetting what I was waiting for or what I was even supposed to do, I ran to the flowers. I started checking out their petals and kept being mesmerized. They're pretty do they like Rindus too. Third Pav. Fayumi was about to go in, but he saw Izuku, not beside her but at the Rindu flowers. She's reminded of their mom at the sight. Back then, Fayumi could remember Rei kneeling down the same way Izuku does. 
So, she's got mom's personality, huh? She thought as she smiled at the sight, forgetting what she was doing and mesmerized by Izuku. Meanwhile, the boys waiting inside, who supposed to welcome Izuku, got impatient. They swear they heard Fayumi nearing the door already. So what's taking them so long? They decided to just go out and welcome him outside. The moment they went out, they saw the Redeed at the Rindus area. Kneeling and touching the petals as if they're so precious, which are for them. Enji, Shoto, Natsuo, and Fayumi, now looking at the youngest member of the family. Suddenly, Izuku came to, and realized that he was distracted. Oh. Hello. He greeted as he made eyes with the other Todorokis. Izuku. Natsuo let out. Without hesitance, he ran to the boy and pulled him in a hug. Despite the cold cork Natsuo holds, the hug is warm and comfy. Filled with love and the emotions. He knows their family. Izuku hugged back. Natsuo pulled the younger to the house and went in with the others. For now, Izuku is quiet. He doesn't know what to call them. And he doesn't know how to initiate a conversation without calling Shoto just Shoto and Enji Endeavor from the patrols and school hours. They sat on the table. It was awkward in all honesty. Izuku. The young redhead looked to Shoto. You don't seem curious. The older twin chuckled. Izuku slightly blushed. Ah oh well. I don't know what to call you personally. At least now everybody else got the idea. Well, I'm starting to think something is wrong with us. Natsuo said. Fayumi gave him a glare. And you sighed both in relief and anger. If that was even possible. Their aim is to worry Izuku less. Better yet not worry him completely. They want to make Izuku feel like he's a part of the family. Not who just barged and who happened to have the same blood as them. And definitely not a burden. Well, Izuku, call me Nisan or just Fayumi. Either way, I'd appreciate. Shoto calls me both. Fayumi started. I want to be called Nai, I always wonder how that would feel like, but Shoto just calls me Natsu. Shoto is fine actually. Call me whatever you want Izu. Izuku shrugged. He'd be calling Shoto a lot of nicknames. Not offending ones obviously, call me dad when you start being comfortable. Was all Enji let out. Izuku nodded. After dinner, he offered to help Fayumi, even though she declined the offer, Izuku managed to wash the dishes with her. In those minutes, they managed to converse and get to know about each other. Izuku grew curious of mom, Rei, so she put in small details. She wanted Izuku and their mother to have something to talk about. After cleaning, he decided to check where Natsuo is. He found himself in a room with one Batsunin. Natsuo was kneeling in front and looks to be praying. When the white haired finished, Izuku moved closer. Natsuo Nai. The older was surprised at the given nickname, but decided to listen more. Is he a brother too? Natsuo nodded. Izuku, this is Tuya. You probably don't remember him much if ever you remember us playing together. He was always with. Fa dad. Training. Izuku nodded then looked at the picture. Tuya and I. I'm Izuku. He greeted and turned to his white haired brother. I is there something on my face? Izuku asks. The other shook his head no. You know, your picture is also here before. I've always prayed and wished you to be here with us. But, now. Looking at you now, you're real and and not a dream. It feels different. I'm happy. He said as he ruffles the locks of Izuku. How about I take you out tomorrow? Natsuo offered, Izuku gave a small nod. Shoto. Can we have a sleepover at my room? Izuku asks. His head poking from the door. Shoto just nodded. And brought his pillows. As the two are at peace doing their twin thing, a problematic dad is stressing in his room. Enji Todoroki is unsure how to talk to Izuku. Sure they've talked as student and mentor during patrols in the internship but, not personally as a father and son, plus it was completely professional back then. What can I do? He muttered to himself. Just don't make the same mistakes again. I'm taking Izuku out. Natsuo yelled as he holds Izuku's shoulders ready to go outside the house. Come back before dinner. Their sister said. Once two boys were out, she let out a sigh as she hears her father groan for the probably a hundredth time since last night. Shoto was slipping his soba and gestured his head to the direction of his their father's room. Fayumi made her way and knocked. Dad you've been at it all this time since dinner finished yesterday. Fayumi said. I'm. Sorry. Fayumi. Fayumi was quite startled at the apology, but she knew she can get used to it. It's just, I don't know what to do and Deborah let out. The daughter sighed. How about, you go to your agency for now and bother Izuku later. Endeavor agency will fall at this rate. Plus, you are still a hero. Dad. We promise we'll help each other out with Izuku. She said before leaving. Meanwhile, Natsuo was enjoying the bus ride with Izuku. He usually goes alone in going to his college, and Shoto doesn't hang out much. 
Plus, whenever Shoto comes with him, it was always awkward because the younger always seemed apathetic. Izuku wasn't as apathetic and also starts conversations, which was fun for the white head brother. Izuku, I'll spoil you lots today. Natsuo said as the bus pulled to their stop. Immediately, Natsuo started pulling his youngest brother to the mall nearby the station. Natsunai. We have all day to ourselves. Izuku chuckled. It was nice to know he was granted siblings. Even though he originally thought of being an older brother someday, and dreamed things to do with it, he didn't mind being the youngest seeing how his siblings treated him. And all day we get to know each other. Natsuo answered with a smile. First stop was to buy tickets to the movies, it was scheduled after lunch, not until 4 more hours. So Natsuo brings Izuku to a clothing store and a hero merch shop. Safe to say, it wasn't even half the day, and they bought many stuff for Izuku's new room and clothes. Of course they bought stuff not only for themselves, but also for their father and siblings. All stuff was able to be bought possible with the help of Endeavor's credit card. The next day. Shoto, Izuku, the sleepy voice of Izawa called. Both Todoroki boys are early for school. Fayumi dropped them off when Izawa managed to be early too. By the looks of it, present Mick has forced Izawa into going early. Mick sensei. Izawa sensei. Good morning. Izuku greeted. Shoto, still being monotone greeted with a plain good morning. Sensei. I changed my name to Todoroki already too. Shoto chuckled at his younger brother. That's good. Todoroki. Well that's just confusing Shoto. Mick exclaimed. Izawa sighed. Yeah, that's right. Well, is it okay if I call you Izuku and Shoto? Both boys nodded with small smiles. The four went in the building together, but soon separate ways as the teachers went to the faculty and the siblings made their way to the classroom. There they met an early Aoi Rosu and Iida. Good morning Midoriya. Good morning Todoroki. Iida greeted while doing his hand thing. Good morning. Aoi Rosu followed. Izuku isn't much seemingly apathetic than is his brother. He smiled at the two and greeted back. While waiting for all others, Shoto made his way to Katsuki's seat, sitting in a way fronting Izuku. You seem closer. Kiro. Sayu came in with Yuraka and Hajikur. Both nodded. Oi. Aizu. I couldn't find the new address you sent back Yuku stormed in the room. Kakin. Izuku sighed. Maybe come with Todoroki and me later. I'm not sure though if dad will allow it. Izuku said. Don't worry Izuku. He will. Shoto assured as he get up from the seat. Soon enough, more and more of their classmates arrived. They all greeted each other, and Izuku still wonders why Izawa is still late. Even though Izawa was just in the dorms or at home, he noticed their teacher comes to school early, only to attend his class late. Minutes passed after the time class should have started. Their teacher came in finally. Morning sensei. All greeted in different ways. Sit down. Because of many attacks Yue has faced, the school wants to ensure safety, and Izawa's side cutting of what he is saying, as he dropped what he was reading. Basically, UA wants you to move into dorms. We already talked to your parents already and they approved. This is done for easier protection of students. Everyone went beaming. As all will let out a small cough to get the class's attention. Successfully, all students went quiet. Both Todoroki are still staying home though for a while. This statement confused many. As all. You mean Todoroki will not be at the dorms? Kiro. He nodded. Sensei. What do you mean by both? Iida asked. Azawa looked at Shoto with a questioning face. The boy slightly shook his head. He sighed. Drop the topic for now. Let's start the lesson. Hey Todoroki. Mina called. As the curious and most lively classmate, of course she would ask why he wasn't put into the dormitories yet. Some observant enough noticed that Midoriyu also turned his head when Shoto was called. Why would you be in the dorms with us? She asked. Well, we were gonna say it earlier after classes, but many teachers had overtimed with us. My family found one of my missing brothers. We wanted to spend time together more so. Mina made an O as she understood the situation. Well that's cool bro. Must be nice to have more siblings. More comments came flooding, unable to say the main announcement on how Izuku is the brother in this story. Well, I guess they'll just find out soon themselves. Kasuki says while putting a hand over Izuku's shoulders pushing after pushing Shoto out the way budding in the middle to separate the two. Izuku gave him an amused look. Kakin are you perhaps? jealous. Shoto let out a quiet chuckle at the sight of a jealous Bakugu. So? Izuku, mind telling me where Kakin came from? The older brother asked as he moved to the other side of Izuku. Oh, well I'm not good with names when I met him. But I liked his company and wanted to keep playing with him, so. I called him Kakin. Isa for me to remember at that time. Shoto just hummed. Kitsuki turned his attention back to the brothers from his phone. 
He texted his mother if it was alright to join the Todorikas for dinner. She said it was alright after hearing that it was Izuku's real family. Old hag said I'm okay to go. He said. Euro zero 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 zeros. Meanwhile, Endeavor got back from work, more stressed than usual. Fayumi sighed at the sight. He must still be pondering about how to deal with Izuku. She thought. It was just the two of them. She just received a text from Izuku and Shoto about how they will have a friend join them. And Natsuo texted too, saying he'd come a bit later than usual due to college group works and medical welfare. Dad. You know, we forgive you. But I couldn't say for a fact that we fully forgive you. You were abusive and insensitive and forceful. I know you changed but we couldn't just forget. The irritation in Natsuo's eyes can still be seen, same goes to Shoto dot dot but, I know you are doing your best to find what's best to do for Izuku. You know your mistakes. Fayumi? What are you saying? I thought we're over this conversation. I know you won't forgive me fully, and same goes to your bro NG was cut off. Here's a simple answer, just don't make the same mistakes again. Dirt Pav. Here's a simple answer, just don't make the same mistakes again. Izuku says as went in with the other two boys. His tone was caring and not cold. Fayumi and Enji ended up looking at him with shock. Sorry, I overheard the last part of what Fayumi said. Hearing what dad is saying, I figured what you were talking about. He smiled nervously. You know Fayumi was cut off. No. I don't know what happened. I just know things were messed up here and you forced to fix it because of me. I am happy and grateful that you're willing to endure for me. A smile crept his face. Izuku. When the time comes, we'll tell you everything. Enji said. I know. I just, I wanted you guys to see the present and future. Izuku says. All Todorikas present nodded. Kasuki is just standing there watching the family drama. He sighed. I'm Kasuki Bakugu. Izuku's best friend since childhood. He smirked. Hello Bakugu Kan Fayumi greeted as Enji nodded. Oh we have a visitor. A new voice came. Natsuo Izuku exclaimed as he tackled his brother in a hug. Hello, Izuku. Natsuo ruffled the younger's hair. Dinner is almost done, why won't you change first? Fayumi suggested they all nodded leaving Enji with Fayumi alone again. Are you sure it's a good idea to have that Bakugu here? Enji asked. Dad, Bakugu has been there since Izuku was a child. Maybe he just wants to meet us. Basically he's like a brother to Izuku in Shoto's stories. Katsuki Pav. The glasses sister sister said Izuku and his brothers should change first. I got pulled by Izuku to his room. Shoto's is across the hallway. This house is actually big even without a second floor. It's traditional Japanese itself and the interior. I think I know what to expect when these two will move to the dorms. Izuku's room back then had some of this style too. But more on action figures than traditional. I think he sold them all about a month ago. Kakin. Izuku called me out from my thoughts. He gave me a set of clothes. Wait my set of clothes, my shock must have been seen in my face since Izuku answered me. I also packed what you left from our past sleepovers for future ones. Izuku said. I just nodded at him and changed in the bathroom connected to his room. Well, he seems happy and comfortable. My worries are definitely answered, and whatever problem they had in the past, Izuku seemed to accept it, and actually willing to face it. He isn't the type to dwell on the past for a long term like years. He would probably get over his grief in a month or so. Although the problem with that is he goes to extremes in hurting himself when he shouldn't. That happened when Auntie died. Kakin. Let's go. Nisan and Dad is waiting. I nodded and followed him. Over dinner, nothing much happened. I see that they were peaceful despite the drama earlier. They can laugh freely and make sure Izuku is comfortable. Maybe I can trust Shoto on this. After I ate my dinner, I stood up. Well, I see Izuku would be happy here. I said. Kakin. Well, I really came here to make sure you're okay here. I guess I have nothing to worry about. But Kakin. We have desserts. Izuku exclaimed. Oh I Izu, you really think I'd eat something so sweet. Look how many hot sauce bottles I used on this dinner. I say with a chuckle in the end. Beads, old hag would panic if I stayed any later. I'll call you a cat kakin. I tried to put out that offer, but he was persistent. I sighed and ended up riding the cab home with Izuku's money. Shoto Pav. Bakugu just went home, me and Izuku were helping Fayumi with the dishes. Well, I am spending lots of time with Izuku since the weekend was reserved to dad and mom. Yes, he'll finally meet mom. It's a surprise though. I'll just tell him to pick flowers from the garden as a gift. He probably gives sunflowers. After helping with Fayumi, she decided that maybe she can clear up her schedule for a day next week. The car ride was the only time they were alone really. It seems they get along well. 
But we all really don't know much about each other, so long time with Izuku is the best plan. I'm glad that we're all not too awkward. Izuku, do you want to do anything? I asked. He perked up but seemed to look hesitant as he bit his bottom lips. You can tell me anything Izuku. I said as we enter my room. We sleep over each other's room every day with the pattern repeating of mine then his. Promise you won't laugh. He asked looking me in the eyes with a slight worry. He is better at showing emotions than me. I promise. I want to make a pillow fort. The what? A pillow fort. He repeated. What's a pillow fort? I tilted my head. What's a pillow fort? I asked. He shrugged at me. I don't know. Huh? I eyed him in a confused manner. Well, I only heard it from my classmates back then. They always have sleepovers. And I heard whenever the pillow fort is mentioned they say it's fun and relaxing like that. But I haven't really tried it. He said. Do you know what it looks like? I asked. He shook his head no. What about Bakugou? Well, we only really played heroes and train our quirks. So I sighed. I don't know what it is either. Maybe we can search it up. I said. We immediately opened my laptop and searched for it. Well, it was literally a fort made of pillows. And blankets maybe I can sacrifice my lamp and the old chairs to hold it up. We have a lot of feudings here anyways we can lay four side by side. Maybe I should steal some of dad's pillows in his room, by some I meant all of them. Why? To annoy him even just a bit of course. He can't do anything because he is so set to spoiling Izuku. Plus, he's not fully forgiven yet. Dobby Pov. Nothing, I was doing nothing but sit on bed and waste my time looking at my photo of Izuku. That childish smile he managed to put even though he's in a fever was heartwarming. Among all of us, he is the most feverish. He was only 3 years old, but he visits the hospital all the time. The doctor said that his quirk is probably building up in him already. Apparently, his quirk is does not follow its nature. Remembering what I can remember from years ago because of that kid from the summer camp attack. Can it really be Izuku? I as dwelling on the matter then I heard a voice yell. Ugh, Shigaraki. Dobby. And so I went to him at the bar across my given room. What? You, you will be going around for a bit. We have many friends across this area of Japan. Of course, Kurajiri will help you with every travel. You start next week. He said, I just shrugged my shoulders and left. As I entered my room, as if on cue, my phone rang. Hawks. Hey you too. He called. I rolled my eyes knowing Hawks probably knows that I rolled them. Did any villains or anything from the underworld attack Endeavor and injured him badly or something? I raised my brow. Who? Why? Oh he's not. No news about that unless it's new just a few hours ago. I answered. Apparently, he's taking a bit of a long break. What do you mean? I don't know. His schedule was weird a couple weeks back, and his secretary said that he took a two-week break or something like that. Why is this bird even asking me? It's not like I'm close to him. Well don't ask me. I don't know a thing. Anyways, Toga's reporting this week. And I have a long-term mission. I hung up. That red bird is probably complaining on how I didn't say goodbye. I sighed and moved my thoughts back to Izuku. Don't get me wrong, I love my other siblings too but, even though I'm closest to Natsuo. I can't lie about my favoritism. A smirk formed to my face at the thought. A visit with Rindus. Third Pov. The next weekend came, not much has been happening, but the usual lessons without villain attacks or that sort of problem. Training became intense though since next week, they'll be going on provisional licensing exams. Izuku was nervous but kept it quiet. For now, it isn't the time for the red hat to worry about the exam. Izuku noticed that his family has been eager. Excited. He wonders why. But, they said that they will visit someone. They made him pick flowers from the garden. To most of them surprise, he picked the rindu flowers planted. Shoto came close to Izuku. Aizu. Why did you pick those flowers? Shoto kneeled beside his brother offering a small vase with water in it. Izuku picks the flowers and puts it in the vase. They're pretty. And my favorite. He blushed in shyness. Shoto smiled as small and pat Izuku's head. Yeah. Izuku pushed his hands away embarrassed. What? I'm older. The older twin stated. B but still, Shoto chuckled. They both made their way to the other three who was watching. He's a good brother. Fayumi said. They're the same, but I can't help but think that they are opposites really. Natsuo stated. Making Endeavor think back on the time he were with Izuku. Seeing how the twins are together and side by side. Yeah. Shoto doesn't really put anything else, but that stoic face and small smiles and chuckles. Izuku however does smile small too but, he shows more emotions and less apathetic. He laughs, he playfully gets along. Like a kid Enji usually sees during patrol. Izuku, after the visit do you want to do something? Enji asks as he put his hand on his son's shoulder. 
Izuku smiled at him, but the answer was sorta of away from the smile. The smile slowly drops as he gave off a thinking face Shota would wear. Anji chuckles. You can think about it. I'll get your answer later. He exclaimed, Izuku nodded and went in the car sitting between Shoto and Atsuo in the back seat. It's weird seeing the No.2 hero drive. Izuku thought as the car starts to move. The youngest was expecting to visit a party or a friend's house. But, he was surprised when the car stopped into the hospital. Dad. Anji looked at Izuku. Are we gonna have a doctor's appointment? With a tilted head, Izuku watched his family laugh. No, Izu. We'll have your appointment when something goes on in your memories. Fayumi said. He made an O face. It's a surprise, Izuku. Natsuo smiled as the car is parked. They went in the hospital and made their way to the room of their destination. After a knock, they went in. There's a woman. White hair and pretty. Gray eyes. The one he sees in the frames in their house. Izuku looked at Shoto with hopeful eyes. Ever since Inko's death, aside from waiting to be taken in by the Todorokis and have a family, he dreamed to meet his mother. The older twin nodded with a soft smile. Izuku, meet your mother. Rei Todoroki. Anji said as he walks his way to the woman and give Aster flowers. Izuku went closer, he put the rinja he picked earlier on the table near, and went to go in the long-awaited hug. Izuku. Rei stuttered as she returned the hug. They parted and Rei made sure to take a clear look on his son. Why you're pretty? Izuku muttered. And you're handsome. Definitely from my side of the family. She smiled fiddling with a strip of Izuku's hair. He has red hair at most and she butted in earning a small slap by Fayumi on his arms. Let them be dad. She whispered yelled. Enji sighed in defeat. Um. Izuku wasn't sure if he can call her mom just yet. What if it makes everyone uncomfortable? It took some time for him to be able to warm up on Enji, Fayumi, and Natsuo, before calling them dad, Nisan, and Naisan. Call me mom. Izuku. Rei said. Izuku nodded. Mom. His lips quirked up to a smile feeling warm inside his heart. Mom. I brought flowers. Thank you Izuku. She smiled as she sees the Rindus. They just told me to pick. I just picked my favorites. They're my favorite too you know. The Ridi perked up. As the two got lost in their conversation, Fayumi and Natsuo were fixing up their gifts. The fruit basket and some books. Shoto was watching Izuku and Enji was just happy. Everything is falling into pieces. Visiting time is almost over Enji. Just come back next time. Rei smiled. She worried that everyone was out too late. She heard they were supposed to go out somewhere depends on Izuku's choice, but her sweet son decided to stay with her the whole day. Of course everyone didn't mind. They actually loved it when they tell stories to each other, and sometimes the kids teaching their parents how to use the phone and teaching games. All ended with laughter and tiredness. Shoto excused himself to the bathroom, and Izuku yawned as Fayumi and Natsu was talking to Rei. I think you're right Rei. Enji said as he pulled Izuku closer. Now leaning at him Izuku complained. I wanna stay longer with mom. He said blandly, but the sincerity is in doubted that he is desperate to stay. Enji sighed. Izuku. We'll come back next week okay? Izuku gave a look. Enji sighed more. After a few minutes, can't she come home yet? He asks don't worry, by next month, your mom should be able to go home. Shoto came in with the doctor. The doctor said those words with a smile, making everyone looked at her with grateful eyes. You heard me, it seems working things out helped your recovery Mrs. Todoroki. Congratulations. I'm so excited mom Fayumi said as she hugged her mom carefully. Looks like you're easily attached to mom. Shoto said to Izuku. The latter only nodded with a small smile. Izuku's and Shoto's smiles are not so rare these days. The school went on a frenzy crushing in the two. Shoto still wondered how until now, they didn't get to explain their situation to the class. Hello. Dobby answered the unknown number. This is the commission. Dobby perked up. He was alone in his provided room. Action will come a few months. Recruiting and planning are already flowing. Continue what you do for a few more weeks. We'll send a date where you can come back. By now, I'm betting your scars becomes noticeable worse and worse. We'll put you to appointment again once you get back, so don't worry. Dobby looked in the mirror as he listened to the phone. Yeah. My burns are pretty bad right now. He can see purple burns came to a notice again. They're coming back he thought. His burns were kept away temporarily by a quirk. Why? So he can remain handsome of course. Plus, it is harder not to hide among the crowd when you have unique noticeable burns. The conversation goes on, he was listening, but. His thoughts still wanders off. I need hair to eye. My whites are coming back. But more importantly. I can go home. Moving in dorms. Izuku is low-key finding things funny on how his classmates hasn't realized the official fact that him and Shoto are brothers. 
It has became a joke multiple times, and Shoto tries to tell them they are, only to be stopped by Bakugou for his own amusement. Izuku couldn't care less because he does enjoy Kakin and Shoto fighting for something so small. Well, the week's endeavor requested was shortened to one since training is needed. Nezu wanted as Awa wanted to supervise all his students. This is no exception even to Endeavor's sons. Dad, don't worry, we'll visit often. Izuku says. What he said. Shoto says as he put out his and Izuku's bags. Full of what they would bring to the dorms. Fayumi will bring those to the dorms in the evening. Bring spare clothes so you won't be stuck in that the whole day. Enji said as he prepares himself to go to work. With a content smile, Enji left the house off to his agency. Finishing their sobas, Izuku and Shoto talk about what they wanted to do with their quirks. How to improve them. And some stories here and there. They continue talking as they went in the bullet train on the way to UA. So? Your hot ice isn't strong as the cold one. Izuku hummed a yes. Well, it wouldn't really be nice to burn your practice mate. It could leave a scar. Ah sorry. Shoto sighed. It's fine, I get what you mean. How does cold flames work? Um, well. You know how that Dobby guy and you control flames. Just like that. Except the temperature is opposite. The more I produce, the colder it gets. The coolest thing I made with this is the sports festival. Surrounding us with cold flames making it look like a snowstorm. Izuku explained. Wouldn't that give you frostbites? Shoto asked, remembering how he got frostbites using his quirk. Well, that's why I have hot ice silly. Just like how you have your flames. Izuku smiled rivaling the sun. Ah, so today is an express of Izuku Deha. The older twin thought. He watched Izuku for days so he can get used to his mood swings. Many days he is like Shoto himself but less apathetic, turning into sometimes, his expressive side like now is coming out and lastly the rare times where he is as apathetic as Shoto. If not, then more apathetic than Shoto. Making their way to the classroom, they were met by Izawa in the halls. Good morning sensei. Izuku greeted. Good morning to Dorikus. You moving in the dorms today right? The twins nodded. Then, you can set up all afternoon. Traditional style as you both requested. Get help from your classmates when you need to. Tell the class I'll come late. Forgot my coffee. Izawa walked away muttering the last part. The twins heard it but decided to laugh when Izawa was out of sight or far enough for him not to hear both their chuckles. 1A is chaotic as ever. Entering the classroom many greeted them despite the crazy things they were doing. Izawa sensei would be late. Shoto said. None say anything back, but he knew they should get the memo. The twins went to their seats, Bakugou began talking to Izuku about their own stuff, and Shoto converse with himself about how he will make do with his fireside. He couldn't just be left out by Izuku, so he wanted to train and train more. The snowstorm stunt Izuku made at the sports festival, Shoto couldn't wield his fire side that strong. The thought of not standing side by side or alongside the strength of his twin. He feels like they were so different and made them apart. Shoto doesn't want that, so he has to get better. Their day was pretty much any other day. They listen to their teachers and joke around whenever it's allowed or appropriate. In the end, all have to go back to the dorms. Everyone started going in their own friend groups. Mina noticed just now that we were carrying extra bags. Uh, Midoriya. Why so many bags? You two Todoroki-kun. Mina asks as Bakugou takes one of Izuku's bags. Well, we're joining the dorms today. The weeks got cut off early. Shoto answered. Wait Midabru, Shoto told us the reason why he wasn't early in the dorms. How about you? Hiroshima asks. About that. Amizuku was cut off by a hand covering his mouth. He has family business damn plebs. Bakugou yelled at them rudely interrupting the red bean. Izuku sighed as he know Kakin would want to prolong his fun. Shoto just got tired to deal with Katsuki, especially they were walking to the dorms with extra bags. That's new coming from you Kakin. Izuku said as he gave a look to Katsuki. Still monotone though. Knew what extras. Plebs. Akaburu I don't know what hurts more. Kaminari said as he tried to mimic Hiroshima. Isn't pleb better as he actually puts us in the picture though as commoners and not some extra away from the picture. Siro commented. The debate went on until they reached the Heights Alliance. You room side by side. How cool is that? Kaminari exclaimed. Makes all the job easier when we help you two bring boxes up here. Your stuff's coming in the same day right? Wait are your houses near? Hanta said with a smile turning to a questioning look. Well, Fayumi is coming later. Shoto said. Oh your sister. Mina took interest. She wondered how a monotone female Todoroki would look like. The Bacchus would let the two in their own rooms to change. Bakugou is laughing internally as his friends still believe in his words and excuses on why and how Izuku is not Shoto's brother. 
Soon enough, the group plus the twins found themselves in the common room. Anak came in and Izuku was excited. Nisan. He let out as he looked at Shoto. Mina excitedly opened the door to see white-haired woman in glasses with red streaks randomly on her hair. The woman put a smile on her face as she pointed on the bags left out by Enji before leaving to the car. He didn't want to cause a ruckus in the dorms. Nisan Izuku's mood turned 360. He was so quiet. Smiling softly. Quiet, and toned down, smiling softly, and well. Quiet. Now he's exclaiming like a kid and went to hug the woman. Hello, I'm Fayumi Todoroki. I came to bring their stuff. She smiled. Mina realizes that she isn't like Shoto at all, so she was kinda distracted at that. She really did thought she was gonna be as apathetic as Shoto Bu wait. Nisan. She exclaimed. The bomb turned to laugh Shoto's side. And Izuku was too distracted clinging to Fayumi to even care. Introduction to training. Nisan, Mina exclaimed. Shoto seemed to not read the situation answered calmly. Yes. Nisan. But, Izuku also called her wait, so you really are brothers. Confusion became excitement for this pink girl. Shoto nodded. You didn't know? Asked Fayumi. Kakin always answered for us before we get the chance to. Izuku said still clinging to his sister. If you haven't noticed, we have been trying to tell you every time you guys turn to that subject. Shoto said as he takes some boxes behind Fayumi. Do you need help Shoto? Asked Fayumi. Just help Izuku. I know he'll need help. Shoto continued to his room, and Izuku complied. He better start now if he wants a finished place to sleep. He himself is surprised. He didn't expect something for a flooring. Similar to home. Anyways, he could always ask about that later. He should help Fayumi carry more stuff. Kakin. Can you help us? TCH. Eyes is so weak. My hands are just full Kakin. He retorted calmly watching Katsuki carry some boxes. Setting up the floor. These are tatami mats. If you haven't noticed, this is what he have at home. Fayumi explained as he take out the mats in from the box. Does Shoto have the same? Fayumi nodded. So you just put them to fit. Here let me show you. It's so cool. I've been in Kakin's room and it looks like we have different flooring. Izuku said. You're being monotone again. Chuckle Katsuki. Here's a thick feuding, and two extra ones just in case. That also made me bring a lot of pillows for you. Thanks, Nisan. And here's a normal mat so the pillows won't direct to the floor. Put it under your feet. Izuku was doing what her sister tells her to do as Katsuki works on Izuku's low Japanese chair and desk. Fayumi let out a giggle. Nisan. Something you wanna share. Izuku's smile is small. It's just, I find it funny how you and Shoto are so like yet so different. Nisan, how many times have you said that to me? The youngest Todoroki chuckled. Well, Shoto can survive with one pillow while you need three just to get comfortable. That's why I bring extra pillows during our sleepovers nerd. Kasuki butted in completing Fayumi's point. Plus, most of my pillows stayed at your house. Don't you realize that you flooded your bed with pillows? I get it, stop attacking me. Shoto came in just as the conversation died down. Oh, you haven't put up the divider yet. It's still downstairs half and half back you yelled. Then, I'll get it. Just as the older twin was about to go down, Siro, Kaminari and Kirishima was inside carrying some more of the stuff for the Todorikus, including the dividers. Well, Izuku is not really gonna divide his room. Maybe he'll just put it on the side as decoration and use it whenever he like. Soon enough the room decorating finished and the others were invited in. Fayumi made his leave suggested by the twins, since they knew their sister would be bombarded with questions not only about their father, but them too. Plus, Fayumi and Natsu weren't really exposed to the public citizens. Well you can change the interior, Siro exclaimed noticing the floors. No, our house is filled with tatami mats. It's so traditional Japanese Mina yelled excitedly. Izuku and Shoto gave a look of what do you expect. Look. They didn't really get it since they're Japanese. Plus looking into Izuku's room in the apartment he grew up in, it was pretty Japanese style too. Maybe it's because the style reminds him of his original home. Anyways. After some more praises the night went by them talking about how things happened. If they weren't lying from the start, and more questions. Azawa had to go to the dorms just to scold the class, saving the twins from the noise and attention. Class. I want you to meet some people. Azawa talked in front of the class. Seeing as to how the students are taking the provisional licensing exams they need to at least meet someone who has the experience. They were supposed to come earlier, but they were only available now. Meet UA's top 3 students. In a tired voice Azawa introduced the big three immediately going lean back to the wall and maybe fall asleep. The students know what to do. They'd handle things on their own. And so the three introduced themselves. 
Mirio Tagata, Nijire Hado, Tamaki Amuchiki. All three of them had weird personalities which made strong impressions to the class. Especially Izuku. In middle school, Izuku thought himself to be weird, he didn't understand why girls approach her but probably mistaking him on the guy they were supposed to give letters to. Katsuki bets his best friend is now pondering on the very thought, and couldn't help but laugh which earned him some looks. Third years. Most of whom you'd be competing with are third years and second years. Best to know something before actually going in there. Not that I'd actually give out the fact that you are the center of attack from the very start. As Zawa thought. Oh Doc K. Since as you saw earlier I'm weird at explaining, I'll just show you. Mirio said. He was stretching and the class is hyped. Shoto, Izuku. As Zawa called. He motioned for them to go beside him. Mirio, I know you can take all of them. But, these two's quirk will affect all of them if they want to go all out. Carry on. Mirio nodded at Azawa and started to surprise the students. After only seconds of watching, Izuku has a good knowledge about Mirio's quirk. Reminds him of a ghost who can choose whether to go through things or not. Although, he's not quite sure of the drawback yet. Mirio Tagata, he's the closest to being number one. Students and heroes alike. Izuku and Shoto were surprised. Shoto, you're strong but, you still have a lot to work on. That's an easy thing to say as what you show. Izuku, you already went beyond plus ultra many times, but go beyond that beyond. In my eyes. You two, along with Bakugu if things are handled, are the closest to the top. The two were surprised. Rivalry to each other radiates them but, they were proud and happy of their teacher's words. I don't play favorites. But, keep this a secret. I always like it when my class is the strongest out there so I made sure of that. You're lucky we get to put them out their schedule. Usually Nezu won't. Now Izuku gets why their trainings are insane. As always competitive aside from being rational and blunt to reality. That out of the way, he got a major praise from a teacher who has a record of expelling 154 students in his 4, or was it 5 year teacher career. Nice to know 64 has passed. Soon that thought in his head disappeared when he noticed his beaten classmates. Isn't those punches a bit too much? He thought. He looked at his sensei's eyes. Just from Taddy could tell he was smirking internally which he himself internally gave a deadpan look. Mirio, who do you pick first? Azawa asks tiredly. Ohh I want to go with Endeavor's son. He excitedly says. The whole class sighed. Which one? Everyone asks simultaneously. Wh what? Isn't he Endeavor's son? Mirio pointed at Shoto. Well, yeah, but the other one is also Endeavor's son B dies. Kasuki yelled. Wat Hado came in. Endeavor has another kid at UA. Tamaki asked in the middle of his sulking on his wall. What's your quirk? Is it only flames? Or do you have ice too? Ooh, maybe only ice. Are you twins? Oh. Is I hate san Tamaki stopped her. Well, I'll go with whoever is older first. Mirio smiled. So, Shoto goes first then. Shoto came to where the class did their fight. Well, Todoroki froze the whole floor. Hoping it will do something plus, it'll be his cool when he starts using his fire. He'll try to circulate it around for a long time so he can make sure that Tagata was unable to go near him or deactivate his quirk. Well, results can be lethal, but hey, plus ultra right. Of course he would immediately stop and solve it with his ice with some help from his younger twin. As always there too to stop casualties. Well in the end, Shoto was tired out. The time he rejected his fireside made him. Lost his touch for the present. Oh well, can't do changes now. Still blames his father for that though. Izuku, you turn. Izuku Pav. Well, older brother lost. Thanks for choosing him first, I noticed a drawback Shoto might have not. If Mirio Senpai can go through things. Such as. Solid ground, our physical body, and Shoto's fire. Doesn't the other way apply? It means he couldn't breathe while his quirk is activated. I'll just shield my floor with the hot ice, he can't get too near. I wonder if he disables it to get back up. To be sure, I'll borrow Shoto's technique. Don't know if that'll work, but he seemed to be affected earlier as he touches it slipping in cold feet. He can't get near. I'm sorry Mario Senpai, but you might earn some burns. Gathering more of my plans in short seconds, I went inside the area and activate my quirk immediately. As Mix Sensei says, there are no countdowns in real battles. Covering the floor, I added a chest height hot ice wall to make sure he won't get near. Dirt Pav. Well that was fun. Izuku cheerily said with a smile before turning back with an apathetic face. Is that normal? Mirio Whisper asks one of class A. If you meant the mood swings then yeah. Answered back a classmate. Well that's so cool Todoroki's. Might as well take my place immediately. Mirio said with very happy tone. No, wait for us to graduate first. Said Amichiki. Hado laughed in the background. 
Well, Congress on to the twins for beating Mario. As always said tiredly almost sarcastic. But the twins know he means it. You are using every day for training and only leave two hours of school hours for regular studies. This is a massive change in schedule, but we are training you to be on or almost par with these three. Izuku, Bakugu, Shadow. I'll be blunt. You're strong enough to level and surpass this three. Everyone has high expectations on you honestly. See that as a blessing and challenge. So, make sure to pass the exams. As always stated which made Izuku and the other two kinda tense. Go to recovery girl, come back as soon as you could. Cementus here will help us. Ectoplasm has class but will join later on. Their sensei nodded as Cementus went in as if on cue. Big 3. Your teacher is looking for you. Said Cementus. Well. Go beyond plus alter. As Alwa ended it with the school motto before going into his sleeping bag to find his corner of the gym. Maybe he got too excited and ended up tired. Call Dobby here. Shigaraki said. Kurajiri complied going to the eldest Todoroki's room. Tamura wants to see you. Dabi nodded and went to follow Kurajiri's lead through the portal warp. Once face to face, he could see the irritated face of Shigaraki. The hand man decided to talk. You, what's about the extra phone calls? Provisional hero license exam one. You, what's with the extra phone calls? Shigaraki was obviously annoyed. Well, can't I have extra phone calls? Dabi asks in a bored manner. Don't think you can fool me to ya. Handman hissed. Dobby sighed. It's Dobby. Tuya is a dumb name handy. He retorted. Uoshiki and Dobby are fighting, shut up Toga. Both yelled. Fine. Dobby. Shigaraki forced the name after a dramatic pause. Who's on the other line? Can't I have other villain friends? Oh is Hux a villain? Shigaraki seed. Dobby sighed on the outside, but he is internally thinking fast. He came up with a good response that would make sense. The Paranormal Liberation Front. Dobby let out. What? An annoyed Shigaraki was even more annoyed now since the person in question is changing the subject. Hawks is joining in the Paranormal Liberation Front, spying on us villains I suppose. Dobby shrugged his shoulders. Well, do you seriously trust that? Tamura scoffed. Of course not, that's why I'm handling him. Dobby acting angry towards Hawks. You see, I know where he comes from. That commission place is pretty annoying. Oh? That's where you died. Tamura said getting the point. Dobby couldn't help but internally thank his acting instructor and his amazing mind for the perfect cover and background story. Then, continue dot dot Shigaraki said. He turned back to his games immediately, and Dobby was praised by all for one from the TV screen. Once everything was settled he went his way to his room again. Toga followed. Ho ho Dobby, the fun starts soon, Toga coded. Dobby nodded it's all ending soon. Dobby thought smirking. Akigu. Try to deal with the falling debris from your explosions. It can hurt citizens okay, as Awa yelled after being almost squished by one of the falling rocks. Yes sir damn it Bakuku yelled as another explosion came. Ectoplasm walked towards Azawa. Azawa Khan, shouldn't we put the twins on different gyms? Ectoplasm asks. Why? Izuku is making a snowstorm, while Shoto is making a fire whirl. Can't you see? Rather feel. Azawa went to shaking on freezing to melting like summer. Yeah now I get your point. At least send your clones to them. As always said as Ectoplasm nodded and made his way to the two using his quirk. It's another day of training for the licensing exams. As always has no doubt his students will pass as long as this intense training continues. The only thing he's worried about is Bakugu and Shoto's cooperation. Well, Izuku would be there for Shoto. But still. As always sighed as he chose to just wait for the day. Well, it came sooner. After a week or two. Class 1A is now gathered outside the exam site seeing other students from different schools. Wow sensei so many heroes in training, Mina exclaimed. Her excitement seemed to have affected his classmates too. Eraser a voice of a woman came in. Eraser had been my boyfriend. The woman yelled, this very much entertained Ishido. Their gruffy teacher seemed to tense up. Sensei. Is she your girlfriend? The curiosity of Hajikur. No, students meet Ms. Joke. She teaches at Katsubutsu Academy High. I and Izawa were like in a romance movie. Our agencies near together and we pass by each other almost ever it as always smacked her in the head. Don't get your dreams up joke. He said still tired. Ha 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 racer there you go again. Marry me. No, as always sighed. Oh, you a students. Yelled a boy with black hair. This is my class as always. Second years. Joke happily introduced. You a, you a students. Hello, my name is Yoshindo. Happy to meet you. He happily introduced himself. Your smile is overly big, Shoto commented silently but heard. Wah. Quacky, acting. 
yelled Bakugou who earned a scolding from Tenya. Izuku came closer to Shindo and put a hand on his shoulder. It's okay Shindokan, no need to force yourself, Izuku said honestly worried that they were forcing him to be nice in a way. Izuku, that's a different case, yelled Katsuki. Oh, Izuku tilts his head. The ash blonde fascinated. What an airhead, he thought. Is he really sincere? Shindo pointed, his expression seemed to darken as he whispered at the girl beside him. She has blonde hair, blue eyes, and similar teeth to Aijuru Kirishima. I think so but what's important is that I have to get their autographs, she yelled as her words followed the end. So good to be famous. Kaminari and Mineta beamed. Anyways, good luck the Ketsubutsu student said before going to the exam site. Yue students another unknown voice yelled, but this time from a girl. Kami, you're too excited. Shiketsu students. Izuku let out. A boy walks to the front, wearing a cape and the Shiketsu cap, he bowed almost hitting his head on the floor. He took a quick glare at Shoto immediately turning away not even after a second. This didn't go unnoticed by the twins. Izuku concluded that he will keep an eye on the guy. Yurashi Inasa, as all was said as the Shiketsu students walked away. He placed first on the recommendations but didn't enroll to UA. He added which surprised 1A. Watch out for him. He said before he started walking in the building and the students hurriedly followed. Well, the welcoming speech was just like a deja vu of his always lessons. The speaker was sleepy. The blonde sleepy man explained the rules and how many would pass this first stage. After the simple details. Well, the exams start now. The ground started shaking a bit and the walls fell. Guess it starts now. Izuku thought as he looks around. Shoto, Kakin. You stay with the group whether you like it or not. Izuku said. I think it's better to stay together. He suggested to the class. I'm guessing they'll come for us first. He also added. Why? Most yelled. They know our quirks. Izuku yelled as he moved swiftly a bit surprised as a ball aimed at him. Then he sees more balls aimed at their group, he starts using his cold flames to at least lead away the ones thrown at them to the other way. Hopefully, it takes out other people too. We just need to continue like this. Aijur yelled with the agreement of others. Not yet. You're too strong together. Shindo yelled using his cork on the ground. Provisional hero license exam too. Third path. Class 1A was doing all good until this second year Shindo used his cork. You're too powerful together. The raven-haired yelled. He used his vibrations to shake off the ground, resulting in separation for our class 1A. So unfortunate. Yelled Shindo as he felt proud of what he did. TCH, doesn't matter. Bakugu said. Looking behind him, he saw Ajiro Kirishima and Denki Kaminari. Maybe I can make use of this situation. Katsuki thought. While well, Bakugu was stuck with his two friends, not that he would admit it, Izuku was fortunately with her brother. Well, our quirks seem to contrast each other, but that doesn't mean we can't make use of it. Izuku muttered out. Shoto I can't attack with my hot ice. Giving the great burns to other students may result in disqualification. Izuku whispered. But did you forget that we learned how to cool that off with your cold fire? Shoto replied as both of them are circling back on the back with each other being cautious of their surroundings. Oh. Yeah, I forgot. Izuku monotonously replied. So what's the plan? Shoto asked, he is positive that his brother has a plan. Simple really we can eliminate as many as we can. Considering stray balls that were thrown around, I read it gives extra points at the pamphlet, no one really dared to pick up on the way, while we gather as many of our classmates. Then start with us. A cheery voice of Yuraka was heard. Iida following behind her greeted them. Startled, the twins jumped a bit, but immediately put up stoic faces. It's just you Shoto said. Um Todoroki-kun. Midoriya-kun, what's the plan? Yuraka said. Just seconds after that, on the other side of the twins, another pair of Iida and Yuraka came in. Shoto. Izuku. Shoto and Izuku nodded at each other, understanding what to do. Picking up a couple of stray balls, Izuku looked at the first pair. Yuraka san, Iida kun, I'm afraid the plan is to eliminate you. Izuku smiled a small one, throwing the balls in their way, activating his cork for countermeasures. Apart from more control on the ball, in case this was a trap, other balls were thrown away. Which was correct intuition since Kami was there waiting for the perfect time to toss the ball at the two. Her ball just became astray. No one close to me or my classmates calls me Midori anymore. He said in a monotone as he turned to Chako and Tenya. Well, let's find the others now, Shoto said. Izuku nodded. I think I heard Mina at that side. Achaki pointed. Iida backed up her claims. Since it was the only information they have for now, best to move quickly. As they make their way, Izuku said his plans. Other stray balls whenever you see one, Izuku said. Isn't that against the rules though? Iida asked as he fixes his helmet mask. 
No one really read the pamphlet here. Izuku handed out the pamphlet to Ida. Well, good first then, Ida said, fixing his helmet once again as if it was his glasses. Izuku. The loud whisper yell of Mina was heard. There she is with Siro and Aoi Ama running towards the four. They explained the plan to the three and handed the pamphlet. A repeat of the plan, they dodged every ball that went their way. Better yet, they catch them. Nearing a building, Momo, Jiru, Sayu, and Shoji went out. Izuku asks his brother to freeze the building to make sure there are fewer competitors. Just in case. Sadly, an announcement said that the Todoroki twins, Yuraka, Ida, Mina, Siro, and Aoyama, should go to the waiting area. May we request the following students to go to the waiting area. Both Todoroki's, Ida Tenya, Achako Yuraka, Mina Ishido, Hanta Siro, and Aoyama Yuga. The extra points have been put in your scores. May we request again you to go to the waiting area. I repeat may we re. The caller repeated. Wait. Additional points. Asked Yoirozu. The other three were confused as well. Well, they weren't the only ones. Every student is. Hiroshido handed the pamphlet and winked, gesturing a shush before they went out of the arena. Well after about 30 minutes of waiting. All of their classmates passed. The rest of that 30 minutes was just Izuku and Shoto talking to themselves. When Bakuku came in, he joined the conversation. Izuku couldn't help but look at the Shiketsu student glaring daggers at them. Specifically, Shoto. When the guy, known as Inasa, looked at Izuku, the Redeed returned the glare. Inasa went close to them. Towering over Izuku and Shoto, his strong build didn't intimidate the twins though. Hello. He greeted with an overly wide smile. Let's keep the peace between our school, okay? Inasa spoke in a cheery military-like voice. He's overly happy Izuku thought. The yeah, apiece Izuku muttered bored, but everyone heard. Is he usually like that? Pointed Inasa looking a bit of a hidden disgust at the coldness of our Redeed protagonist. Don't worry he's like that. Sorry about that. His mood swings are really amazing you know. That's normal. Class 1A commented along those lines. Time's up. Yelled an announcement. The sleepy man from the start explained the rules to the second part of the exam, what to do and what not. At the end of the explanation, he gave a special mention to Izuku and the rest who gained the extra points. Many were confused about how, but the staff of the exams didn't say anything how about it. Well, the exams will start in 5 minutes. Do your best. Provisional Hero License Exam 3 After explaining how they are professional actors who they had to rescue and grade them, and a heads up that some hero will act as a villain, more like hinted in a very vague way that totally no one got it, they made the students prepare for 5 minutes. Izuku and Shoto had spent this time talking. They didn't really need any relaxation cause they're already calm. So much for the Baka squid, they are literally bothering Bakugu with their jokes and teasing. Izuku still feels uneasy around that Shiketsu bald kid. Inasa as he remembered. Somehow he's annoyed, yet there's this small whisper saying that there's just a misunderstanding. That the boy he remembered as Inasa was wronged. But he let his problems about that boy slip by first. As long as Inasa doesn't get in their way, then he'll let the boy be. Izuku wants a peaceful passing this exam with my brother thing. Aside from that, he wants to pass since he's sure Fayumi would prepare something for dinner. Their dad requested them to be home to celebrate. Azawa agreed to Enji's request since he knew the situation. The black-haired teacher wouldn't want to separate Izuku from his family. Soon, an alarm rang meaning the exams had started. Students scattered the whole arena. Of course, most of them were classmates teaming up due to trust and the compatibility of quirks. Of course, they also worked together with other schools, again, due to quirk compatibility. Teamwork is necessary for these exams. Spectators from outside the arena were pleased as they give points. The actors were already looking at their favorite students who saved them. Poor Bakugu. After 5 minutes, Izuku and Shoto somehow ended up meeting Bakugu, where the blonde is shouting at the victim of the rock slide area. Izuku fasipumed and decided to interfere to calm his best friend. He promised to only do it once. If ever Kakin didn't learn, then poor blonde will learn on his own after realizing his wrong in the remedial classes on these exams. Izuku heard they were hell. The first 10 minutes were peaceful, and many were already saved and put to an area where students made it as where the medics are. Unfortunately, those 10 minutes ended and a metal gate opened and showed. Gang Orca. A hero who's popularly voted for looking like a villain. His quirk allows him to have the abilities of an orca or another term is color whale on dry land. Gang Orca you gotta be kidding me. He's too strong to be in this exam, Ms. Joke had her comedic panic. Azawa just smirked at her misfortune. He got an idea, it wouldn't hurt to tease the green-haired clown. Joke's on you then he said in a bored manner. Ms. Joke just couldn't believe that Azawa had this much faith in his class. Bakugu now quiet and gently helping the lady and the old man, Izuku let him be with Kirishima and Denki. 
Shoto pulled Izuku to where the medics are hoping to bring peace to the one they had just rescued. Unfortunately, the villain is near. Too near. And so, after dropping them with the crowd, asked to be taken care of, and assured them everything will be fine, the twins ran toward the hero playing villain, along with his men. Easily passing through, they decided to distract gang worker. Using their flashy quirks to attract the attention for a follow, and attack when the perfect distance, situation, and timing is met. Izuku glanced to his side for only a second, but time seemed slower when he exchanged looks with black ones from outside the arena. Azawa watching closely at the twins, met eyes with Izuku who gave a smile whether it is for him or not. Ms. Joke seems to have taken interest in Azawa's enthusiasm. Those twins, opportunity always comes to them but, when it is not there, they create their own opportunities. Ms. Joke didn't really get what Azawa meant, but, the underground hero didn't miss it. The twins created an almost perfect and easy situation for them to attack the villain. Cornering gang worker away from the other students, the victim actors, and their medical supplies. They were about to attack with their hot side, since it will dehydrate their opponent everything was according to plan, not until. The strong wind came in their direction. Resulting in a failed attack where the fire and air broke sideways, and Izuku's hot ice turned cold for some reason. Internally, an irritated Izuku cursed the man who ever did it. Looking at the air cork user, he was so disappointed since he didn't really want to fight with the strong built boy. Anasa. He seethed quietly only for himself to hear. The seconds of their rivalry allowed the hero playing villain to attack using his ultrasonic waves at the students. Shindo did what he could since vibrations are his specialty. Creating an earthquake like towards gang worker. Effectively distracting him making the ultrasonic waves stop. This is when all went downhill, for Izuku at least. Inasa started talking. His hate for Endeavor, Izuku was annoyed. The younger twin knew how his big brother never wanted to be compared to their old man. Yet Inasa did. This triggered Shoto. Your eyes are the same as his cold, looking far away, filled with hatred. Inasa seed. Don't compare me with that old man, Shoto whispered not really minding whether Inasa heard him or not. All he knows is that he is angry. As always sighed. Well no matter what the outcome, Inasa would have to face some lecture as he showed a start of fight and interference in the middle of this exam. He let out. Ms. Joke silently agreed. Other instructors out there were agreeing as they saw it was intentional. The Shiketsu teacher was somewhat disappointed. If they continue like this, they're gonna lack teamwork gang work a thought. Izuku was making plans on how to stop his brother from fighting. Competing like this won't do any good he whisper yelled to himself. Anasa and Shoto continued with their quirk battle. A fire and air contradicting each other. Much to Izuku's and each other's dismay is that both boys are stubborn. Shindo continued to distract Gang Orca, who returned a stronger ultrasonic wave that defeated Shindo's vibrations. Pushed away and getting weak, Shindo was catching up with his quirk's backlash, and resting on the ground for a few seconds. What are the odds that Shoto and Inasa's fight ended up going directly at Shindo? Izuku started to get mad as fire and air went Shindo's way. Adding his quirk to hopefully defeat two elements, he shouted, What the hell is wrong with you two? What are you doing Dobby? The voice of Shigaraki seed. A smirk made its way to Dobby's pretty face. I said, I'm sorry. Hawks isn't really the one assigned to this league. He was just sent for distraction and extra information. Tuya burned the whole place down. All Nomu factory has been burned down. All files are burned and the doctor is stopped. All Might is currently facing all for one, but that is not Tuya's business. He didn't care what was happening, but All Might better win. What's important to him is that. He's going home. Izuku confronts. The exam was over, Izuku wasn't really in the mood for celebration. He has many worries and anger running through his mind. Shoto not passing, Inasa's words. He didn't want to relive the moment. Doesn't matter if Shoto tried to make up for his mistakes, the deed is done. Aside from lacking teamwork, they almost caused a degree or three burns on a fellow test taker. The rest of the class was worried for the two. Bakugu can handle himself, but seeing the Todoroki twins lost their cool was kinda disturbing. They had to realize that the twins were still human, even if they are too handsome and that strong. Azawa wasn't really amused with Shiketsu's show. Mixing personal feelings into the work, those personal feelings of anger. The boy called Inasa should have confronted Shoto at a different time and a different situation. Not on some important test that affects one's future. No he wasn't disappointed with Shoto. It can't be helped, he understands what goes on in the Todoroki family. Inasa's words would have affected him if he was in the shoes of the candy cane. What he is also worried about is the younger twin. Izuku must have been affected too. It's impossible to say that he's not. Looking at the Sedri deed, Azawa could see exhaustion. The same exhaustion he saw while Izuku's recovering from the death of Inko Midoriya, the woman who took care of him. Azawa sighed. 
Yue will have a talk with Shiketsu. Izuku couldn't help but be bothered. If Anasa was so angry at Endeavor, does that mean he knows that Endeavor back then was not a good person as he is now? If so, then the situation turns into a completely different story. It took quite a while to receive the license, Izuku had the time to think things through. Though Izuku is hurt and saddened that Shoto is too frustrated to look or talk to anyone, even to him. The older twin's eyes remained on the ground. Shoto's case was a bit too depressing, though the kind of words he despises of being together in a sentence or two was infuriating. He let his anger seep out and took control as he listened to Anasa's words. Last but not least, he didn't pass alongside his twin. Izuku would have been happier in receiving his license if I passed too if it wasn't for me, Izuku would have passed with a smile Shoto's thoughts were guilt filled. He couldn't look at Izuku in the eye. What would Endeavori say? Shoto I think it's what would Enji say. Izuku's voice spoke beside him. Shoto looked at the younger, Izuku is still staring on the ground not making eye contact. Did I say that out loud? He spoke quietly. Izuku only hummed a yes. Shoto gave a soft smile I shouldn't be having thoughts of the past the man is trying to change. He thought, trying to keep himself calm and reminded himself that everything is slowly getting better. Everyone has gotten their license. A mostly happy class 1 went out of the building and made their way to the bus. While going there, they just had to bump into Shiketsu's students. The dismay of Bakugou and Shoto and an opportunity for Izawa and Izuku. Izawa made his way to the teacher of the other affiliation. Of course, the teacher has to comply. The mistake that his student made had a big effect, if public matters included, the media would say that Inasa has trampled on number two son hero future. But that still wasn't the case in the formality. The case is that the Shiketsu boy had to do it at an important event where many futures could be affected. Izawa still thinks that the boy is lucky because he is part of the chosen students who are allowed to take remedial classes. Bakugu was a different case since he is usually like that. The back hair teacher actually finds this a convenient way for Bakugu to learn. Maybe the remedial classes would help tame the angry Pomeranian even just a little bit. After discussing the matter with the other teacher, both affiliations went their way to their own buses. Izuku stayed there and tugged on Inasa's cape, hinting that the boy would stay. Inasa eyed the smaller boy. Crimson red hair that fades to snowy white, very familiar features, yet he didn't recognize from where, the shiny orbs were blue. But seemingly it mixes with grey, looking like diamonds mixed with silver. Inasa definitely knows where he has seen heterochromatin eyes almost similar to that one, but the boy in front of him, he didn't have the look where his eyes are cold and looking so far. Inasa's eyes widen as Izuku bowed to him. I am Todoroki Izuku, the youngest son of the Todorokis. I please never speak of my father that way again I know you must have hated him for some reason, but for a brief moment, and a few of your words slipped out, you must have admired him before. The youngest son? You're right I did admire him. But he was nowhere near the person I thought he would be. Inasa replied. Then you must be hurting too I know he was mean. Shoto said so himself Shoto said he hated Endeavor too. Even if I didn't know how bad it was, how Shoto lived without me by his side, how he got his scar in the past because of family problems, I believe that you can change your opinion now. Endeavor is trying to change so, please don't fall in hatred. Anasa was stunned, but Shoto was more surprised. Izuku has never really talked too much, that long, voice loud, and full of emotions to others. It was special and only seen and heard by him, since Izuku feels most comfortable with Shoto. Izawa just sighed at the sight. He only has one thing to say though, not a scolding at that. Problem child is kind. Don't fall in hatred ha. Huh? I know what you mean is all with thought to himself, reminiscing a time when someone once said that to him. In the end, the younger twin and Inasa exchanged numbers, and the two are now friends. Shoto is still wary though, plus he didn't really like Inasa, yet. Early action was the right thing to do. Hawk said. Looking at the cleanup crew he felt satisfied as they just won the biggest fight of their lives, at least that's what the commission said, since this villain has apparently an S rank quirk. Where are you going now? He looked over to his right, tall guy, few burns from passing his limit, dressed in black, the hair also black, it was his best friend Tuya. Like I said home. The villain's lairs were so disgusting you know. Can't believe I survived their place for years. He answered. Exactly. Where is home? Hawks pointed out to which the other just shrugged. I'm telling your father that you are alive. Don't you dare. Yelled Tuya. Well, I have a meeting with him tomorrow. Hawks proudly said. It was no secret from Tuya that Hawks admired Endeavor as a hero. He didn't know why would his friend like a monster like him, but he decided it's not his place to judge others' references or thinking. Actually, I found someone who's similar to your youngest brother Shoto, you know. I saw them side by side, their quirks were similar in a way too. Hawk said, putting his hawk eye on Tuya. Shoto he's not the youngest is he? 
Tuya only looked at his blonde friend before walking away ignoring the question. He's probably talking about that kid at camp hot don't get false hopes Tuya. Tuya's request. I didn't pass. The monotone voice of Shoto rang through the household. Fayumi has requested for the twins to come home, as Awa was more than happy to help the Todoroki family. Nezu complied too. The news of Shoto not passing surprised all of them. W well that was unexpected, Fayumi said, she gave a smile in order to assure it's alright. In truth, Shoto was still nervous. He doesn't want Enji to put on a show in front of Izuku. I'm not mad, Enji said. I actually got a call from Izawa of what happened. The dad, you're here, Izuku said as he waves his hand. Well, it is an important day. Aside from celebrating you two for doing your best, we have a surprise for you. I'll be busy tomorrow though. Enji explained. You got the whole weekend with us. Fayumi clasped her hands together out of excitement. But where's Natsu? Izuku asked. With the surprise, Fayumi replied, making the two confused and thinking. Does it need someone to drive? Boo. We'll get a car. The two conversed in monotone voices. Did you guys use dad's credit card without me? Shoto asks, Izuku didn't know whether his brother is being comedic or not. I'm right here you know plus, it's my credit card. Enji scolded. But somehow, the way he scolded didn't scare anyone, but made everyone laugh. That simple thought made the moment for Izuku more precious than it seems. They're here already Natsu's voice was heard from the halls. Fayumi went to get Natsuo, she wasn't the type to shout. So it's not a car. Izuku said. Enji smiled and ruffled both son's hair. It's better than a car. Soon enough, Fayumi and Natsu walked out with a certain someone. She wore a soft smile, the lovely snow white hair and dazzling grey eyes, leaving the twins stunned to see the beautiful Rei Todoroki in front of them. Mom. Both boys became expressive. They called out her name in happiness. The two ran up to Rei, trapping her in a hug. You're finally home, since when? I got here two days ago I rested the whole day yesterday I saw how many things changed, but it still feels like home. But a happier one. No doubt to Shoto that his mother showed guilt even if it was just a second. Mom you, you don't have to feel guilty about Tui and I. Shoto's voice was gentle, a little more emotion than the usually dull voice. We told her that many times too, Natsu said. Is it okay to be happy without Tuya? Rei asked. I'm sure if Tui and I wanted one person to be happy, it would be you mom. So please turn that frown upside down. Natsu gave a smile in hopes his mom would follow. Rei nodded, they're right. She thought. She congratulated Izuku and Shoto since they both did their best. Enji took the news lightly which was fortunate for everyone, they celebrated, Rei could proudly say that she is happy with his family. Hawks is standing in his apartment, in the kitchen, and stare at his problem. Seriously, the milk carton is not closed, the cereal box is also opened, the flakes would probably not be crunchy anymore. Aside from those open things, milk is spilled on the dining table. A bowl and spoon are not put in the dishwasher sink at least. He sighed and looked at the root of the problem. When you said going home, I didn't think you meant my house. Hawk said he didn't like the mess Tuya made. Look at that brat relaxing in my living room not even bothering to clean up after himself. Kigo cursed at his friend. Look at this mess. If only he could attack him, the commission would probably lecture him, and he didn't want that to happen. He sighed cleaning the mess with his feathers. Millimeters Kurajiri always handled them. You're not at the league. Wait did you say Kurajiri does that? What is he? A babysitter. Kigo laughed. More like Krusty's babysitter. Tuya corrected. Well, you sleep on the couch. You should have your clothes in the storage room. Take a bath jeez. Hawks reminded. Tuya rolled his eyes. What is he? A mother bird. After nightly cleanup, the two went to sleep. Tuya though has made his decision before drifting into the world of Nod. The next day, Hawks left a letter saying that he has a patrol schedule. Tuya is still free from work since he gave major help for the commission. An s rank mission. Sure enough, Toga is also resting. He can imagine Detective Tsukauchi spoiling that high school girl by now for achieving such a great mission. There is still that other reward, we can ask for something guess it's perfect. What brings you here? The president of the Hero Commission asks. Look into someone for me, Tuya answered. The president raised a brow. Is it regards of the missing person again? I thought you gave up. Hawks told you that didn't he? The white haired gave a look the president shrugged, Hawks is sharp around here, don't blame him, he accidentally spilled the tea. Tuya rolled his eyes at the other's words. Yeah. Accidentally. He thought. Tuya could imagine the narcissistic bastard smirking after leaving this very office. Actually, investigations won't take too long now. We found a boy rather interesting bloodline. There are many similarities in how you physically described him. 
Red hair fades to white it wasn't publicly declared yet, so he isn't famous, but surely. I'm sure it isn't a coincidence that this boy hangs around your siblings so much holding two Endeavor credit cards at the mall. Said one higher up. He's found. What a thought for Tuya. After years of looking, after the years he had given up, now was it easy to accept that he is easily found by that man. Tuya gritted his teeth. He had plans. Once he finds Izuku, they'll run away together not seeing the face of Anji Todoroki, even if it means leaving behind his other siblings. At least, at least he can save Izuku from that man's dark side. How would he feel when he experiences the hate of a father, the guilt of a mother, the loneliness in that household? He doesn't want Izuku to suffocate. Portuya doesn't know that the family was happy, but not completely happy. As they had admitted without the eldest son, they still feel incomplete. Deep down, they knew that nothing else could fill that void. Be careful with your request this one, we will surely give it to you as long as it is within the law, doesn't cause harm, chaos, and evil. The president said. Tuya nodded and stayed quiet for a while. He's thinking hard of what to wish. When he opened his mouth, people thought it was something grand. Turns out. I wouldn't ask for anything for now he said. There's some change of plans. A moment of sadness. The living room was dark, quiet to say if it wasn't for the munching of chips and the TV ongoing. Premiering the latest Endeavor interview, he confirmed the rumors that he has indeed found the youngest son. He's at UA with his twin Shoto. Both are really close to each other. Endeavor said proudly. This definitely wasn't the Endeavor he knows. The cold man smiling like a full loving father. As if he has gone soft. Fans are saying that you seem happier for a while, maybe that was it. So when can we meet this young hero? The interviewer asks. We'll have to ask him to schedule if ever he accepts. Izuku can be shy. As much as Tuya wanted to know more about Izuku, he couldn't trust Endeavor's words. What if he is using Izuku for fame? He turned off the television and leaned onto Kami's sofa. Slumping to the couch lazily, he let his thoughts run. Was Izuku really shy? He let the thought wander his mind for more seconds before getting irritated blanking off his head and think of another topic. No topic came to his mind. He sighed, this is impossible. He muttered, standing up and decided to not spend his day depressed, is it really Izuku? Maybe he's just someone who happened to be a lookalike that took the chance to be a hero's son, and if he is Izuku, the real one isn't Endeavor using him for fame. If not fame. Maybe that flaming trash is still on that my kids will surpass all my obsession. Classes had to start again. Of course, the home visit must come to an end. Enji and Rei, along with Natsuo and Fayumi, were grateful to the school for allowing the twins stay. Since the League of Villains has been stopped, along with all for one hell captive ready to be legally executed soon the students can study peacefully. Without the constant attacks, as always happy that he gets his rest from his student sorry state, injuries from real villains. And possible traumas. Quite the opposite for the youngest Todoroki. Izuku couldn't help but feel down these days. Ever since his last home visit, our red hair protagonist filled his thoughts with guilt and sadness. Even though he was told not to be sad for the fact that he is found and Tuya is not he couldn't help it. But nevertheless, he kept his stoic face. He thought it would hide his emotions well just like usual. So through the whole day, he claimed that nothing special would happen, and everything would be peaceful. Shoto is feeling uneasy. This said uneasiness lead his eyes to his brother. Others might say that it was nothing since it was the usual apathetic face, at first, Shoto also thought so too. But Izuku was too serious for his liking. Usually, though very apathetic it may seem, Izuku would hold a soft smile. Barely curving his lips upward, only very observant people would notice. But not today even though Bakiku tripped and was called a dumb clumsy by a kid on the way to UA gates, even a simple chuckle wasn't heard. He sighed. Maybe it was about home. Mom did bring up the fact that Tuya being found or alive would bring more happiness. The older twin hoped that Izuku won't think too much about it, especially, misunderstand. Shoto wouldn't say a word but, he saw Izuku in the room where the butsudans are. Praying before looking at the picture of Tuya smiling wide. It wasn't completely abnormal for him to be there, but, what's different is that he held an expression. An expression he only held the first time being there in the beginning of being found. Shoto would find time to comfort Izuku. He thought it would be better to give his little brother time to think and sort out thoughts. Hoping that Izuku would not drown in the guilt, along with the sadness. Frowning at the pavement, Tuya decided to take a stroll, enjoy the outside world. Get some fresh air. Hawk said, literally kicking Tuya out of his apartment. Of course, Hawks delivered him a message of saying sorry. Smoking at his phone, Tuya didn't answer back to his friend's texts. Instead, he ignored it and snickered at the fact that Hawks would be greatly anxious. Despite hating Hawk's advice, he admitted to himself that he really does need to walk. 
though he doesn't know why his feet brought him to Yue's entrance. The shock came to him when something wrapped him tightly pulling him into a room before bright lights open. Shock also went to the face of the other man, glaring at Tuya as Alwa unwrapped his capture gear and asked, what are you doing here? Serious as ever, but the question is why did you capture me? Tuya retorted, I'm on patrol, pass a round of ground checking around campus, and you could have been a villain. As Alwa sighed tiredly at the end, wondering why is he answering a question before the other answers his. My feet brought me here. Tuya's statement was honest, but a bit ridiculous for this insomnia teacher. You expect me to believe that? As Alwa deadpanned. By a second later, as Alwa could tell that Tuya isn't lying. The seriousness and hidden determination within. As Alwa was an expert to read this type of people. Does this gave something to do with the family problem you mentioned? Does one of your siblings want it to be a hero? Of course, Tuya wasn't sure what to answer. He didn't really know if his siblings were forced to be a hero or really do dream to become one. He just gave a shrug. The problematic face he has on just made as Alwa worried for him. What exactly is the family problem you have? As Alwa asks. I hate my father. That was all Tuya gave. As Alwa felt like deja vu is happening to him. He remembered his student Shoto who has the same daddy issues. But right now, that kid is in the process of forgiving that man. As Alwa concluded something. Tuya you should meet two of my students. Closer than it seems. Why? Tuya asked the underground hero. Just seems you could take advice from a first year. As Alwa mocked in tone, but Tuya can't tell that the man is serious. Tuya sighed. Is a first year really capable of handling my problem? Thought Tuya. As Alwa, as if reading Tuya's mind, spoke, remember, your problems are for you to handle, I'm bringing you to him so you could get the idea. Anyways, was your hair originally black, or is it naturally white? As Alwa eyed the younger one. Why ask? Tuya. Don't know if you dyed them or their natural roots. As Alwa pointed at Tuya's head. Wait. Was all Tuya said before the two went out and made their way to the dorms. By 8.30 Bakugu would be asleep 30 minutes prior, and the rest are supposed to be doing their own stuff. As Alwa doubts that he'll see Heights Alliance a piece by this time. After all, he has noisy kids like Mina and Kaminari, Siro and Kirishima following footsteps, and Aida is loud in scolding. Stopping at the dorm's front door, before entering. I would like to warn you that duck once you open the door. And he did duck. Dodging a flying mug as he did. He's weirded out, but he's sure to thank Azawa for saving his head. Everyone we have a guest. This is Tuya. The class gasped seeing the familiar villain. He was part of the undercover mission along with Himiko. He once rest as he finished his patrol. Get him to one of the empty rooms. Azawa explained. Thanks, I bags, Tuya muttered. Even though he didn't seem interested, he was very much looking for one particular student. Shoto. His little brother. He wonders how the kid is doing. Probably studying and all those responsibilities as father's masterpiece. Tuya is still hesitant about the news about Endeavor going soft and the sight of family bonding. Every time the matter came up, news, interviews, talk on the streets, he would have mixed feelings about it. He didn't know whether he should feel happy, sad, or angry. He didn't know whether he should or shouldn't believe that the Izuku they found is real and not some imposter. Maybe he is overthinking stuff, maybe too paranoid, but Tuya would never forget how Izuku would brighten up his day. The smile that should have never left that household, the kind Izuku who would cheer him up and comfort him, one of the things that kept him from getting angry and frustrated. Call it complex, but what's important is that Tuya can't bear the thought of replacing his beloved brother. And even if Izuku's truly gone, his feelings about returning to the household are still like an unpublished book full of wrong and confusing words. So who am I meeting? Tuya asked the glaring teacher. Shoto Todoroki. Also has some father issues and in the middle of trying to forgive the man step by step. As always said Tuya kept up with appearances. Whistled as if something new was put in the conversation, what in the world did the number two hero did to make his son resent him? He asked playfully. His cold shoulder is hidden underneath the obnoxious charismatic act. Talk to him, as always said to him before gathering attention from his students. Anyone knows where Shoto is? He asks tiredly. Mina, contrasting his energy gladly answered him, he's probably with his half in his room. As always hummed and told the nearest student to lead Tuya there before showing him to one of the extra rooms which happens to be Kirishima, who was pulled there by Siro and Kaminari. The walk there was mostly silent. Kirishima tried to talk to the older dude who only let out a hum or a shake of a head when answering. The redeed decided to give up and keep the peace. It wasn't awkward though. Both seemed to agree that there's nothing to be talked about, and no exchange of words is needed. Both boys found each other cool. Kirishima stopped at the door where Shoto's name is plastered. Here's Icy Hot's room to Bibro. 
There's an available room on the fourth floor boy's side. Copying Bakugu's name calling. He then left the older boy there alone. Shoto was excited. Even though this happens every night, every moment with his little twin brother was always something to look forward to. Sleepover has become a normal routine. A pattern of each other's rooms every night. Izuku went to his room to take some food stash and extra pillows. So when Shoto heard a knock, it was probably Izuku. Maybe he has full hands that he can't open the door. Face close to smiling, Shoto opened the door to face disappointment and confusion. Tall, black hair with white roots, a black leather jacket, and the familiar face of a villain he isn't Izuku. Shoto didn't really get the memo that the famous Dobby was a hero spy. He was on guard ready to freeze the older boy. Dobby didn't even get past the door. Relax, I'm a hero. Tui raised his hands. Shoto looked at him skeptically. I wouldn't survive alone up to here if I were lying, Tui explained. Shoto wasn't having it, still ready to freeze the older one, as always said, I could talk to you. About what exactly? About father issues. And why would Izawa do that? Shoto's still not having it. Because I'm really a hero, Tui exclaimed. He is a hero. A new voice came by. Both looked at the owner of the voice. Izuku, Shoto said. Hi Sho, this old man is telling the truth. Izuku said as he showed Dobby's hero license. I'm only 24, Tui exclaimed. So your hero name is Dobby. But how does that work if Dobby is also known as a villain? Don't you have a real name? Your license only has your alias. Izuku eyed the hero's license. That's because I specialize in infiltrations, kiddo. Tuya is calm on the outside, but internally, many thoughts are conflicting. What kind of 24-year-old has daddy issues? Shoto apathetically commented. Knowing full well the annoyance he's giving the older. So this is the Izuku Tuya thought. He really does resemble. Is it really him? More thoughts and questions rolled into his mind like unending data. Despite being so sure now, doubt still crept up to him naturally. Some smart people had the guts to approach him with the white-haired kid. Crook specifically. Looking for someone underground wasn't exactly the smartest idea. Tuya didn't notice that he was staring, only removed from his trance as Izuku waved a hand in front of his face. Are you okay? You were staring. Tuya and I are you okay? You look sad. A memory flashed. The voice of a young toddler echoed in his mind. Tuya shook his head. An attempt to clear his mind. I'm fine. Before inviting himself into the room. Guess we can have one more person for this sleepover. Izuku flaunted the extra blankets he also brought. Good thing I brought extra. A small smile on Izuku's face. Dobby had no say about sleeping in Shoto's room. So, what daddy issues do you have exactly? Shoto asked, which seemed more serious than his monotone voice. Father issues. Tuya corrected pressing his tone. Then, father issues. I'm not sure if he was wrong or I just blamed him for my family's misfortune. Finally found you. I'm not sure if he was wrong or I just blamed him for my family's misfortune, Dobby said. Izuku hummed. So you got a problem with your dad? Izuku asks. The older one they know is Dobby nodded. Well, if he's changing you should give him a chance. It's hard to even think about giving him one, but if he really is honest and trying, maybe everything would be better. Izuku said. But if nothing is really changing and he's still a bastard, then you should leave the man alone. Shoto added, and Izuku nodded furiously. But there are other factors, Dobby said. Izuku tilted his head a bit. My siblings and mom. That we don't know, Shoto said. Our family is slowly healing wounds. Izuku followed. Everything seemed peaceful as the three converse. Mainly Shoto trying to give advice and Izuku fixing his words for him. Thanks I guess. Dobby ended the father issues conversation. He figured he had a lot to think about, and decision making would hopefully be easier. He watched the twins converse and tried to add him into the conversation, so he doesn't feel left out. This was Izuku's doing, and surely enough, he had a great time rather than feeling awkward. Izuku started playing around with his quirk. Tuya couldn't help but be amazed. Playing with his cold flames, it's amazing how snow could look like dancing flames. How does your quirk work? He asked, not really realizing it. Basically, flames and ice, but their color and temperature are opposite. Isn't it wonderful? Shoto smiled a small. It was faint and barely there, but Tui could tell that until now, Shoto is still amazed. You two you mentioned earlier your twins but met only recently. Am I worthy enough to know the story? Well, I guess I can tell the story much clearer, Shoto answered. I'm still having a bit of memory loss, still fixing the fragments of memories appearing in my head. Izuku scratched the back of his head. Is it really memory loss? Doubt took over to you again. But I do remember fire around my room and I was having a bit of loopy vision. Izuku explained. You were sick Izuku. The younger twin smiled at the older. It's getting late. I think it's best to sleep now kiddos. 
Tuya said, breaking off the somewhat sad atmosphere. You sleeping here? Tuya looked at Izuku's face. It was almost apathetic, much resemblance to Shoto if not for the hair and scar. But what differs is you can see Izuku's pure heart. Kindness reeking despite that stoic-like face. A very faint smile graced his lips. The worry and care laced in his voice. Yes, he remembers how Izuku was a pure little sunshine that gave temporary happiness. Is he really that sunshine? Tuya sighed as he shakes his head no, giving an answer to the youngest in the room. Azawa offered me a room in the building. Thanks for the time. Tuya left, not even waiting for a reply from the two. He was nice, Izuku said. He's suspicious, Shoto replied. The guy kept giving Izuku this look, Shoto didn't like it at all. Doubt, longing, irritation. If not those, he'd assume anger is hidden behind those calm blue orbs. Piercing gaze at his younger brother, how can Izuku even see nice with those over-observing eyes? Shoto. Are you okay? Snapping Todoroki out of his thinking. I'm fine. The brothers said their good night and slept. It is peaceful, Shoto could worry about Dobby tomorrow. Right now, he is with Izuku. Their time together is precious, and he doesn't want to rub off his worries on Izuku too much. A Chen A whimper reached Shoto's ears. It wasn't long before he woke up enough to hear his brother crying. Hurts the other cried softly. Shoto turned to his brother. Izuku's crying, half conscious, his hands on his head. Face clarifying how much pain he is in. Worry struck the older brother. He gave Izuku a quick pat on the head before running to the building next to them. Knocking on Izawa's door frantically. Sensei. He called frantically. The door opened revealing the black haired teacher in black long sleeves and tied up hair. Papers in hand. Clearly, irritated by the disturbance. Shoto Todoroki. Do you know what time it is? It's two in the middle of the night. What's so impo? Sensei, Izuku. He said his head hurts, and I don't think it's a normal fever since he isn't heating up. What if Shoto uncharacteristically rambled his worries? As always tired. Even if he didn't want to he had to grade papers and fix files and prepare his lessons. Staying up at night is nothing unusual for this dead looking teacher, but what's unusual is the calm Shoto Todoroki panicking. Of course, the kid would worry about a headache. His brother is suffering from amnesia. What if his brain is damaged then we only thought. Izawa took his scarf and had let Todoroki lead him to Izuku. I'll just sex his ashi in Principal Nezu. He thought as he ran through the halls of 1AS Hide Alliance. Once they reached Izuku, the boy was clearly in pain. The only difference for Shoto was somebody else stayed beside Izuku. Dobby, what are you doing here? Shoto questioned. I'm Dobby as if he's a threat. He woke me up. Dobby, why don't you help us? Carry Izuku to Recovery Girls Clinic. She should be watching her late night comedy shows in there. Tui could only nod. He hurriedly put Izuku on his back then ran to the clinic. Shoto followed them while Izawa returned to his room to take his work with him. Might as well use the time for paperwork while watching problem children. Tuya had plans to sleep. A peaceful sleep where all his problems are away for a while. But instead, he had nightmares. By that, his definition of nightmare is Endeavor just standing in front of him doing nothing, then suddenly screaming Shoto. Like the one he heard from an interview. His problem just kept appearing in his dream. He can't just stay there all night, in one place, bored. Even though those were the reasons why Azawa offered him a room he chose to stand up and maybe explore the dorms full of sleeping students. Or so he thought. A door swung open never closed and running can be heard. That faint noise led his curiosity to Shoto's open door. Quiet whimpers, mumbles of hurting, and the shaking figure. The one called Izuku is in pain. He thought the teen was cold. What a dumb worry thought for someone who is trained to withstand both temperatures at extreme measures. He slowly walked to Izuku, kneeling beside him, fire ready in hand. Hoping to help warm the kid but to no avail, Izuku kept on shaking. Only then did he think he was dumb for worrying about temperatures. He stopped what he's doing and decided to just stroke the hair he never knew he wanted to stroke since earlier. Izuku moved closer to the hand, seeking comfort. H help another whisper. Now the younger's hands clutching to his shirt. Then came in Shoto Todoroki, and behind him Izawa. Help. The voice of Izuku was frantic as he sat up abruptly from his sleep. Panting. Izuku. You're alright. Shoto said. Immediately going beside Izuku. Sho Izuku mumbled. I I, remember. Izuku. Can you really remember now? Shoto clarified again. Izuku nodded. Dad used to train Tui and I, and before I got sick, we were excited for our quirks to manifest T Tui and I always teases Natsunai, and Nisan would stop them. Izuku said. Everything is correct. Both in Shoto and Tuya's ears. Titui and I always visits my room when I'm sick I'm a sickly child. He chuckled wryly. Shoto had a small smile on his face. 
though it turned to a frown as Izuku started to cry. Izuku is something the matter. You know we should be happy for this recovery, right? But to Yanai he he's gone and I couldn't even meet him again, the youngest continued to sob. Panic ran to Shoto as he saw how much pain Izuki feels. It was so different than earlier. He needs to calm down. It will strain him if he stresses this. Recovery girl said, holding up the vial, asking permission from Shoto who nodded in approval. The medicine was given to Izuku, it took effect almost immediately as Izuku calmed down until his eyes drooped back to sleep. While worry lace Shoto, Tuya and the background is filled with unexplainable good emotions. It exploded in him at once as the confirmation is there. And how much Izuku cares about him. I finally found you. I am Tuya. It was a celebration for the family, Izuku is happy. There's no denying that fact, but everyone has to deal with the backlash of the situation. Izuku doesn't feel all the way good about the return of his memories. This unpleasant feeling of guilt and sadness has been eating his heart up. He finds it unfair how he was found and his Tuyanai wasn't. It's been a week since that incident. The recovery girl advised him to rest. As always taking a closer watch on the brothers, and as for Tuya, he is overthinking how he would introduce himself to Izuku. The first step on his list is to request help from the commission, but that is something that has already been promised to him the moment he created the deal of the contract. Perks of being that bastard son, the commission would get him what he requests, something he is actually thankful for. Dobby. The commission president greeted him with his alias. President. What brings you here? She asks. I found my brother. That means I'll stop working underground and you'll help me confront him. Tuya said. I get the first part since it is part of our deal, but why need help confronting him? Well, circumstances. He answered. The president walked to the front of her desk and leaned, her hands on the surface of the table. Tell me, I have the whole afternoon free. Tuya. The latter nodded before taking a seat on a free armchair. Endeavor has found him first. Last week I have confirmed he really is the Izuku I was looking for. The president hummed. And the problem? She asks. Well I ran away and since it's been too long, investigations say I'm dead. How do you think will I approach it? Oh hey. I'm the dead brother that came back to life. Isn't that what happened to Izuku? The president chuckled. It was a different case. They were the ones who found him I and I can't bring myself to face them. There. His emotions almost burst. Ah, I see. Thought the president. He's been strong for far too long. I guess there's still that kid in him. She hummed with a smile. Then, we'll think of something within the week so. Just prepare yourself to meet your brother. Though I'll mostly leave everything up to fate. Words remained unspoken. Aside from the Todoroki family, who else is close to the twins? That leads us to the present where Bakugu, Azawa, and Tuya are sitting in one of the private lounges in Yue. Tuya was hesitant of Bakugu. Even now he is still hesitant, the kid glaring at him. He honestly want to punch that face for exposing Izuku to such unrefined manners, but he is Izuku's best friend. And Izawa. Aside from being their homeroom teacher, apparently, he somehow helped with the family reunion. He'll be straightforward. No more beating around the bush and if not getting them to accept, then force them to help him. The silence in the room was broken as. I am Tuya. Even after that, silence followed. I am Tuya, he repeated. The two looked at him like he's not making a point. Tuya who exactly? As Zawa pointed out. Yeah, I don't know any bastard whose name is Tuya Dimwit you know Bakugo was cut off. Tuya Todoroki, he exclaimed. Giving the two the shock he has been expecting earlier. What do you mean? Bakugo raged. He's dead okay. Don't give the Todoroki some false hope Izuku will not like the joke you're playing right now bastard. Well, at least he's a real friend. That I can confirm Tuya thought as he looked at Bakugo in a bored manner. You done yet? He snorted. It seems that Bakugu has a lot to ramble about, he moved his eyes to Azawa and gave him a somewhat expectant look. Azawa, any thoughts? The teacher sighed a tired one and massaged the bridge of his nose. Obviously, the man is too tired for this, but nevertheless, he also wants to help. Let me get this straight. You're the Endeavor's eldest son who ran away from home, announced missing then soon dead. Tuya nodded. And how exactly are you surviving? Tuya snorted again. Enji Todoroki's family treatment isn't exactly a secret from the Hero Commission, Eraser. All three became quiet. Bakugu had thought does the commission cover for Endeavor. Bakugu let go of the thought as it doesn't seem like it. But his questions were answered. The commission doesn't cover for Endeavor. If that were the case they'd be lying to the public which will be a huge problem. They just simply ignored it, but I requested to protect mom and my siblings in a way. Tuya said. How did that go? Azawa asked. It went well. They watched over mom in the mental ward, assigning my personally chosen nurses instead of the ignorant nurses there. 
Natsuo's school scholarship is from the commission. Fayumi never once encountered a villain or criminal. Shoto doesn't really need any help since Senji gives him full attention. Okay maybe he did need help, but I don't know how to since the flame bastard gives him full attention. Tui explained. Azawa was surprised. Now I get why it was a bit hard to take Rei out of the hospital. You probably don't want to let her go. If you're still alive, then why not say a thing to your old hag or those minions? Bakugu asked. You mean my mom and siblings right? He clarified. Who else would I be talking about? Dimwit Bakugu exclaimed, Tui aside. He had to get used to this blonde Pomeranian. He just wouldn't stop barking insults. I work undercover in the League Idiot. I would put them and me at risk if the villains had somehow connected the dots on how the commission protects them. It would make me suspicious and the League will not be stopped as easy as it was. Bakugu rolled his eyes, he ain't winning if he continued to argue. He wasn't blind. For the past few weeks, he's been one of the people who knew of Izuku's memory recovery. From one look, he could tell what Izuku felt like. Knowing the state of their family losing only one member, Tuya, that soft orc would surely feel not only sad but also guilty. Being by his side since childhood, seeing him every day. Bakugu at least learned to read bit by bit of Izuku's emotions. He knows that he is worthy of Izuku's friendship, even though he doesn't look like it, what matters is that Izuku sees a friend in him, and he sees a friend in Izuku. And right now, an impact came to find him. That impact is the missing older brother. Tui Todoroki. Now now, Bakugu is smart. And being a smart person, he thinks. He thinks of the possibilities. Would Izuku be happy? Truly happy? Or would it hurt him knowing the reason Tuya ran away partly because of him? Would Izuku drown in guilt more if he helped Tuya? Kasuki wouldn't know the consequences if things turned out bad, but he does know the price of this decision if things turned out great. Bakugu was lost in his thoughts until he felt a hand on his shoulders. Flinching a bit from the suddenness, what is it? He said in a gruff voice and sighed after. Azawa squeezed his shoulders a bit before letting go. Izuku would like to meet his brother. Even if there are hardships along the way, in the end, a complete family is what the Todorokis longed for. Does it even matter now if their son came back from the dead? Azawa smirked it has happened once why not twice. This earned them a soft laugh from Tuya. Well, the commission promised to not let the matter reach the public's eyes. Well, not the real story. I'll help you kid, I'm sure Bakugu is also willing. A glimpse of his story. Tuya Pav. Don't get me wrong. As much as I appreciated how things are now, many of it isn't just exactly going as I planned. I don't know if this path would make it any easier to reveal myself or not, but I really can't turn back the time. Okay, maybe this is a bit better. It involves less or, if possible, no villain intervention. The Hero Commission is willing to help by repaying me for that big infiltration mission, even if that meant dealing with the overpowering media, and, I got as always help along with that angry kid who has known Izuku since they were kids. Trash goes the plans of kidnapping Izuku, finding him first, and hiding him away from our father. With my job on the commission, I am sure would be able to make enough money. More than enough, actually. Infiltration on the league and watching Handman all day wasn't cheap you know. Running away has always been my choice ever since I saw it reasonable. I thought it was the best for me. I didn't have to think about living in the streets. The commission was more than willing to help after making a deal with them. They take care of me and my family, and I won't share a certain story that can possibly taint hero society. Of course, the most important part of this agreement was me working for them, and Enji Todoroki won't know any of this. They gave me a contract and I took on a mission that could help me gain more sources and connections underground. Of course, I took into consideration if the mission would make the commission owe me big time or not. Infiltration on the biggest villain case seems like the best way to go. I didn't immediately go into infiltration. The supposed two-year training I had reduced to one. In that year I met Hawks and the newly adopted Toga. Tsukauchi wanted her to be ready for the world of crime. They have trained with me from time to time. Then the time came when I was fully prepared. Loitering the streets and alleys near the villain base for a few days and pretending to be helpless, dirty, and hungry. Of course, I wasn't noticed by the League directly. Seeing Handman Shigaraki, I fully understood why. He was a brat, hating on heroes, playing games constantly, and loves throwing tantrums. In my opinion, everything is handed down to that guy. Including League members. Kijero Okuda. The man is called Jiren. An info broker for villains and also one who scouts new recruits for all for one's organization. He happened to stumble upon me in an alley where riled up thugs are attacking me. Acting scared at the same time beating them with my fire. Jiren who only watched took an interest. A child either abandoned, ran away, or lived the streets from the start of life, either way, he looks alone and something no one would connect to. So Jiren took me in. 
It took him two weeks to find out I was Endeavor's son. I told him how the man was not nice to his family missing a lot of details. Adding comments about fake heroes with detest and tone. But I did not lie and I truly hated the man which made it easy to convince them that I wanted revenge. And so, he introduced me to the league. Where all for one was preparing a bratty hand man to be the new leader. It didn't take long to rise up the ranks. Gaining the trust of all for one, standing below Shigaraki Tamara and beside Kurajiri. All for one trusts me enough to give me missions behind Handman's back. It was always hilarious when he notices the rewards his sensei gives me. One time it was money to buy whatever I need. Not sure where it came from, but legit money needs spending. Plus the commission doesn't deliver me money here, due to the risks of finding out my infiltration. At first, I was only able to deliver messages every two months. Via another person working undercover for the commission. The League isn't the only evil organization around. But when I proved myself enough for the League they allowed me to use contacts freely. They didn't bother to check anything on me which was careless of them, but nevertheless, I made sure to delete every suspecting message right away. It was almost a routine if it wasn't for the inconsistent missions and all. What broke that cycle was when one day I watched an interview featuring UA students. Bouncy hair wearing the color of fire and ice. And no, it wasn't Shoto Todoroki who he has seen in enough news articles. He was different. Red hair and tips fall into white. He was instantly reminded of the missing brother. Izuku. He didn't assume though. But he did recognize the name Izuku Midoriya. It is one of the files he had collected in search of the missing brother. I couldn't do anything at the moment since it was busy for the league. Togo will join soon and a couple more missions are on the schedule. After some time, Hawks had called me. Luckily I was alone on the roof. I needed air and some time to think about Izuku Midoriya. What a coincidence when Hawks called me about the same person he was thinking of. Soon enough Endeavor has announced he has found his youngest son. Izuku is found. But it still worries me. What if that Izuku is nothing but a fake? What if the kid was taken in by Endeavor because of his quirk? What if the announced amnesia case of his was just an excuse? Isn't scary that that kid is just bringing in false hope? Or maybe it's scarier that Endeavor took in another kid to train in an unethical manner. It didn't matter anymore. At some point, I came rational and planned out to confirm it myself. The league will fall down soon anyway. After that, I'm free from this job and can do whatever I want with the money and request a commission owe him. To sum it up, I had planned to search for Izuku, then run away with him once I had found him. I would raise him on my own and he would hopefully forget our family. One without the pain I remember, but it seems like the world is not on my side, since Endeavor just had to find him first. To be honest, I didn't know what to do next after that. Bumped me in sadness and doubt for a while before I made up my mind. But the choice I made didn't exactly give me time to plan out. Accidents happen, and I blame my emotional ass for bringing myself in front of UA without realizing it. Maybe this is a blessing. Is he really? Izuku. The younger twin turned to see Natsuo and gave a very small smile. The smile was soft, but the traces of sorrow was evident. The older sighed and walked inside the room with one butt sitting. He kneeled beside Izuku and ruffled the gradient locks. Don't feel too down about it. I wish he could be here too. The monotone might have fooled him, but Natsuo knows better. A moment of silence before another voice joined them. Dinner is getting cold what are you still doing oh? Shoto silently walked and then kneeled at the other side of Izuku. He's not sure where the conversation ended, but he does know what it's about and what to say about it. Like Natsuo, he put a hand on the gradient hair of the youngest and ruffled it softly. It's okay Izuku. It just seems so vivid. At least you're here. So don't feel bad because finding you gave us so much happiness. Keep that in mind Izuku. Natsuo said. His words are firm and intentionally harsh in tone to keep it ingrained in Izuku's mind. Shoto nodded, agreeing strongly with Natsuo. It was another moment of silence before the door opened again. Natsuo, Shoto. Next time don't offer to call Izuku for dinner if you're just gonna stay here with him. Fayumi scolded. Sorry, Nisan. It's my fault. I still feel bad about it. Don't say that Izuku. Fayumi ran to the youngest shoving Natsu aside. It's okay to miss Tuya. We do too, really. But we're also happy you're here. Okay. Fayumi hugged Izuku tight, forgetting her mission to bring her brothers downstairs for dinner. Natsuo and Shoto thought it would be awkward to split the two apart or even talk. So after another moment of silence. Fayumi. Your job was to bring them down what happened. The food's getting cold. Benji appeared at the door. No need to worry about that. You'll heat it up anyways. Well that did make sense Enji still doesn't think that they should delay dinner any longer. And thank goodness Izuku's stomach thinks so too. With a growl heard, everyone can agree that Izuku needs to eat. 
They all went down to the dining table met by lovely Rei Todoroki who was cooling her soba. It doesn't seem like there's a need to heat the food, Shoto said. Well mind you, I prefer hot soba than cold. Natsuo argued as he sat beside Rei. I cooled yours and Izuku's. I know you both like it cold. Thanks, Ka-san. They both said. Earning them a smile from Rei. And she looked at the dinner table, everyone was content in their own ways. He can tell. This is enough. Nothing has to change and he shouldn't ask for more. This is far more than enough. Finding Izuku is a miracle. Finding Tuya seems like a far cry. And looking for him might bring full soap. That's why right now. He is content. You're scarring up again. Tuya rolled his eyes. It's been another week. The commission still has no plans and Izawa was too busy to start anything and Bakugo. Doesn't really know what a perfect reunion meant. And right now, he doesn't need an oversized chicken to bug him. Stop mumbling. To be fair, you're in my apartment, so it's only logical that I get to bug you. The red-winged hero sat beside him. It's amazing you have such control. Nothing spreads at all. My couch is perfectly safe. Are you knighted? Is he really? Izuku Pav. Blue flames. It's what I remember best about him. I don't remember most of his face. Nothing about his outer appearance flashes in my memories. Everything is a blur. But what I do remember about him is his indescribable warmth. Never sure whether it's his quirk, or maybe he's just that tender as an older sibling. And the picture on the butsudan would be the only reference I have. I've seen him before. Countless times during work studies. I was worried, but dad only ignored him. He called the stranger a stalker, and he won't take action or file any complaints unless he started attacking. He disappeared after a few days, but his silhouette is incredibly iconic. Dobby. And I'm sure father knows of this. Alas. He appeared in front of me. This time, as always Sensei had invited him to the dorms. That silhouette I saw back then he's here now. The person with the same situation as us. I thought. Maybe that's the reason he was following us around. I wouldn't question anything about him. I wouldn't question how he seems to know more than he says about our situation. I wouldn't question it because he works as a high-rank underground hero for the HPSC. At this very moment, he appears in front of me and claims to be my brother. Who was thought dead all these years. All my eyes could do was water in happiness. Slowly, memories seem to be getting clear. Dobby stood in front of us. The villain turned out to be an ally. An ally that turned out to be my brother. But he's no Dobby. He's too ya ah, Natsuo Nai couldn't help but sob. I have different plans. But you seem to have reached the goal first. Tuya says, seemingly deadpan. Is that supposed to be me? An unspoken question, but as fast as lightning could move, I was pulled into a hug by Tuya and I. Izuku I've been looking everywhere for you. I can't help it. Tears on my cheeks as I give much thought to those words. The whole family must have looked for me, waited, just like Tuya and I. I returned Tuya's hug. I held on tight and relished the warmth. You must have. Suffered. A lot, I say between sobs. Dirt pov. It wasn't long before the whole family got their share of the moment. Natsuo Nai hogged older Tuya with questions, and Nisan slapped the poor older brother and mother, trying to stop her. Nevertheless, it all ended awkwardly with Angie and Tuya not knowing what to say to each other. Izuku couldn't take the silence and the cumbersome atmosphere. With Angie and Tuya not looking at each other's eyes, might as well not reunite. Izuku isn't completely tactless though. While many beg to differ, he can see Tuya's comfort being in the presence of family again, and Enji's relief that Tuya is alive and well. Even better that he's back. So Izuku took action. Despite being apathetic at most times, Izuku has a secret weapon that he rarely uses to get what he wants. But the doe eyed look at Tuya and Dad, trying to sound much vulnerable as possible, Tuya, Dad missed you lots you know. And with that, Tuya hugged their old man and chose to forgive. For now. The crowd wanted them to have this moment. Really they do, but HSPC is still a working facility that runs 24-7. And they've sacrificed a whole floor for an important request for important people. Azawa had to break it to them that their reunion could continue at home. I'll excuse you only up until tomorrow. He told the twins. And you. He turned to Tuya. You've grown so much and worked so hard. You deserve this. Congress. And with that, HPSC staff assisted the family to the cars. It would be better for them to continue things at home, before the media hears words about this. Hawks decided not to show up. He didn't want to ruin the moment. Being the number two hero, he knows he'll attract attention to himself. Watching Tuya finally, almost, at the end of his finish line, was enough for him. He'll call his friend to celebrate another time. The car ride was only with silence. But it wasn't awkward. It definitely wasn't heavy but rather a comfortable silence where they're all content.
until Natsuo couldn't take it anymore and decided to ask questions. Tuya, who planned that surprise? Yeah yeah, it was dramatic. Fayumi nodded. Tuya eyed the twins who were holding in their giggles. Maybe Hawks was right about it being cheesy Tuya's side. I don't know. As always sense said he'll help but he gave the job to the event planners here at the HPSC. Don't worry Tuya. What matters is your back. Ray smiled. Anji looked like he wanted to say something, but decided to just shut up the whole ride. Shoto noticed Izuku's worries. He put a hand on his brother's shoulder attempting to ease the ladder up. It's okay they're both adults. He whispered to Izuku. Izuku didn't know what to think of that since he knows Anji has so much pride and embarrassment that he makes a wall, and he's known that Shoto and Natsuo Nai was difficult to convince, Tui and I might be the same. He hopes things will really be alright. Is this really alright? Everyone on the same line of thought as Tuya and Enji talk things out in one of the rooms. Or were they kidding who said it's alright to talk where Tuya's butt sit and sits? So this is where I'm worshipped. Enji could only sigh. You're still my son. I am glad you're back. Tuya was surprised. Enji has mellowed. Stop giving me that look I have to admit my faults at some point. I don't think things could go back the way they were. I know I had made a lot of mistakes. I, I'm sorry. As the adult I should have handled my family differently when we lost Izuku and when we lost you. I'm sorry too. I was consumed by anger and resentment. I blamed you for everything that went wrong. And I should have at least come back or write you letters. Do you just want to let things out? No venting. Just apologies and acceptance. If you were to vent, a fight might happen and his mother and siblings would be scared. The best thing we can do now is rely on time to heal things. And you said. To you I'm trying my best. I really am. The father couldn't look at the son in the eyes. Tuya could see, feel the overwhelming guilt and self-blame. If it was him years ago, he would have said you deserved it, but with newfound experiences from the outside, he knew Enji didn't deserve any suffering. Enji grieved in his own way the same way Tuya grieved in his own way. The loss of Izuku led them to misunderstandings, wrong choices, wrong beliefs, and incomparable fear. What miracle that Izuku was also the same medium that brought them back together. All is coming to a good end. Tuya thought. A blog. What? The whole class roared. Mina pushed Aoyama right out of the way to face the twins. Stoic as ever is their face as if no major news has been shared. So you're saying Dabi is your brother and he was just an underground hero like Izawa. With the nod of Shoto and Izuku, Mina squealed. I knew it. He was too hot to be a villain. Almost everyone fascinated. Denki who was beside Izuku, squished Izuku's cheeks and looked at him and Shoto in wonder. What an amazing gene pool he comments. He's probably gonna switch into the limelight soon. Mina nodded excessively at what Bakugu said. Just as he should. His face would be a waste. Mina looks isn't everything, Asui told the squealing girl. What? According to my sources, he is a very capable hero and very family oriented. Thank you very much. She defended her case proudly as she flaunted her phone showing off her contact to Fayumi Todoroki. The twins were left wondering how their mature and conservative sister has contact with Mina, who is basically a party animal. As to her comments, the twins would agree that older brother Tuya is quite dashing. They too both agree that Tuya is too old for Mina. Despite that, you can't marry him. Shoto said in his usual monotone way of talking. Too monotone for that type of statement in everyone's opinion. Izuku looked like something is being stolen from him. I'm not marrying him. I just want to start a fan club is all. Mina crossed her arms and smiled as she conveyed her point. Everyone thinks that there's no way she could balance hero work and fan club managing it all. But anyways, congratulations you two. You've made it through. Yuraka smiled as she shook the twins' hand. No doubt everyone knows that the Todoroki family has been through a lot. It became not so secret when Izuku opens up to the class, and Shoto practices communication with them. Thanks, everyone. Izuku is grateful to have such friends. Shoto nodded in response. It was curt but sincere and everyone understood the message, and that's what matters most. Izuku checked his phone for the time, Nisan might be here already. Then we'll go, Shoto said. They're leaving the dorms for a week to stay home with family. They will still attend school, but they get to go home. They got permission from UA and were allowed to for special reasons. Besides, there are no more high-ranking threats, since the League of Villains have been defeated for good. Bye. Izuku waved. Carrying his bag and walking to the door, Shoto followed beside him. Izawa was just about to knock on the dorm's door when it was opened by the twins. Good, you ready? Morning Zawa. Izuku greeted. Shoto has gotten used to his twins' mood swings. At some point he's stoic, and at some point, he's cheery. A consistent yet not so consistent occurrence. As always simply nodded back. Looking tired as ever. 
Fayumi is there to pick you up. Let me help you with those. The teacher pointed at the duffel bags. It's fine. Sensei. We can handle it. They politely rejected the offer of help. As Awa knows not to push things. He walked his students to the gate, one of his homeroom duties. When he saw Fayumi in the car, he can now say goodbye to the twins. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, Sensei. As Awa smiled and pats their heads. Congress kiddos. Good for you. The car ride was a time of silent excitement. Fayumi would try to talk to them, but only received short answers. The sister smiled at them as the two buckled up. How was school today? It was fine Nisan. It's the usual. Izuku said. Fayumi doesn't understand how Izuku and Shoto could answer in a way that just completely shuts down any conversation. She couldn't really confront them about it because she knows it is not intentional, and that's just how her brothers are. And they're so naive and oblivious about it that it would probably just become a conversation off to space with the twins confused her conversation in circles. Nevertheless, she knows her brothers won't mind her asking lots of questions. Well, not lots, she doesn't want to hover. Anything interesting that has happened? Well, Tuya definitely was hot topic. Fayumi looked at the rear mirror, Shoto seemed serious. She also doesn't know whether his puns were intentional or not. Yeah, he is. We found out Mina talks to you too. She is friendly, Fayumi said. The twins only gave her a nod. Their most of the time stoic faces displayed as she again looked at the rear mirror. It is silent. But it is comfortable. She's not worried, because when she looks in the mirror, she could see the look of anticipation from both boys. She and Natsuo had Tuya all to themselves these past few days. Of course their parents have their own time with him too. Each of them got to enjoy having Tuya around. Now it's the twins' turn. They couldn't spend much time with their older brother because of school. And they certainly can't skip school and classes. Principal Nezu and Izawa won't allow it. They are thankful to Yue otherwise, because lots of exceptions were given to them due to their family situation. Yue gave time for the Todoroki family to heal, and gave Izuku time to know his family. Now, they can't skip classes, but they are allowed to go home. Both of them deserve time to know Tuya. Especially Izuku. Home was traditional. Izuku took note of that the moment he first got there. The household was foreign from where he grew up, it is blatantly different from their apartment. Even now, just the side of the house had all the excitement gushing inside him. Every time he goes home, he'll get excited, to the point where he'll hear his own heartbeat. And he couldn't help it because he knows his family will welcome him back always and ever so eagerly. Izuku now finds the house familiar, and the most comfortable place that he's sure he'll always look for. After Fayumi parked the car, Izuku immediately went out to greet his parents. His soft smiles never cease as soon as he saw Anji and Rei in the front garden of the estate. The Rindus looks captivating as ever. No wonder it is well loved by their mother. Rei smiled at their direction. Of course, Izuku's first destination in the beautiful household is his parents. And both Rei and Anji always adore welcoming their sons back home, once again their home is complete. Hello boys, how is school today? Rei pats their heads and rubs her hands as if to fix their perfectly fine hair. Izuku relished the feeling. Both boys smiled at their mother and father. It's good, Izuku answered simply. We won't keep you to ourselves for now. Go ahead, wake your oldest brother. He's still deep in his afternoon sleep. Rei ushered them into the house excitedly. Surely, Tuya won't mind if his brothers wake him up, right? Down the halls, they passed by the kitchen seeing Natsuo sneaking some ramen. The twins couldn't care though as they were too excited to meet Tuya. They gave him a quick hello yet left so fast that Natsuo could not even reply and ask about their day. Natsuo thought it was unfair how their favorite older brother changed so quickly. He can't deny that Tuya is the best older brother there is, except for the fact that he left them for years, and he's the only older brother he has. No other candidate for that one. He wouldn't have forgiven him easily if Tuya didn't take him out shopping and bonded with him, but since he can see the brotherly effort, it was not a challenge. Tuya indeed did his best in his own way. The twins snuck around the corridor debating whether to knock or to just barge into the room. In the end, they decided to just barge in. It seems more like a surprise that way. They both nodded at each other, opened the door, and snuck towards Tuya, who is now sleeping on his futon. Meanwhile, Tuya could clearly hear the twins' footsteps behind his door. They have been pacing there for a few minutes, and Tuya's senses couldn't help but pick it up. He was so used to being cautious around villains that he's a very very light sleeper. His senses are heightened, so their whispers were too loud for him. Not that he's complaining he would love to hear his brother's voices more. Good thing he is a good actor too. When the twins decided to barge in the room, most probably to surprise him by waking him up, he feigned sleep. There was a long awkward silence before one of them spoke. So how do we wake him up? Shoto whispered to Izuku quietly. 
Tuya snorted and flinched, but quickly acted it out as a snore and a shuffle in his sleep. How badly he wanted to laugh at that sentence. After that, only silence resonated in the room. It was too quiet for his liking knowing that they were beside him. It was awkward. Do they just stand there or? He questions the awkwardness not until he felt agonizing pain around his stomach, arg. He can't help but yelp, effortlessly blowing up his act. His eyes that are now wide open from pain, saw his precious brother Zuku on him. Apparently jumping on him was the best surprise there is, he couldn't disagree because that did surprise him. He wished it was less painful though. Good afternoon Nai-san. The twins greeted, both donning a soft smile. And how could Tuya ever get mad and not smile at them through his pain? The eldest smiled at them softly, ignoring the pain that still carries Izuku's weight. Hello, you two. Izuku seems to have no plans of getting off him. A, he'll survive. This is worth it. What's important right now is keeping everyone happy. Especially Izuku and Shoto. And there is no way the twins will ever tell Tuya that the snort was a dead giveaway. They figured he was faking sleep, and Izuku was just being mean. They pull Tuya to the dining room where Natsuo still sits with the Raymond cup unfinished. Hey Tuya and I, Natsuo greeted well suspiciously turning the Raymond cup. How's the alarm clock? He asked not really knowing what happened back in the room. Tuya raised his eyebrows, suspiciously, he asked, you didn't put them up to it did you? Put them up to what? All the while Tuya continued to eye the Raymond cup, hey is that mine? Natsuo shrugged, but nevertheless slid his eyes down to the Raymond cup, and saw Tuya written in capital with a black marker. I thought it was dad's. No wonder why you're sneaking around Natsuo Nai, Shoto said, not really reading the situation well. Izuku elbowed him, shook his head, and mouthed a no. Suddenly, Fayumi's voice interrupted the whole Raymond fiasco. Good you're all here, mom and dad will be following soon, I'm cooking dinner tonight what are you doing? Voice switching from a caring sister to a strict one. And Natsuo, is that Raymond before dinner? Yes Fayumi it's Raymond and he stole it from me. Tuya said. What no I didn't. Natsuo had to quickly defend himself. Fayumi sighed. Natsuo, obviously, that's Raymond in your hands, if you turn it around you'll see Tuya's name in capital written with a black marker. And how do you know that? Natsuo I'm the one who cooks. I see that Raymond cup in the cabinets every day ever since Tuya brought groceries with mom. You know what, never mind. Fayumi went to the kitchen, her bad mood emanating. Tuya sighed, come on let's help her make dinner. He gestured to where Fayumi left off. Natsuo nodded and decided to go ahead. We want to help too, Izuku said, locking Shoto's arms into his. It seems Shoto has no other choice. They brought Tuya to the dining to talk and hear stories, but he said he'd go off to the kitchen. Might as well be there. Just in time before leaving off to the kitchen, Anji and Rei arrived. Oh, where are you all going? Rei asked. To the kitchen, we're all gonna help Fayumi cook dinner, Tuya answered. Good luck then. That's great, do you mind if we join? Anji was cut off by Rei, who looks too excited to be rejected. Enji can't say no to that, besides this may be the perfect family bonding. Sure, mom, Tui replied. As he pulled over the twins walked beside him. They all made their way to the kitchen. Ha 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 ha. Natsuo's loud laughter would be heard throughout their house. Natsuo. Be nice to your brothers. Rei scolded. Tui can't slice onions. He amused himself more. Well I live mostly eating Raymond cups, and Kurajiri cooks the food in the league. I just light up their stove. Tui defended. My poor child, let's eat all the delicious food in the world from now on. Ray cups to his cheeks. And that's my home cooking. Fayumi chimed. She's always so proud of her cooking. Just as they thought everything is calmed down and turned peaceful, Natsuo had the audacity to laugh excessively again. Ha 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 ha. Shoto bit the raw onion like an apple. Now he's making a weird face. Others couldn't share Natsuo's sentiments as Shoto quickly turned to face away from them. Why would you eat it? Fayumi worriedly asked as she readies water, and maybe milk for Shoto. Izuku told me it would taste good. He muttered as his hands accepted the drink from behind. I was sarcastic. I didn't think you would really eat it. Fayumi eyed Izuku. Expecting something. Ah, right. Sorry Shoto. Shoto had to cough it out a bit before he replied, you're fine. Sometimes Natsuo thinks that both of the twins are really dumb. He heard Izuku and he didn't sound sarcastic at all. And Shoto was senseless enough to try raw onion from that comment. Well, they're his idiot brothers, and he fully accepts that side of their personality. Natsuo just cut those carrots. Fayumi glared. Geez, okay okay. Are we even holding a feast there's too much food? Natsuo exclaimed. Well, you, Tuya, and dad were the ones who wanted three different dishes. Fayumi retorted. The three sweat dropped. Izuku perked up. Should I invite Kakin? Sure, dear, Rei answered. 
Then I'll call him now. Tuya went near Enji and asked, Is it usually this noisy? Enji could say that it has been noisy recently, but this is different this time. They are complete and the house is full of banter and laughter. Well, I don't mind it, was his reply. Tuya will take that as a no. Or maybe yes. He wasn't sure. But he does share sentiments with his father. He too doesn't mind getting used to this. Titsuki had to rush if he wants to be in time for this dinner invitation. It's a taxi right away, but he's sure he'll make it since there is no traffic. He quickly told his parents of his plans, and they immediately agreed as soon as they heard Izuku's name. Kasuki feels like his parents have a softer spot for Izuku than him. He wouldn't blame them though, Izuku is a darling despite his apathetic face. Sure enough, the old hag and old man would have adopted Izuku if the Todorikus weren't around. Taxi was an easy grab, and it was only less than 20 minutes when he got there. Kasuki rang the doorbell, he knows it will take some time before someone would open the door for him. He knows just how big their front yard is in this traditional home. But alas, Izuku opened the gates. Kakin, you made it just in time. Thought you wouldn't come because you just hang up. Never said I wasn't coming. Thought so. We prepared a plate for you. We just finished cooking too. Titsuki let himself in and walked beside Izuku as they entered the home. He still marvels at the traditional hallways. Everything in this estate is so different from his modern home. Just mirroring the kitchen, he could already hear the banter of Natsuo and Tuya. Kakin's here, Izuku announced, and Rei beat Fayumi to greet him first. Hello Katsuki, Izuku was so excited to have you here. Katsuki wouldn't see the excitement on Izuku's face, even if he checks now anyways. Thanks for having me here Mrs. Todoroki. Auntie is fine. Anyways, we're glad you could make it, we cooked too much food tonight, and it's probably better to have you guest over. You're very important to Izuku you know. Fayumi said as she set the third vine. You could sit next to me here. Izuku led him to their place. Katsuki quickly greeted Isahid ever so bluntly and casually. I did Akimasu. The meal consisted of small talk. It was less awkward than he had expected. They never leave him out of the conversation, and they would ask him about Izuku's experiences with him. Of course, he'll gladly answer, excuse his rough demeanor though. He's glad he came. He gets to see how the family is faring for his friend. Tuya is a great brother, it's Kasuki's first time seeing the man with his family. He'll definitely ask him about hero stuff sometime later. Ray and Enji were sweet to each other, he's reminded of his old hag and old man. And casual banters were endearing that it reminded him of him and Izuku when they were in elementary. He's happy that Izuku wouldn't be caught up in the past tragedy the Todorikus were facing, and he's content that this family will make Izuku happy. If everything goes downhill he makes sure his old hag would adopt Izuku. After eating, Shoto, Izuku, and Katsuki offered to clean up. Fayumi knows that Katsuki is a stubborn teen, so she didn't reject the offer. When they carried the plates to the kitchen where the wash area is, Izuku decided it would be the perfect time to talk to Kakin. Kakin. We plan to go to the cemetery this Saturday. You're gonna visit Auntie Inko. That's a good idea. Kasuki is sure that the family wants to send their gratitude to the woman he and Izuku has not visited in a while, so it will be good for him, he thought. I want you to come. Will that be alright? We don't mind you being there, Shoto said from behind them. The older twin carrying the cups they used over dinner. Kasuki swore he almost blasted the guy with his quirk. You were always there Kakin. Izuku said. It's so corny but Kasuki just had to reply, and I'll always be there. Nerd. He looked away. Probably from embarrassment, Kasuki swears that Izuku is donning a look of amusement right now. Alright just kill me now. Thanks for coming Kakin. Always here for you Izu. Kasuki knows he'll stay behind, a few steps away from his best friend, but he knows Izuku needs his presence. It's a cold place. Although it is sad, it is not lonely as many mourn with you. But at the same time, it just makes you feel lonely in general, as you would stare at the name of who left you. But one thing is certain for Izuku, the cemetery is unusually a bright place today. That it seems today, chose to give him peace. The morning is vivid. Not so dark that the sun hasn't risen that it's like night, yet not so far in the morning where the sun is scorching to the skin. The ash blonde teen followed behind the family of white and red, walking past graves that are orderly lined up, but Izuku and Katsuki don't need to check each name to know where Inko Midoriya lies. Alas, they have reached their destination. A very clean grave. Obviously well taken care of. Izuku is grateful to his father and mother that they made sure his mother Inko is well taken care of. Fresh flowers every week, grave so clean that her name boasts to the eye of anyone passing by. He's glad that he can repay her through his new real parents. But he knows Enji and Rei also have a lot to be grateful for, thus they make an effort for Inko. Ka Izuku puts the white flowers on top of the grave. 
Immediately, he feels tears forming in his eyes. I have been found. Ka Sen. His smile is indescribable. No one could tell whether it was pure happiness or rather a sad one. It is a mix of emotions forming from sincerity. Rei and Enji put a flower on top of the grave as Fayumi comforts Izuku. Thank you, Midoriya san, for taking care of Izuku. Enji bowed his head, and raising him into a fine young man, and accepting all of him. Rei followed. Enji would say a lot more, but he knows his sincerity would reach the heavens, even if no one hears it. He's thankful for the many things Inko has done. How she took care of someone precious to his family, how she took care of the child that would bring everyone back from the misery he created for them. And most of all, for the opportunity of giving their family a chance to be with the youngest. Even if it was in the most unfortunate and most devastating way. Tuya kneeled and bowed until his forehead reaches the back of his hand that sits on the ground. Thank you Midoriya-san. For years he had been searching, for years he had experienced darkness. In that darkness, he had only worried about his family. Screw the old man who he couldn't understand then, his childish mind couldn't accept him at the time. He was most worried about Izuku. Within danger, he wonders whether leaving to find Izuku was the right choice. Should he just return to that household or continue to hold on to this ambiguous hope that his youngest brother is alive, and somewhere out there, waiting to be found. Even if Izuku wasn't waiting, meeting his youngest brother, safe and alive, would have healed all his heartaches from the sacrifices he made. Choosing the unsure fate of his youngest brother over his three siblings and mother at home, what a stupid decision his emotions has made. That is the burden he chose, and a choice he will never regret. It is such a relief all this time, he was somewhere safe and was taken care of with love. I, I, we don't know what could have happened to Izuku if you were not safe with you. Our family will forever be grateful for the miracle you took part in. Shoto saw his eldest brother. And he listened well to his gratefulness. Tui is right. This is a miracle. Everything is. And Inko had an important role in that miracle. The fact that she was the one to find Izuku, someone caring and willing to be a mother, the fact that Izuku became her whole world unconditionally, and the fact she made Shoto keep a promise, all for Izuku. She is like a saint sent from heaven especially gifted especially to the Todoroki family. When Shoto saw everyone else bowed, he too bowed his head to pay his respect. Inko-san. I have kept my promise. Everyone is together, everyone has made up. Everyone chose acceptance and forgiveness. Everyone struggled for the promise, every member of their family had their own heartaches in this whole tragedy, and all of them chose to overcome their own heartaches. Everyone learned from their mistakes, and everyone chose to be kind. The promise Inko made Shoto keep is a beautiful blessing. Ka-san, they have been through a lot. Everyone was hurt. I was hurt, but we have overcome it together. I have a lot to thank you for that. Izuku finally cried. With a heavy heart, he thanked Inko, her mother Inko, for everything. Even when she left, she made sure he won't be alone and lonely in such a big world. She made sure he had a family to go back to. Thank you for everything. I love you, mom. Kitsuki watched as his best friend bit more than he could chew. He knew this would happen. There has never been a visit where Izuku didn't fall into tears. He could almost cry. Almost. Kitsuki won't ever admit that he shed tears for an entire night for Auntie Inko. And just like the others, he bowed his head and prayed. All his prayers and gratitude are for him to keep, and Inko to hear. After praying, the Todorikas walked their way out of the cemetery. Kasuki said his goodbyes as he had other matters to attend to. Izuku made sure to thank him a lot for coming. Izuku was glad their father decided to take a leave from work today. Enji even said that he had something planned for them, how could Izuku not be excited? Their first destination was brunch. A train ride away from Yusatafu was a small unknown to many restaurant with a wonderful scenery of flowers, including Rindus. And it's a very mesmerizing sight they could all agree on. All he's sure about is that wherever they will go next, they'll be together as a family, and that is enough for him. But just because he's content doesn't mean he couldn't ask what will happen next right? This concludes this what if series. If you enjoyed the video leave a like and subscribe with post notifications. So you'd be notified when the next what if release. Until next time.